got so much stuff. Uh, view replays from Frog, uh, Bamboo, uh, Hagglefish. Let's go. So is this turf four? Uh, the spot fest. This probably is. Let's go. Okay, that's a 10x. So what, what kind of tips are you looking for, Frog? I have no clue. Okay. Well then, let me give you clues. Um, you've got a, a tandem missile spammer, you got a carbon roller, air spray, mostly close range guns. You do have a normal roller and the 52 gal, but I guess you do have the bamboo, which has lots of range to deal with that. You're probably gonna be. You're probably gonna need to help your team uh, with your range. So one thing you did there is you used the killer whale to the, towards the side of the map to kill that player. Um, I personally probably wouldn't have done that, or I, I probably would have done that because I wouldn't have thought about it. But it's like you could aim it forward, and and since you have more, because the killer whale is less effective. If you fire it at someone up close, because it takes time to turn and and there's some delay, so it's always more effective. It's like the um, the um, I forgot the name of the special back in Splatoon 2, right? But the one that was kill away, but you have to aim it. And people, whenever they activated it, they uh, wait, which one? Yeah, exactly the stingray. And w whenever they wanted to be the most effective with it, they just had to chill on the back of the map, right? Um, and the, the other thing that's cool if you activate it on, in the back of the map uh, with the killer whale, or at least if you try to aim at people farther, is that the, the little scanning that it does allows you to get more info on if someone's coming up close to you or not. Um, which is especially helpful, I think, for your the way you play, because you're very surrounded in enemy ink right now. And like at least if you know that nobody's coming, you don't have to focus on painting that as much. Because if, if somebody's coming and you don't have pain behind your back to just move, uh, it's going to be tough. Because like here the paint, yeah, the paint is really, it's not very strong. So yeah. You know, no, like this is, when I decide to choose this weapon, I got a 10 <laughs> And how did, how did you also, go? Also when I chose the weapon, I got a 100 Okay. I'm about to try and help with tips, but bamboo's there is kind of not too much. I just need tips because I don't use bamboo's left. And, and uh, I would also like, because if you see what the bamboo's lures kit is, you have the autobomb, which is like, it, it does some light scouting of people, and you also have um, the killer whale, which also does some light scouting of people. So definitely trying to get some slight awareness of where the enemies are at to better position yourself and aim at them and also one thing I, I wouldn't do because last fight you had with a player you jumped down when really the bamboozler has so much range and there was no reason for you to jump down um, you could have basically stayed up there it, it's got way more range than the squiffer and the squiffer can already hit from up there so really just you can stick to more sniper positions not if you play against a Hydra or an like, Elite or even a Splatter Scope, but if you play against like shorter range weapons and they get a, a little bit closer to try and fight you, you do have enough range and you're basically a sort of sniper. And here, I mean, in the, in this team comp uh, that you had uh, in this match, there was definitely uh, lots more close range weapons, so you could have stayed safe more than you did. Um, and also, one thing the Bamboozler does great is paint a lot. Uh, it's got really great pain if you time the the full charge shots. So what you can do is if you stay on the on the perch, you, you're not, you don't have to go down to paint. You can still paint from up top, and basically create a, a wall of paint that the enemies are going to struggle with, and provide basically paint on the ground for your teammates to be able to fight more effectively. Since they do have the more advantageous weapons to fight at close range, right? The carbon roller, the, the air spray are all pretty good, but if you assist them with paint, it's even better. I mean, that match I kind of got lucky because I have a very bad painting weapon, and I got very good painting weapons for teammates. Yeah. No, the bamboo is very good at painting. Works. 
the, the bamboozer is very good at painting. Uh, I mean, it's not very good. I mean, it's it's good. It's, it's very it's, it's, it's All okay. snipers are, are pretty good because the thing is, instead of painting over yourself, you're painting in a line, and you don't have to like fire multiple shots. It's just one shot in a straight line. Then you move another shot. So like, it's you're painting. You're always gonna paint in a new spot, right? So it's it's very efficient in the way you paint it, it paints. And like as a splatter shot, where you have to shoot, you have to move, and then you have to shoot more. In the other location, and some shots are gonna end up being over top of one hundred. Well, I'm I'm more used to splatter shots, so. Yeah, but you're looking for tips for the bamboozer, so that's what I'm giving you. Yeah. Anyways, this is a game from uh, Frog. I mean, not Frog, for Frog and Wall, which means Mio slash Ducky slash whichever names he uses nowadays. Um. So this is from probably older. Cause um. This or maybe it's from right now, actually, because this process has been over for uh, quite a few moments already. So, did you just pick up the Nautilus? Are you looking for dips for that? Mio said it was from today. Uh, yeah, okay. So I guess the Nautilus, it can basically charge in safe locations and then you can like store the charge. Basically like a sniper, you just charge safely. And then move, like peek out of cover, and, and then go and shoot from from there. And you do have a pretty good amount of range. So I think, like some, the thing is the fact that you can charge and then swim up to the location you want to fire from means that you can get way more creative with the places you, you want to charge. So for example, instead of having to to like basically charge behind cover, like really close to the to the edge, and then like just walk a little and fire and then go back and charge up you can get more creative so for example here uh, you see that wall you can basically charge down there like in like very safely right if there's someone up here on the glass that's trying to come in you can just charge chill down there charge then like swim up the wall and then start to fire instantly with uh, your basically fully charged shot which fire very fast has very fast time to kill uh, just get creative where, with where you charge and, and get creative with how you peek out, basically. With the angles you can take, so. Because that's, that's the thing, like, sometimes you want to fire from an angle that will be, like, very good, right? Yeah, so, so, like, instead of, like, it, let's say you have a Hydra, right? The Hydra can technically, like, get here and, and like, be annoying in that spot, but like getting all the way there as a high rise is nearly impossible. Um, and then if you're here and, and basically the team just takes the tower and starts to move out, and then you need to catch up to them, that's going to be a pain. Whereas with the um, Nautilus, you can easily get there because you, you have your charge, um, and you, you can you can always interrupt your uh, charging, and and I mean I mean you can always interrupt your shooting and start charging again. So you always can have some charge while you're moving out. So you don't have the disadvantages of being immobile or not being able to move. So you can basically like set up shop in, in weird and awkward spots and be annoying to the enemy team. Um, yep. She makes it putting in work and doing pretty good on that tower too. Wow. Yep. That was a great push. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, there it was kind of safe to charge, I guess. Unless if you can, that tries to up. Um. Yeah, there you go. Just missed your aim a little bit, but I think the idea was good. <laughs> missed your aim against a guy that his name was Can't Aim. <laughs> Oh, and also, let me think about the kit, because I, I personally never played the Nautilus, so I'm just giving you tips on the main weapon and how it, it, it's, it's supposed to work. Um, I guess what I'm seeing from the kit right now is, um, first off, the point sensor. It will be pretty good, basically, at, at having awareness where the enemy team is, while you yourself can hide in your ink. Um, basically, you know where the enemy team is, you can plan around this, and meanwhile, they don't know where you are at, and you can, like... Like... Like I flank them from unexpected angles because you know where they're gonna move and you can you can basically flank them safely 
because they're not gonna surprise you and then you are gonna surprise them it's the surprise weapon then I guess I guess the rain nice paint support ba I guess the, the rain would be good if you do want to make a, a kind of like crazy flank or, or basically two options to use the rain either you throw it down the place where you, you want to go towards and flank so that gives you like some some assistance while you, you're doing that or what you do is you throw the rain on the objective so like the tower or something like that and then you go out and flank and the rain is still gonna help your teammates a bit while you're doing the, the crazy plays okay so here what i would probably have done since there were a lot of enemies in there Instead of like going full frontal assault, I could have gone down and charged up a bit more or something, or waited for them to to get like shoot shot at by the enemies, and then you can charge down there, climb up the wall, and once a few of them are dead or maybe a bit damaged by your teammates, you can, or and, and they have the focus on your teammates, right? Then you can, after they forgot about you, you can come back in and and splat them. I think, I think you have the range to shoot across glass, too. Yeah. And as a Nautilus, you probably want to stay away from the grass, be glass because you can't swim through it. Mm -hmm. the, it. Like, whenever you can stay near your ink, that's very advantageous. Okay, so we've done, we've done two games. Uh, let me look at the awful amount of uh, replays that we have to look at. Um... <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm not looking forward to that. Uh, let me just, whoop, that's the Discord window right there. So. Okay. When was the last time I uploaded something? Picture was sending the game, that's cool. I'm done with the bar review, and then I need to start looking at all, at all of those. Okay, uh, so we got lots of stuff I assume. Mostly tips, but I think there's quite a few. Okay, yeah, quite, okay, okay, now that's a lot. A lot of stuff. Um, I'm probably gonna take a break. And I'll choose. So, okay, let me first ask a question. If I do end up running into too many clips um, and we, we don't have time to make all of them, which ones would you want me to focus on? Like, what kind of uh, game type or weapon style would be most interesting for you guys? No answer, great. <laughs> Uh, maybe off meta weapons. That's that's my preference always. I think okay. those well, are interesting. Honestly, same. I I love um, experimenting with dumb stuff. Yeah, like splatter shot. Like, whatever. We know it's good. And Just, everybody if you're good at splatoon, anyways, right? you're, good. you're good. Yeah, if you're good at splatoon, you're good at the splatter shot. Yeah. Splat umbrella now. Now we're talking. Now that's now we're that's talking. That's something now interesting to talk about. Yeah. So okay, okay, that makes sense. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna go do that. So I'm, uh, I'm gonna stop the stream right there and um, see you guys later uh, after I've selected some clips and yeah, hopefully, hopefully how much, we'll see you how later. much later are you talking about? It's time for me to input the the codes and usually that takes that takes thirty minutes and add to that me like eating a snack or something probably an hour. Uh, so okay. yeah. Okay, okay. Might be in bed. Stop screaming frog! Jesus! <laughs> uh, anyways, bye ya! Okay. Hello. We should be good to go. Got the sound going, I've got my camera. Well, the camera is figuring it's. Location. I think it's just a new player. Whatever. Okay. Um, oh, my camera is on. So I think um, whenever I'll open the game, we'll have the, the Splatfest results. So let's check this uh, first. Marker, copy this. Marker Splatfest results. Okay, and then let's check them. Oops. Okay.
Uh, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay. Hello. Let me get into voice chat. Uh, blah, 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 blah. uh right here. So, I guess, no, 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 I guess, I guess I'll go into focus, focus fishing, right? Or try hard teamwork. Probably try hard teamwork. Uh, doing the boss. Yo. Hello, I'm back. Sorry, it took a bit of time to input all the codes, but I found I found a cool way I can do it straight on my computer, inputting the codes. Do what? To do what? Uh, I I found a way to input the codes right on my computer, so that's cool. What code? The the replay codes. Oh, I see. Uh, okay. Um, so office results. No spoilers. Let's go. Uh, all right. No spo no spoilers. I don't know. What uh, what team were you on? Uh, okay, I was grass. Hold on, hold on. Come yeah, shell rates. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Water one. Okay. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Team with the most votes. Obviously, it's it's big man again. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah, it's big man. It's big. We all big difference. Grass was not picked. <gasps> yeah, it's a. Let's go. Let's go. Who won? Probably one of them was won by big man. <laughs> Both of them by Big Man, what the fuck? Yeah, it's, it's a water sweep. Yeah. Bro, it's a water sweep. Water Why are you sweep. Waiting, waiting for the results? Well, we know sweep. the results. <laughs> the results. Big Man got everything. He's so big, he can fit so many wins. It's a oh, big no. water sweep. Big water sweep! What, what, uh, what team are you on? Uh, uh, shark, 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 shark. Big fire, big fire. Oh. Nice. Let's see what Big Man says. Hey, hey, I'm so proud of your teamwork. <laughs> we came, we splashed, we conquered. <laughs> Bro, one of them's like water. <laughs> they earned the W. Okay, they're using they're using slang. That's okay. Interesting. Uh, water is type W. So uh, what Shiver said, I can't top that. Okay. I was about to stream. <laughs> I was actually about to stream. <laughs> Getting in team water <laughs> together, okay. It means you will picking the water type first part of your Pokemon, right? Pokemon expert. Chris, can you see it? Can you see it? Or like anyone? What, what, what? Yeah, I can see it. Sure. If you're gonna see a gray blob, that's good. I'm seeing Misongard. Oh, uh, believe me? Oh, is that, is that a Lego Ninjago? Lego Ninja! Blade blade, blade blade, bro. Well, anyways, um, so what is what is the water got to my head? <laughs> Wait, hold on. If we all choose the same type, it will be harder to complete the pocket axe. Okay. It's already. People battle, sure, whatever. We don't care about the stages. I want to do some fire food. Want to do some fire food. Now, get out. Any recommendations? Um, buy Lego Ninjago is better. That's my recommendation. Lego Ninjago. Yeah, we got twenty-one sea snails. Let's go. Let me check. Let me check. Twenty-one. Oh yeah, twenty-one. Wait, what? You didn't get twenty-eight? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm team grass. <laughs> Um. Hey, okay, he's a Lego Ninjago, right? Yeah. Okay, I I have a whole Lego set. I think I have some Lego Ninjago, but I am like five foot and it's like six foot. So. I'm some. I just like climb on top. If I fall, it's your fault. Totally. Uh. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Bot review time. Got it. I got it. Listen, one music. Let's go. Is this Anyways, Lego all the replay should be Lego here. You have now? a bell replay mark for download. Download it now. Download. Download. Everything. Downloading a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. 
Need a fourth? Very much a lot of stuff. Okay, uh... Is this Ninjago? Oh, uh, okay, well, hold on. Okay. Yeah, yeah that is Ninjago. Oh, hold on, hold on, let me, let me turn on the Discord thing. Just do it. Lego Ninjago unboxing opening. Let's go. Let's that go. Lego's dimensions. Yes, Lego dimensions. Lego dimensions? No way. It was a game on like the. It was basically Skylanders or Lego's version of Skylanders. I like Skylanders trap team. I'm like I'm like moving around my whole house. I used to have Skylanders, but wait, that's the only replays I have. No, there's something wrong. I know after the, one of the updates, they cleared out the replays. Like, entirely. <laughs> no, no, but hold on, because I, I wrote this so many codes. I, I wrote so many codes, and I only have uh, a few right here. So, it's, it, there's something wrong. I forgot, like... I think... Oh, my gosh. I swear to God, if that just happened, I'm gonna pull my hair. Um... So what I think happened is like I inputted so many codes, it was like, oh shit, I can't remember all of this. So it's, it, it only like saved the last ones and just overwrote the older ones. And now when it's downloading the whole package, it's only downloading. Hold on. 1, 2, 3, Dad. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, only 10. It feels like a limit. Fuck. Oh, all that was a waste uh, of time. But um, instead of that, how's it going for a vod review? What, what did you ask? Is it going good? The VOD review? Well, we're doing it review. now. Wait, you're, oh, you're reviewing replay codes, right? Yeah. Except I have two, but they probably got deleted. Again. Fuck. It's the end of it. I can send to you. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a capture card to stream it or no? Uh, what ca kind of capture card? I have an. I could have reviews. Ever Media LGX like Gamer Extreme. 15 hours. I can do VOD reviews as well because I do have a capture card. I don't. Sad. Uh, do you know which whatever. one is the defense? Let me write the codes again. Whatever. Okay. I guess, I guess, I guess it's not that hard. Is that so defense to you? I think this is an attack. What? What is what? I'm gonna test out different modes. You know, the first tricolor battle I got of the Splatfest, the team I was up against for like the defending team was three Splattershot Juniors and an end zap. That's just sad. Yeah. Team, Team Grass ended up taking the W that round, though. So I'm not complaining. I might move up to Splatoon Night that way if more people want to join. Because um, that way more people that have their replays in can join at once. Uh, so I'm gonna move. I'll join you. Okay, um... So, I have more replays that should be downloaded normally, I think. If you go in, whoop, go to Discord replays, right now? download now. Are you streaming on Discord or? No, I'm streaming on Twitch. Ah. Okay, battle replays downloaded. We have the first three, I believe. Yes, should be good. Wait, which order is it all in? I don't know. This one is Guys, like... if you know. Best possible comeback imaginable. This okay, okay, okay. R B thing, whatever. Mm. Spit it echo. If you oh, touch that, a blade blade while spinning, that's actually a cool spot on the Discord. There, is it a client side mod for Discord? Um, yep. Mm, neat. How? Which one is the? It's R. Where's the R B code? What? I, uh, hold on, I'm struggling really hard right now. With 
freaking I'm inputting codes and 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 then it's downloading them and then the things it's downloading are not the codes I asked for. It's like something else from somewhere else. Is it a virus? Nah, it's okay. R B. Code to codes. R B four F. Search. Nothing. Fuck. What do you mean those codes? I thought you meant hacking codes because you literally got to hack on the Wii U. I still remember that. Yeah. And I still was so bad. Where's my R R G code? R G R G. What? Honestly, if you can't find them, just skip over them and tell them to resend them. Oh my god, because for some reason, all these codes, which are different, they all show up as the same code. Because probably because I I inputted them on the phone and not on the on, on the switch, so it, it doesn't tell me which code it is, and that's why it's all messed up, and that sucks. Because now so I don't wait, know which one. the bottom is. corner there. Yeah, wait, in the bottom. If you look it, three pit. Oh, is it say showing them all as the same code? Exactly. I don't. Th this is that, so that's, annoying. That's wacky. Yeah. So like, it, it's easier to input the codes, but then you're freaking lost and you don't know which one you're looking at. Uh, but I oh, I guess there's the names. I mean, that's that's only useful if the names ma are matching. Uh, so this is from blah 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 blah. This is from L M. I think this is Luigi. But then why is it inverted? Why is the first one I put it at the top and the other one's at the bottom? This is dumb and I hate it. Um, anyways, from LM, the, what were they asking? The best comeback imaginable. Well, that's... They we asked might do Discord feedback tab because we can't see behind it. Yeah, true. Uh, whoop, Discord. Okay. So they're asking for feedback on... on and no mention of game details. Okay. Uh, whatever. Play. We'll see what we can learn. That's a huge text and uh, feedback and replays. Okay. Um, rushing to the tower is generally not a good idea. Uh, you wanna hang yeah. back? Yeah, this is, this is gonna be hard, especially because the enemy team has, um, blaster. Um, and you, you wanna just, like, paint more of the map before approaching. Because, like, basically, if one team paints the map and the other one rushes the tower, guess who's gonna win? Probably the one who has lots of paint, can move around, can fire on the tower, and can kill everyone that's, like, all huddled up on the tower. Um, I see. It's, it's working right now, that. I guess. Since so that's... they're playing uh, Squad of Shot Jr., they should try and charge him special first, get that shield, True. then hop on the tower and activate the shield before rushing. Like, they got it up there, but they should have done it from the start to yep. give their team a bit more of an advantage. Because, yeah, see, it wasn't really... Like, the thing is, yeah, the push worked until it didn't. Because right now, the enemy team is on the tower. They've got pretty good point in middle. And it's gonna be hard to to basically stop their their push. Like, whenever you make a push, you don't just wanna do a push. You wanna secure it uh, enough. Yeah. So am I the log back in? Okay. Uh, I I definitely see how he he's always like going for the tower, not really looking. Like here, instead of sharking, it's like it, it's useless to shark on the tower. There's literally no point. Everybody knows you're on there. Uh, so just like paint around yourself, like there was that whole corner that you could have painted uh, while you were in the tower. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and like, there, honestly, uh, there's really no point to get on the tower if you don't have a uh, strong numbers advantage. Because um, then you, you're just going to be an easier target and be easier to basically wipe. Because like, here I'm seeing a lot of you guys being nearly all dead with the enemy team being uh, fully alive. So if you rewind a bit, they ignored some of the enemy's members yeah, just to go straight for the tower. Right now, I, I just see you throwing bombs on the tower uh, a lot, and meanwhile, the, the whole map is, is painting in the enemy. Like, if and you look to the right there, there's that guy attacking their teammates when they could have been helping them with that. Yeah. And, like, that same guy that was attacking their teammates just killed them. Mm -hmm. And they had 
started attacking them, they could have gotten onto the tower without contesting from them. Or they could have gotten that guy down and helped the team. Yeah, there's honestly there there was no reason to get on the tower at that moment because the tower is just gonna move automatically back to the middle here as well. No reason to go on the tower to fight that guy. You can just fight him from the ground. That works very good. And just in general, you, you are allowed to get off the tower even if you're doing a push. You can step off. The tower is gonna stand there. You fight a bit. You kill some people, and then you can go back on the tower. It doesn't immediately start moving back. Mm -hmm. It takes a second before it starts going back. Yeah, I think it's five seconds. Not sure. Yeah. That five seconds seems about right. And also, they should be trying to camp those jump points. Well, not necessarily, but still. Watching out for them. Why is there a little robot voice, like, whenever you, after, like, after you speak? You sit and talk about me? Yeah. Could be, like, static. Oh. Uh, first time chat from he he how to hello can you put a replay sure um and Mio also asked can we give bot absolutely go ahead uh, we might have a lot to go through um so but since you guys are there obviously I'm, I'm gonna um, get to yours faster no sense of waiting wait so about about whoever said uh, how could the replay? Does the replay have to be like open or like uh, since uh, since the spot is gone? What do we replay? Uh, what is the question exactly? His I still have some tricolor uh, turf wars from my history, but I'm not sure like. No, I'm, I mean I guess we already went a lot over tricolor, and it's, it's not like I have like. I think we, we went over the whole tricolor deal a lot, and I, I don't I don't have any specific tips for like I was mostly focusing on the map, and I think we we run down through all the the tips we could give regarding the map. Plus, it's it's oh, not so even sure that we're gonna get the map again, so. So just put like replays, yeah. not like uh, specific yeah, ones. Yeah, normal replays would be better. Alright. I'm, I'm not gonna play replays, I don't wanna play. So, that's why. I mean, if you, if you don't have replays that you already want to send, don't go ahead and make matches just to send them. That's we already have a lot to go through. Anyways, interesting game. Uh, next one is we had two games. Um, so I believe it was from Gabby Magpie asking. If any Gluga players basically wanna uh, uh, help him with tips against the Gluga players he was facing, because I think he was facing two Gluga players, but he's not playing the Glugas. He's just he's just asking for feedback against Glugas, I believe. So one here and one here. Okay. Uh, I guess let's start with this one from Bublub, Mr. Mr. W Magpie. Hee hee ho, uh, do not feel obligated to to play matches just to send VODs, um, we already have way more than enough. Like, if you do have older games of yours though, um, feel free to send those. Uh, one year ago, how is that possible? I have one from one year ago, and the game's not even a year old yet. Interesting. Bro, I think my story's broken. Um, so what happened here? I do not know. Because I'm not paying attention, I'm sorry. Um, Booyah Bomb. Okay, that was risky. I mean, that whole that whole part of the map near your base is covered, so I wouldn't have ventured there. I would just have waited the, the Booyah Bomb to run out and just went there still. Um, and definitely, yeah, uh, like here, you guys are in the tower and the people are coming back. But definitely, if they manage to, to get to you, and especially because they're going from the back, here you have no place to retreat, so I would focus on this. Uh, so you said you were struggling with the glue guys. Yeah, I definitely see... Like, the glue guys, um, as I think people mentioned uh, in, in the replies, 
they're kind of slow to move. Um, and usually they prefer to take like static positions, but since they have like so much ink on the map right now, and you guys are not really focusing on, on painting back at, uh, at all, um, it's gonna be easier to them to move in, in more annoying positions. Especially because there is a lot of annoying positions on this map. Honestly, everything is pretty close together. It's easy to get like behind people, right? Because you, you have the whole uh, rotating thing at the bottom. Sometimes so, when you die at the edge of a power clamp, it just falls off the edge. It's the saddest time in life right now. I find you, a lot on this Luahu world map is a lot of people go to the rotating platform at the bottom, especially for Turf War, ink up that area and like just hide, wait for it to rotate around, and then they start charging your base like right off the bat. Rotation? I find a lot. You know like on the bottom how there's that spinning pat, like the spinning card on the bottom? Yeah. Like where it, yeah, so people, like, for Turf War especially, they'll stay down there at the beginning of the match, wait for it to rotate around to the enemy side, and then they'll start covering Turf in that. Yeah. Basically, like, sneak attack from the beginning of the match. That's basically my game plan every single time. <laughs> Pretty much. Honestly, um, I usually expect it, and I usually throw a bomber to there and try and deal with them right that is at the beginning very, there. That is a very smart strat. It's a smart strat, because not a lot of people expect it, but... Me seeing it a, lo a bunch. That's good. You, you would definitely, like, if I ever encounter a player that plays like you, I would definitely be looking out for them and, and yeah. I'll be like, okay, that guy knows. Um, yeah. So let's focus on the clue guys real quick to see Those how how they play, basically. Yeah, I mean, here it's, it's less... Oh my gosh, they're squid bagging. Here it's less about, like... I mean, as you can see, that player he just splatted was was stuck basically. No, they have too much ink on the map. Just, just look at this. They they have ways to get everywhere. They can get down here. They can get through to the middle here. You're not really doing an effective job of like painting enough over them that you, you're blocking their path. Like that whole side on your map is their playing space right now. Um, it's, it's you don't want to let them do that. Like, after you successfully get a wipeout and, and stuff, I would absolutely not focus on getting on the tower. Because um, the tower is just going to move back slowly, right? You just want to take the time that the wipeout provides you to ink everything back. That's what you want to do. Like, look at it. There's no way you can defend here. If you're two down, if there's enemy ink everywhere, you, can, you cannot move. You're stuck. There's no way you can move anywhere. I don't recommend them for camping that jump spot there. This is uh, important to get those jump spots there, because they're, they're the weakest when they're jumping in. Yep. Even if you just throw like a bomb its way, if you have like a suction bomb or a splat bomb. So even if you can get a little damage off, it helps. Yeah. So right here, I probably, personally, I wouldn't have taken the risk of getting up the tower to fight against that, um, that splatling. I would have probably went on, on that little platform here. But I mean, I guess I guess it was still a, a correct idea because maybe if you're too far from the spotling, they they have line of sight and they can e take care of you easier. Um, but yeah, as as you mentioned, yeah, it, whenever you see, because you're in your base, right? So you can get there faster by by uh, just respawning, right? Whereas they have to super jump. So the good plan here would be to just like spawn camp. There's, there's I mean, super jump spawn camp them, whatever it's called. Uh, then you make them stagger, and then hopefully you get a wipeout or close to that. And after you get that, you you just paint back the map. Yo, know, I have a replay I entered it in the chat. I haven't sent it yet. It's uh, from a hundred times battle from the Splat Best. If you want to watch that, you can if you want. Okay. Well, we're we're gonna focus mainly on on the um, normal replay right now I'll because I have to go over the whole backlog from the from the channel. No um, problem. So let's see what you guys are saying. Can you give okay gave the vods? So I have to play one real quick. Oh okay, sorry. Wait. Where sorry about that. <laughs> so what about older replays, says not Dog. Yeah, absolutely. If you have older replays and you know specifically oh I messed up that game, I wonder but I don't know how. And you're looking for tips for improvement, just go ahead and and um uh give those replays. It's especially helpful if you know exactly what you're looking for to improve. 
also. Okay. Uh, so game, another game from the same player against Lugas. Uh, again, so they're looking for uh, more tips against the Lugas. I find I struggle more against Staffle Dealies and Glugas. Well, for me at least, it's because I play Splatana, Viper. Mm. I mean, Splatana has more range. Yeah, but usually they try and get up too close to you. Yeah, that, that's the thing with the Daphne. They can easily. They, their rolls are very fast, so you need to aim better. Like, even if they're close, since they can roll very fast, it's going to be hard to, have, to hit the one shot, probably. Honestly, hmm. I find Splatana is pretty good for power control and, well, especially Rainmaker, in my opinion. Hmm. What I do I, like to do with... I, I guess here, the problem I'm seeing um, is probably you're, you're trying to fight head-on against the Glugas, and it's probably not working out because the Glugas have rolls, which, right, they can evade you. By the time you react to their rolls, which they have a pretty uh, a pretty good roll, which goes very, fa very far, um, so you're not you're not really cut out to fight them head on because they have more range, they have more damage, more for damage per second. Um, I guess your your weapon is better at playing off walls because of the burst bomb and the perfect um, accuracy when firing in the air. Uh, and you also want to flank people, like a shark basically, be be hidden. Um, so I would probably do honestly the strat I always do with this weapon slash the strat that. Uh, we mentioned is something a lot of players do just whenever you, you roll out um, at the beginning of the match just try to go on the underside on the left side uh, near the wall and basically flank the enemy from there in their base that should work at least at your current level I I think there's not gonna be a lot of people contesting you if you do that and like here yeah you're just cutting straight um, to the tower to try and, and Protect it, but really, what you should probably do is cover some of your base. Because if your push ends up dying, which it's probably going to do, because the the enemies have a lot of, they're spread out basically, firing at all angles. If you do lose that push, they're going to have an easier time getting back in. Um, yeah, and I mean, like here, you can see that even the middle is not covered correctly. Uh, it's going to be very hard for you to play. Just have more paint awareness in general. Just look at the map, basically. If you see all of this, like some people are super jumping all the way into the enemy's base, but honestly, they're just super jumping in the middle of no man's land. And here, look at this, the tower is coming back, and it's coming back towards more enemy paint, so they're gonna have a very easy time. Just focus less on finding, but focus on, on support. Because I guess here, the weapons you guys have are um, you have two splash, you have a splatter shot, and you have a roller. And all of them are pretty close range, no backlines. Uh, so there's no one, there's, there's gonna be no one to chill in the back and paint. Whereas on the enemy team, you have the splatling, you have the blah blah blur. Um, and maybe probably the glue just to an extent, I don't know. Um, and they're all gonna do way more painting than you guys do. So if none of you, if you all wanna play Slayer or like aggressive, none of you is gonna stand back and, and paint. But that's a crucial thing that ev like every team needs in a game. So if you see that nobody else is doing, just do the dirty job of painting, basically. If you don't really even wanna paint that much, at least paint on your way back to the fight. Mm -hmm. uh, or at least enough to get your special up. True, that's true. If, if you do not want to paint, at least paint enough for the special. So that, that's yeah. the bare minimum. You don't need to make everything squeaky clean, you just need to get at least enough for a special. Or like, almost for a special. Okay. Or, or like, just, you, what you can do is just look at the map, and, and basically in, a, in a, any given area, you want to have at least, like, especially if it's close to your base, you want to have at least more of your paint than the enemy's paint. It, like, this is this is not fine at all, right? This area is more so correct, right? Uh, having a little ink splotch of the enemy right here down there is is pretty okay. It's not gonna hurt, but that's not okay. This is not okay. 
Like, anything you see that is, like, not okay, you just paint a little bit over until it's mm, mostly okay, and then it should be fine. That's just one of the players just going back. They only painted, like, a little bit just to get back into their fight. Mm -hmm. They didn't spend any time painting over the rest of the turn. Yeah, and that's, that's a thing I I usually say, like, if, if you only paint a meek line just to get into the fight, if any single enemy, like, fires a few splotches of ink behind you, that path is cut off, you have no escape route, you're dead, basically, as good as dead. Okay. So yeah, here I wouldn't really focus on the glue guys as much, it's not really that the glue guys are... are killing you better, I mean, they are the weapon that is... First off, they're not one of the two backlines, and also they're not the sploosh, so they have way more range and more, way more damage per second. So yes, you're gonna get killed a lot more by, by the Glugas. Uh, and also, I guess the Blob already did a lot of kills, because of just, I mean, it's a Blob. Uh, but it's not necessarily because the Gluga was doing a particularly good job. It was very much, in my opinion, because they had so much paint. And, well, when you have paint and you're able to fight good, uh, like as a team, Who's gonna get the most kills? The weapon that does that easier, which in this specific yeah. team comp was the glue guys. Right. So, oh, is Tree here? Tree is my brother. Uh, really? Okay. Um, so now we need to move on to the next clip. So I need, I need to look at. Uh, uh, Check. Nope, this is not one. I want. I want this. Let's go. So Discord, we've got. Da -da 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 -da. Um, let's run this one I wanted to look at. I have so many windows to manage. This is horrible. So, uh, Clam Zipcaster looking for feedback on on Octobrush to help the team. Boom, enter, download, oh, download, okay. Next one is um, Fluga feedback. Some clowns didn't find out. Okay, this one. Boop, enter, up. Okay, download. Good, good, good. Next one is. What's a Fluga reviews? Okay, oh, yes. This one didn't work. This one worked. And this is from the Tri Slusher. Tri Slusher main. No, no specific feedback asked. Okay, we've got three. Let's download them. Uh, Discord hidden. I'm going back, clicking back, whoops, view replays, please download. Uh, Mio says I'm a go, okay, no problem, thank you for tuning in. Um, so, I've uh, got the Trislusher, the glue guys, and the Octobrush. And we're starting with the Octobrush. Kind of weird that it's inverted, but whatever, fine. Okay, and and by the way, thanks for for uh, sticking in the voice channel and giving tips. That's very nice. Okay, so bye. So, um, the player was saying that they felt like. They, they basically wasted every single um, Zipcaster use, and they were wondering how to use the, the Octobrush to support the team more, basically. Uh, so this is Columbus. I'd say probably if they're playing Octobrush is, like, get more turf painted for movement. Yeah. And, 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 like, what I've, what I've seen from the beginning of the game here is that they're using the brushing down mode a bit too much, in my opinion. And not painting it off, like, the the only real weapon that is gonna want to, like, roll down uh, is really only the ink brush, and that's mainly if you're getting into danger. Because, like, here since the beginning of the game, you haven't really done anything to paint, and that's really showing right now on the map. Um, so just get some, some more paint in there. Um, sure, this weapon is all about killing, but you're, you're still playing Splatoon, and you still need to paint it well. Like, yeah, here, here's definitely not a good spot to super jump, because you're super jumping in, in 
first off, you're not super jumping that far, then you're super jumping near a lot of enemy ink, and you can just like respawn normally, it's nearly as fast, and by doing that you get to paint some of the ground. So definitely I'm seeing a, a big paint out the problem. Because here the enemies have such an easy time getting two dunks on you at once. Because they they have a clear path and you're not doing anything to prevent that path from existing basically. And get to the entire path, at least like do a little strip to kind of block it off so they have to take the time to repaint the path. Yeah, I mean anything really, just 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 paint, because you're like currently they're just brushing down and using bombs. Getting Probably too focused on, on the kill there with the Zipcaster and, and ignored the other players throwing even more times. Just, just paint. Now is the time to paint. Like that, that, those suction bombs are really not doing anything right now. And you're the only person alive. Um, so yeah, I guess here the, the play is just to wait for your teammates to respawn. But like, honestly, whenever you see all of that, and you should be scared and you should be like, oh fuck, I need to paint this back. And throwing a meek suction bomb, suction bomb there is not going to paint anything, really. And it's not going to kill anyone either. So like, you're, you're throwing more suction bombs than you need. And you're not controlling any any particular zone. Nor are you killing anybody. So you're, you're just throwing them in the air. Um, and, and, you know, you're hearing that from a player who plays the Octobrush mainly to spam the suction bomb. So I would know. Like, the thing is, like, whenever I, I play uh, my suction bomb spam kit, I usually play it on modes that are all, like, splat zone or tower control, because that way you can throw the suction bomb and be sure that it's going to be effective and cover the whole zone. Like, what was that suction bomb? Why did you throw it there? <laughs> that, was, that was a cool throw and it activated the thing. Was it just oh, and you threw it on the thing there. The ink rail. Or not ink rail, but the... You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, like I'd say probably it's you're throwing way too much suction bombs, and also the suction yeah. bombs themselves use up a big chunk of your ink tank. Exactly. So not only are you throwing your like away half like a a good chunk of your tank, you're basically leaving yourself defenseless if someone just rushes you. And you don't leave yourself enough paint to basically paint like because even if you you were like okay i'm now i'm gonna start painting after throwing the suction bomb you're gonna run out instantly and you're gonna be like oh it's not a good thing like you're i don't know how you got to this place play style of throwing a lot of suction bombs uh maybe it works in other modes though because i i definitely do have that kind of play style but you you gotta think about the context of when you're doing it because here in clam Blitz, that suction bomb is going to cover basically nothing there are so many approach options to the basket you really need to play more of a painting game the Clamlet is more about controlling the map rather than controlling an objective. Um, so yes, there like are clan blitz, there can be multiple objectives at once, like multiple yeah. clans and enemy clans. We really need to be aware. Um, so now we've got this Gluga play. Uh, let me see the tips that were. Cause yeah, right now what I'm doing is um, whenever I enter the code, I also. Uh, basically make a really quick summary of all the the, um, the questions that were asked and all the tips that were given uh, that way it's easier so this one is Google feedback some some plays that they tried out didn't plan out as they they thought it would so basically trying to, attempting some plays and not really getting mileage out of them okay so I see lots of range on the enemy team, a lot of range. They've got the bullpoint, the jet vulture, and also the tri stringer. So we've got good, good damage overall. And on your team, you mainly have the glugas, which have a little, little bit more range, I believe, and the flings out. But that's you. You guys are definitely going to struggle against the enemy. Team. So yeah, their team. The R team is mostly mid range and close range. You get like two kind of mid range and two close range. Uh, not the, I think the bullpoint oh. is pretty pretty long range, uh, honestly. Oh I, oh, I was talking about the purple team, but yeah, the ballpoint's pretty long range, and then also the jet sculpture itself, yeah. and then the sloshy machine is really good for killing people on the tower. Mm -hmm. 
usually whenever... Oh yeah, you're right, this washing machine is also gonna be a thing. Yeah, usually whenever I look at the, um, at the um, team comps, I always start by looking at the enemy's team comp, because then you, you can basically... Instead of looking at yours, then you're looking at the enemies, right? And you, you, you're not really making any conclusions from what you just saw. Whereas when I start with the enemy team scum first, it's basically I'm asking a question, what do they have? And then I'm answering the question, what what do we have to answer that, right? So I'm like, hmm, they have long range. What can can we use on our team to defend against that? Then I look at, at the, the ally team and I see, okay, we have some weapons which are good at dealing with this. So right now what I would probably do is indeed, as you're currently doing right now, just try to use your rolling ability to get close to the um, to the long range people and just kill them because they're going to struggle with you in close range. You have also a, a splash and a sploosh which is very good for dealing with them. Let's say this, if you're a close range trying to sneak around and get close to those long rangers like the chargers and that, if you can flank them and get them from behind, they can't do really anything about you if you're a close range. Mm -hmm. And it's currently working out pretty good so that that's cool. And since you have like three of, of you guys being close range, as long as you all take different paths, try to be sneaky and stuff, maybe use specials to coordinate and, and defend, as you're doing right now uh, with your wall, um, then yeah, it, it's, it's gonna work good. Because they're not gonna be able to focus on all of you at once. And what I would, what I would probably do, uh, and that would probably be the Flingzas job, is to stand a bit behind everyone else, use its longer range, and uh, if... if most of the people die, like here you had like two people down. As long as the flings uh, stay safe, you guys can also get them back, so that's cool. So uh, but currently a very solid have... game. Like I can see there, the Tri-Stringer is taking up a sniper position. Like you can probably get him off his perch by at least throwing out one bomb there. I mean, the ghoul, the ghoul guys don't have bombs, but uh, yeah. No, right, right, but uh, like, if you were playing kit with a bomb. Mm -hmm. And that, that's one thing I do also with the, with the Octobrush, uh, whenever I have uh, the suction bombs. I, I love to just basically tell no to the enemies and, and restrict them some spots. And um, yeah, if, if you're not able to basically lock down an area like a splash zone or a, or a tower control, um, just basically lock down perches uh, for snipers and stuff and basically they're they're never going to be as long as you constantly spam on there they're never going to be able to use that perch and it's going to be great so that was a good play there coming up behind them the ball point the only improvement i could see there because uh, you're, you're doing pretty good like sneaking behind and everything um just turn around the camera more um, whenever you were up there, you kind of looked towards your base instead of like watching out for the enemies where they are. Uh, that booyah bomb throw what, could have probably been better, also. But yeah, that it's was a, a very solid, solid play. Nice. It overall did pretty well. Mm -hmm. Especially going after some of the more longer range ones to make it easier for the rest of the team. Yep. Would usually, you... like, usually when I see, like, an E-leader or something like that, I usually try and at least pick them off or get them kind of aggroed on me and off the rest of the team. Okay. Even if you can kind of distract them on you specifically, it's better than them, like, sniping people on the objective. Yeah, especially as, um, as the Gugas, because let's say you were against a sniper, but here there, there wasn't a sniper, but, like, Especially against snipers, since you can roll, it's gonna make them miss a lot more than with any other kind of weapon. If you're a so dually, it's, it's definitely kind of good to distract. Snipers. Yeah. Anyways, game six from Tri Slosher. Looking for just random general tips, I guess. Let me take a look at the notes. Yeah, they're they're trying they're trying to main the Tri Slosher right now. Um. Okay. So, what can we see from the team comp? A sniper, a high hydra. Um, okay. And on your side, you have definitely a lot less range. But that that's not necessarily a disadvantage again, as long as you're sneaking up behind people. Although this map has 
much less. I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know about the map layouts. Uh, do you have ninja squid? No quick. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do, which is good. So you should definitely try to sneak up on, on that Hydra. Like, especially the Hydra, because the Hydra is going to be so good at hanging over the, the spot zone. And basically getting rid of any of your teammates that are trying to get the zone. As long as they they have line of sight. As like a slosher, you should try and take the high purchase for splash zones. Because you get more coverage and also you can kind of rain it on the enemies. Yeah. Also, like, real quick, um, that, that um, inkjet use... Um, you try to camp the um, the super jump. I, I mean, it worked. But what I would have probably done here is at least throw a few shots on the on the hydra because the hydra is still there, right? At least if you would have thrown a shot, like even if you didn't kill, it would have uh, interrupted the charging of the hydra and made it so that they had to to basically recharge their their shot again, which takes a long time. Uh, I would even poke it, sniper. Yeah, it would have given you um, a little bit of time. I mean, the sniper can reload faster, so it's, it's not as important. But, like, the Hydra, really, if you just interrupt it, it gives you those extra few seconds where they're not going to shoot at you, they're not going to necessarily pay attention too much. You can sneak up behind them and then kill them. And it, it, even if they kill you, right, um, if they pay attention to you and try to, to turn around and kill you, they're not going to be focused on the zone during that time, and then your team can sneak up. Um, so yeah. Definitely seeing a lot of disadvantage, but you guys have special and you're all regrouping. So let's see how you guys use that. I'd say that's why uh, Junior should have probably maybe tried to pop the... I think they did, the, right before they, they died. And the bubble is right there. Yeah, they might, they maybe should have popped it when the Booyah Bomb was coming in. Try and shield it, but yeah, I here, be wrong about my that. main concern would be to try and shoot once at the Hydra, and that was not. So you probably should have like uh, activated the um, inkjet and just stayed up there, because you have you do have a, quite a bit of range. Uh, it's not really a painting special; it's more of an attacking special. Yeah, so having more height uh, with the inkjet would be way more advantageous um, to have line of sight on, on people. Cause like here, like the the inkjet was just like bringing you up to the platform, and the hydra was like eye level with you, and you definitely need you're kind of like an explosher, right? So you do need to have the height advantage if you want to aim at people correctly. Uh, whereas the hydra can just have direct line of sight, level to level with you, and and win. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So yeah, I definitely think the Hydra was a big problem here, because it was alive most of the game. Uh, it painted the zone, it killed everybody. Um, the, that was the main concern. Definitely could have re, like, redirected the inkjet shots towards them, and it, mm -hmm. even if you picked them off, it would give your team time to recover and take over the zone. Because especially as, as a tri slasher with Ninja Squid, like honestly, if you, if you get up close to them, which you should be able to do with Ninja Squid, and you're able to kill them, they, they're not going to be able to do anything. At least you should get a trade, because your kill time is so fast, and there's no way you miss if you're near yeah. them, right? Ninja Squid is really good on close range weapons. Yep. I'd say have Ninja Squid on your close range, but not on like your kind of backliner kits. Okay, so we've done the three games. Uh, three, three games? Okay, we have Discord right here. Let's take a look at some more of the replays. So we got. Well, I can. Oh. Yeah. Um. Good, good, good. Uh, Hydra. No, what is the slash? Okay. Uh, so we got. Oops. Um, this one. These three Hydra games. Um, they're saying that they're struggling with uh Ninja Squid users and other long range people. I think that that's a bit. Of lots of matches. I don't know. Do we do them all? Maybe it shouldn't be that long. Um, so let me just input them really quick. First one is good. Okay. Um, I guess the other one is also tower control. So I'm still gonna input it, but may maybe we just skip that one and we go straight to the other game mode, which is gonna be splat zones. Um. Struggling with ninja squid, I'd say a good thing to do is try and cut off 
like passages this like they can swim from from their base to your base if you kind of like make a line and kind of cut off their path a little bit it makes it easier to kind of sneak out where they're going or hiding yeah makes sense you can't ninja squid if you don't have ink Where's my... um so here felt like i was underperforming any tips to uh with the stifle to push to s um da -da -da -da, what do you say okay sure and another one just for for having more replays at once uh no 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 lots of tips lots of tips mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this one will skip because it's like 16 kills as an e-leader sure work out good good for you <laughs> Okay, this is from Victory with uh, he's just trying out the the blaster. No, no specific request, right? But I know Victory and, and he usually mains the squelchers. Here he tried the the range blaster, so interesting. Okay, let's take a look at them. Uh, so we go back. Let me let me remove this first. Okay, we go back. Go back in. View replays. Whoops. Uh, whoop 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 whoop. For fuck's sake. I accidentally click on no way. I think there's no way for me. Oh my gosh. Come on. Well, whatever. I do have it in my fleet board. Um, uh, I'm playing clan bits in the background right now. And just as I netted a goal, they got theirs in like a moment before ours. Oh, that's... And it like popped it out. Like spat it out. It's like, nope. Oh, sometimes, like one time, I was uh, playing clown blitz, and they, they I, we threw the clown blitz in their basket, right? It was doing the piercing noise and stuff. Then it was it, doing nothing happened, me. and then it just like fell out. But they weren't yeah, scoring it... themselves, so that was weird. Yeah. Yeah, I'm playing clown blitz in the background right now. Honestly, I don't really play a lot of rank, to be honest. I play a lot more tier 4 than I do ranked. Mm. Sneak attack! Heh, <laughs> I broke the basket. Okay, so view replays. You have a battle replay mag for download. Download it now, download. Okay, oof. It's annoying that the, the pre-selected button is the no button. If you're going too fast, you're gonna delete everything. If I can kind of give just in, for general gameplay, when you die due to an enemy, just yo do a ouch ping at least once. Mm -hmm. Because it brings more attention to you than like because it, your death doesn't show up on the kill feed. Yep. I mean, though, in this game, in Splatoon 3, you have a lot more UI elements which indicate that people are dead. Like, when, when people die, you have, like, the splash on, on the screen. You have the the big X mark on the HUD, which, like, pops out on the screen. You have the big icons and stuff. It's definitely easier to be aware of this. But, yeah, having the voice line play out is definitely, definitely good. I'm not Play arguing hard. against that. Uh, so, we've got the Hydra games. Oh, I just noticed something. Uh, the question mark, um, if it's yellow, it's probably a knockout. Or at least a win. Okay, interesting. Whereas those are also wins. Interesting. Or was it a defeat? No, that's a defeat. And that's a victory. And that's a defeat. Okay, that's weird. I don't know what the... What the thing means um but anyways we've got the um, hydra games so one on tower control one on tower control again are those the same i think they are um so let's play this one first one on tower control on the hydra so struggling with longer range people and, and ninja speed users Okay. So. Oh, I just got there. Uh, you guys are one sniper down. So, what are the team comps? You got, you guys got lots of range. Yeah. On the enemy team, you've got the Nautilus and the uh, Splatter Scope. 
you guys definitely have a good bit of uh, a little bit more range. Uh, someone sneaking up behind you. Okay, that was a triple splash. That's very good. You're definitely mechanically skilled slash a good sense of game awareness, I believe. I'm definitely, like, since I play snipers a little bit more, I'm kind of surprised about what I'm seeing uh, regarding the Hydra's placements. Because um, I would assume the Hydra would take more so sniper positions. I de okay, I definitely feel though like they're they're very aware of whoever's sneaking in their base. That's very good, very, very good. I see someone sneaking in my base, it's always good to take care of them sooner rather than later. That was a good kind of diversion with the blue app on there. Yep. So yeah, one thing I'm very surprised about um, is, is like the fact that they're standing more in the open, and I guess that's fair because as long as you're charged up, you have a very high rate of fire, so nobody's gonna really be able to contest you um, if they're firing at you because you have more range, more damage per second, so you can just kill them easier. Um, I, I figure. So it, it's not a problem that you get in close as long as you're firing and you're already charged and, and safe. And and I guess if the whole if you you're basically aware that the whole enemy team is on on the other side of the map pretty far and you can charge up safely even in an open space then that's fine. Uh, so definitely something I'm learning because I'm I'm not playing a lot of Hydra and I just assume it plays a lot more like a sniper. Because it definitely has a lot more mobility. So I don't really like the charging kind of play style for like spotlings and all that because honestly I find like once you release a charge especially like, if you're playing stick controls it can be kind of punishing like if someone gets away from you but what I find mostly with the splatlings is they have a very like no frog come on we're doing serious VOD reviews now it's not the time man you know what Um, but what I find a lot is like the spotlings have a very straight arc of fire, like they don't kind of branch out like blasters and stuff. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like Hydra spotlings. Yeah. Like the that's good that in its own right, but also like if you're if you have a very mobile like enemy, it's not very good with dealing with them. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean that's true. They, I mean, I mean like the. Um, I, I mean, I guess, uh, especially with the Hydra, I don't think it's necessarily as true, because what you can do is, uh, if the enemy is mobile, right, you can do the same thing as you would do to basically fight against a ninja squid user, you just paint, uh, paint a circle around them, right, paint, paint, basically not to kill them, not to aim directly at them, but paint to That's basically prevent them to move, so that you have an easier time killing them afterwards. Singling them out, yeah. Um... And it, I, I guess like you, when, whenever you see on the on the uh, your reticle or the hydra, it's pretty big. Uh, but in reality, the the shots are not that imprecise. Uh, it's just basically showing you if, if your shots do miss, this kind of miss, like um, go on the outwards edge. That's where it's gonna go, like the max range. But usually, it stays near the middle. So it it, it is pretty precise, even though the reticle doesn't seem like it. Also, I wonder why we're not seeing the reticle. Can we see it? A replay. You can't that see the reticle in the replays? That's I, can't, I can't see it. Try switching to another person and see Yeah, it. I, I tried it and it doesn't work. Yeah, I think because it's a, a replay, it doesn't show it. Yeah, probably. Kind of stupid, to be honest. I mean, it makes sense. It makes probably. sense from like a kind of cinematic. Out, but yeah because that, that's something that's on the on the specific players HUD right whereas like it's, yeah. it's not really possible to do that uh, here and also, see the ink tank when they go in the ink. yeah the, the only UI elements we have uh, are really UI elements that that apply to everybody so like the the game state and stuff um but okay that that's a pretty solid game I believe I think plus you guys won uh, what were the specific you guys struggle with snipers and I guess yeah I, I guess 
that's the thing, like, um, if, if you're gonna play against snipers, snipers usually stay on the perch, they take more safe positions. Snipers are more concerned about uh, staying alive, because um, they have very poor options at close range. Whereas you guys, uh, hy Hydras, as long as you're charged, uh, even close range you can handle yourselves very fine. So, I was definitely surprised myself uh, to see you play in the open like this, uh, but it, it does work. Most of the time, here it worked uh, also pretty good. But if you're struggling against the snipers or the longer range uh, people, I would probably say that it's because you're playing more in the open. And maybe then try to play more like a sniper against them, right? Like a sniper 1-1 one, one battle. Or at least try to get in close. Uh, as long as you've got charge. I mean, I, I wonder how, it's, how easy it's going to be for you to get charge while also getting close. That would be something the Nautilus would do better. Um... But yeah, I, w I would probably say that some of your teammates probably should have taken care of them, like the brush or maybe the, the blaster could have taken care of the sniper more, if that's something you struggled against. Um, like an aggressive sniper is the best way to put it. So let's take a look at this one. This one is Splat Zones from the same player, and they are struggling against Ninja Squid users, so let, let's see. Because like there, the there are no like snipers in this game, so I assume lots yeah. of the enemies have Ninja Squid. Yeah, like I run Ninja Squid myself. This is game eight. So let's take a look uh, real quick. Uh, so you're on this team. Oh, okay, full team of Ninja Squid. This is gonna be. <laughs> yeah, I, de I definitely see why. You specifically yeah, mentioned Ninja Squid. Team. This must have been a very. Oh, it's flat zones. So, yeah, I could see where they would be struggling. Yeah. Flat zones. Because if they get, get good map coverage, they can easily sneak up behind you. Mm -hmm. That must be a very, very disheartening yeah, like right experience, there. slash, a very formative one. It's yeah, very like marking. You can't really tell where they are. But what. what um, people, a little thing to note about Ninja Squid, or just any moving in ink in general. If you move fast in ink, it leaves a trail. Not yeah. that you're going to be really able to analyze it, like. During I mean, match, like I octane uh, gameplay, but if you notice little streaks in the ink, you can kind of see where they've been going. Yeah, but I, I mean, like as you're seeing right now in the gameplay, like it's very hard to see. Especially the Hydra is going to be a very long range weapon, so from that distance, I mean, it really depends. Like if you're close range, you're going to have a high, uh, better time seeing it, uh, but then you're also going to be in the middle of a fight, so you're not going to be able to, to focus on it that much. Here. It's true that like from the positions they were in, it was pretty chill. Um, I mean, you guys have delay on the stream. I mean, I mean you have delay uh, from the voice. But like, if they're chilling back, they're gonna have an easier time seeing it and maybe interrupting it. Um, but also, since they're farther, they're gonna have they're gonna have more t more time to react, but less of a good view on the trail. Basically, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so yeah, I guess I guess against, against a full team of Ninja Squid, my main suggestion would be to focus as much as you can on leaving the least amount of enemy ink anywhere. Just creep up on their base and and make the paint your paint go creep forward, basically. Your paint is your best ally. Um, do, basically, do not trust any splotches of ink. <laughs> uh, so here the, the game state, because I'm not looking at that enough. Uh, there's six points left for the enemy team, whereas you guys have 51. Uh, so you definitely need to win. Personally, I don't win have more. too much of Ninja Squid, because I run... I mean, uh, Platana Wiper, which has the torpedo on it. So if you have a Seeking weapon, if you suspect someone's ninja squidding in the zone, just throw in yourself, and mm -hmm. it should be able to attack them for you. True. So like anything that you scan would be very, very advantageous to use. So you have a Nasser bomb, which is very nice. Uh, let me take a look at the team comp. Um, the blob lover is pretty good at, at just like firing random shots and in, in, in different directions and just hearing the hitting sound slash just like hitting someone so that they get out. Um, their special, the rain is pretty good. 
Uh, I forgot what the Tetris have. Uh, I think that I don't know. I, I forgot what the sub is. And then you've got the um, uh, the Splatter Pro, which has the uh, the angle shooter, which can mark. It's kind of hard to mark someone you can't see, though. So I yeah, I definitely see. I definitely see why people are saying that it's less useful. I mean, it's not that the special is bad. Uh, but the point sensor, you can just throw it if you're unsure that someone is there. It, it's not. It's less for like marking someone you already know and being sure that they don't hide behind walls. It's more for like finding people you didn't know what were there before. Um, so I definitely see in a, in a meta where lots of pro players are running in this grid how it's going to be hard to make use of the angle shooter versus a point sensor. Um, I'm thinking. I, I I guess one thing I would do. I mean, like you're taking really, you're going way farther than I, I, I would probably do myself with a Hydra. Like here, um, what I would probably do myself is get on that side of the map because uh, from there I can basically secure that whole splat zone, prevent people from being on that side of the on their part of the glass, right? Because I'll have line of sight, so instead of firing from down there and and hoping basically I hit some drop shots, I could basically have direct line of sight and just kill them instantly. Also, you, you guys want that, that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, be, be up there. And the thing is like from up there, I'm, I, I, you don't need to push forward. You can hang back and just focus on painting because you're gonna need to it, it's okay if you don't push forward into the enemy's base, base as much and if you focus on painting the little spots because like painting the little spots is going to be very useful when you're fighting against a full team of ninja squid so like from that point uh, up there first off um the things i mentioned earlier it's, it's going to be easier to see the ninja squid users if you're in a more calm situation more safe right and you're not panicking uh, so that's definitely helping, and the fact that you're on the glass, right? First off, it's transparent in the in on the bottom, so you can see basically whoever's going with their trail right be below you, right? You're not gonna be in danger. You're gonna be able to look uh, calmly, and as long as you focus on painting well behind you, right? The the, the on the parts that are used to access your perch. Whenever you see that enemy ink is placed down there, you know, okay, someone's coming up on me. I need to charge. I need to prepare. So just take a spot that is safe because you as the Hydra are the, the weapon that is going to output the most paint along with the blah blah blah. So you want to be the one to paint the map to basically force the Ninja Squid users to get out of their ink if they want to move. And you do want to do this as much as you can. So not die at all. So just stay on your perch, put the paint down. That's your job. Um... And as long as you put enough paint down, nobody will sneak up on you because you will know, right? So th those are my tips. Um, next one, we have a roller game and the victory range master. So let's start with the roller game. And let's take a look at the tips that were, they were asking. Roller feels like they're underperforming and they want to push to S rank on tower control. Okay. Uh, so we're doing the game no. okay uh, so what are the team comps right now you guys have pretty pretty close range on the enemy team they do have a little bit more range with the um, the flingza and the splatling so one thing i saw there is that you rush to the tower whereas um on tower control really like getting on the tower is n not something you want to do at the beginning of the game never do that you just Fire at the tower, that's good. Um, if the enemies get on the tower and you fire at the tower, they're gonna die, that's epic. If they do not get on the tower, you both fire on the tower, that's a stalemate, that's also good. As long as you guys are not dying, everything's fine. So um, just at least pop the ball on the tower. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also as, the, um, as a roller, uh, rollers are very good at firing up top and having the ink fall down and do a bit of damage and with a few shots of this you don't have to aim you basically cover the whole tower after a few shots if people stay for too long they're dead 
Uh, so definitely I would have stayed like under the tower and just fired from below. Now we're gonna dip out now. See you later. Uh, okay, bye. -bye. Okay. Let's see. So you do have Ninja Squid. Let me take a look at the abilities that you guys have. Uh, two Ninja Squid on your team, and you also have Ninja Squid on your team. Uh, which one was the Ninja Squid user? It was the 52 guy. Yeah, okay. Um, so right now the enemy team is pushing our uh, into your base. But the tower is clear. I wouldn't necessarily get on the tower right now. You don't really have to do that. So it does give you a vantage point, but it also makes you an easy target. And especially if you're, if you're running Ninja Squid, you, you're not getting that much use out of the Ninja Squid if you're going on the tower. That, that would probably be something that you want to let your teammates do. I'm also going to give props to the, team, uh, the, the paint output on the map, that's pretty good. Um, probably a suggestion I would give. Um, like here you can see at, at least on the, in the middle of the map uh, it was more painted by the enemy team right they're, they're getting a, a good bit more paint on on the middle than you guys have I wouldn't really start pushing on the tower as long as I don't have solid control of mid or at least a good numbers advantage on the enemies because here you guys are, are kind of often at a, at a numbers disadvantage compared to the enemies you can see on the HUD you're always uh, more people down than they are and also as a ninja squid user uh, what I would probably do is um, go around on that side right flank them basically because you're you're gonna have they're gonna have a harder time seeing you so even if you flank and you're all by yourself over there and someone sees you right um, you're still gonna be safer just for the fact that you have ninja squid so you can like strafe around and have more chance of winning that 1v1 and if you do, then it's an easy way to basically flank them from behind and assist your team like that. Um, so let's see what you're doing here. Yeah, you're, you're probably taking fights way too head on, staying too out in the open, not enough in your ink. Um, you, you, like with this weapon, especially with Ninja Squid, you do want to shark a lot. And I also saw that you had your big bubbler and you did not make use of it uh, last time. But currently it's doing very good. Yeah, here I would probably use my uh, long range shots if I wanted to hit that layer. But good call on just painting their base to prevent them from pushing uh, forward more. Basically you're kind of making the enemy team struggle to get back. And it doesn't matter if, if that player was able to bring the tower back on him. And that was definitely the right play there. What I would probably done here is get on the um, the perch here on the right side and basically flank the enemy team. But uh, hey, I mean it's working, so no complaints there. And you get another bubbler out. That's epic. Nice, good job. Play. Let's do the next one. So the next one was a victory with uh. Let me uh, actually drop into the voice chat and ask. It's if victory is right here. Hello. Oh hi. Um, is a uh, victory anywhere near around some of you guys? He got off hmm? a while ago. Oh okay, cause I, I was gonna do his vod right now, but uh okay, well thanks. R Okay, so victory vod. Let's go. I was gonna see it in the in the YouTube upload, anyways. So, let's play. Uh, I guess mainly tips for this weapon. I assume they're just starting out with the with the range blaster because usually they 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 do main this duelist ultra is pretty hard. 
Um, so, what do we got on this team? What what team is he playing with? I think randoms. Or, no, actually. Oh, wait. Victory. Yeah, I think it's, he's playing with randoms. Uh, so, let's see. Range Blaster. Uh, probably getting too close with the Range Blaster here. What you want to do, uh, usually since it has more range, is basically just chill where you have a lot of paints. And... Basically, stay at a distance where the your the edge of your shot is gonna hit where the the enemy paint is slash the enemies are. Uh, so let me take a look. Where are you? You're right here. Okay. So here currently you're still scoring, so that's good. No complaints. Save super jumps. That's been nice. Yeah. The the. Um, the blaster is good at picking off players, but it's not necessarily gonna gonna pick off players by getting too close range. Yeah, like right here, I would probably like. I mean, let, let's look at the let's look at the fight though. Wait, where, where are you? Where are you? You're here. Okay, sorry. Oh, I missed the fight. What I would probably do as a range blaster is just stick around corners, right? So like below that center platform, and fire on the top of those things, right? You don't really need. You, you really want to stay as secure as you can so like just fire towards the ledges it's okay if you fire towards them and you don't quite hit them right as long as you indicate to the enemies that th that you're a threat right you're just like you're just being there firing shots towards the ledge even if you're not hitting them at least they're not gonna get close to the ledge and as you fire more and more you just can start creeping up walking up and and hitting farther and farther so that's the plan just walking slowly um, and also sometimes you can also like be sneaky and do be sneaky and be, try to get behind ledges and stuff and hit people like sneakily. Uh, that also works. Uh, so they're they're either creeping up or just being sneaky. But like definitely the things that I'm seeing like you're super jumping in, in kind of unsafe spots. Uh, it's not working out as much for this weapon because it's slow. It's not good at close range, unlike the, the Squelchers, right? Like, the, the Squelchers are very good because you can dodge roll as soon as you land. Uh, and you can also, well, deal with people close range pretty, pretty good. The thing with Blasters, however, is that um, it has a radius of explosion, right? You want to hit around this radius of explosion. And if that radius of explosion is long range, that means you cannot fight at close range very good. Like the, the whole point is to hit people with the with the blast, and so that's why you you'll find it very awkward to fight with a blaster close range, especially like the rapid blasters, uh, rapid blaster pro. They are absolutely terrible to fight at close range. Um, so definitely mind your range. It's like with other weapons with, with traditional shooters, right, or duelies. You can get at any range as long as it's within your maximum range, right? That works. With the blasters, you really want to be at that sweet spot range. It's all about like sweet spot, sweet spots basically. Um, if the enemies get too close to you, you have to back off, right? You cannot like let them get close to you, and you're still gonna be hit as fine. If they get close to you, they're gonna have an easier time, and you're gonna have a harder time. Um, same thing. If you guys are too far from one another, nobody's gonna hit each other. But like. As a blaster, you don't want anyone to get too close to you. You're better off being at that sweet spot distance. It, just tiptoe with them, right? They go forward, you go backwards. They go backwards, you go forwards. Uh, basically, play the dance with them. But I, I, I do see from the score count that you got a lot of kills, so you definitely did uh, did pretty good. Um, but I guess f f by like you were kind of like the range blaster. Uh, which is which should be the weapon that stays the most safe um, Whereas the others are more close range and and you still got lots of kills though. I mean you got killed a lot is what I mean um, So I would suggest just mining your range better uh, And also that was game game 10 that was game 10 um, So next one next one so let's take a look at this board just this board We've got. So this was from a victory. The large iron ball was mentioning that your teammates were holding you down. 
I, mean, I, I wasn't necessarily looking at this, I was mainly giving tips and you know, okay. Uh, drop them in, let's pop them in. Well, you probably read those tips. Uh, I'm not gonna necessarily go over them. Again. Um, so this code. Can I get an outside view on this replay, please? It's an e-leader on Rainmaker Mac OS. Okay, I do, I do play, I, I have played a bit of uh, e-leader in the past. So I am able to give e-leader tips, I, I think. This one is... Okay, it's the it's the ends up that had lots of um, a very good game apparently, but okay, I'm still gonna check it. But if if you look on the on their splash tag, it, it says incredible ends up user, and they have the ends up badge. So I, I I don't know like you made this weapon and you're doing a very good game with it. You have all the cool customization for it, and you're like oh, uh, please give me improvements. Okay. We're gonna try anyways. Um, this one is I would love if someone reviewed this replay for me. Uh, no, no indication of what, but sure, why not? This one, which one is it? I'm playing passive. Okay, this one was very interesting because they were giving specific tips um, on on I mean specific questions basically. They were like, oh, maybe I'm playing too passive with the splatter shot. So this is. A uh, very good example of what we're, we're looking for. What is a very good accompanying message slash information to get with the replay code. Um, and then a bit of answerings, which I, I am gonna. I, I have made a summary, I think, so I'm gonna read that. Um, so I think we got enough replays, so let's. L let me hide the window real quick. Boom. Let's get those codes. Replays. Download, mm hmm da -da -da -da. Uh battle replays downloaded. Okay, so we've got uh E Leader on Rainmaker Macamart, uh and they're looking for an outside view from Dewey Gatham. So let's take a look at this. Mm -hmm. Ooh, hey, it's a sniper explosher, uh, machine, the tetras, and they have way more close range, so, okay. Do they have any sort of ninja squid? Uh, they do on the spire shot. Mr. Alejandro. Alejandro. So, uh, I don't know. currently seeing you struggle. To get to a position like you okay this is a very rude movement like whenever you're you're playing e leader what you want to do is like roll out at the beginning of the game get to that square maybe maybe there right but usually that square or maybe this one and just fire from there because you have like so much range you can hit all the way over there secure the the rainmaker you don't really want to push like this is an awkward position you're getting in you, you want to have the um, the height advantage to have the line of sights. You usually don't want to be down from people, uh, especially when you've got a roller on the enemy team. And you don't really want to have spend too much time moving, right? It's like this is an, a very awkward spot to to be in. You, like if you're ever gonna be somewhere, instead of like standing down there, just get on top of that block or. Like, like you, you should be able to see on the map the the path that a sniper should take. It's like, you go uh, towards this part, right? You fall down, you go here, and you get on that block. That block is sniper sniper paradise, right? If, if someone comes up on you, you can just like fall back, and from down there, they're not going to be able to hit you. So that's good. That's what a sniper wants to do. Uh, same thing with this block. Uh, if you ever have trouble, you can always jump back. So ba basically... If the enemy team is getting too close or, or too far, right, you, you have safe positions to move from. So, like, you stand on this block, if you push them successfully enough, you might jump from this block. If they start getting back to you, you jump back. Uh, if everything is good, then you can move up to there, right? Uh, if everything is even better, you can move on that block and jump directly to this one and start securing that whole area right here. Um, 
basically th those are you can see like on the map here those little blocks that have height those are the places you want to move in between and stand at you really never want to be in that dead zone because uh, your your teammates are not going to be there you have very bad line of sights if anyone on comes up on you you're going to be dead same here no reason to stand there as a sniper you have like so much less mileage out of your laser you don't see a lot of people from there if there's someone here you're not going to see them they're behind the wall uh, if they're up there as long as they're not like close to the edge of the ledge as long as they're chilling back um, towards the the back side you're not going to have line of sight on them um, whereas if you're here for example you have line of sight on someone here on some on anyone there right if they're coming up close you stand on that block you have line of sight on, on anyone either like in this area trying to flank you here or that will come up on this block right um very good anyways let me look at some of your gameplay a little bit more uh yeah as you can see like the enemy player just jumps back because that's something you can do and that is something you, sh you, you should do preemptively right yourself so I definitely see you taking more... I, I, I guess I guess after I gave those tips, let me just go back in the match and actually look at the positions you take, because I'm just assuming you're, you're new to the sniper. And so that's why you... But may, maybe you're not, I don't know. I, I just assume. Yeah, from the positions you're taking, it's kind of awkward. This is not a place you want to be in. Like, I, I, if, if you look at... I mean, I, I, I don't know, I don't look at too much E-Leader gameplay, but my, the personal way I play the E-Leader, I don't really move that much. Even if my team is pushing forward, right, and and they're like up ahead, I'm not I'm not feeling that pressured to move forward with them. Like, you do have to move forward at some point, right, but again, just take the, the heights. Um... And, and it, it's fine if you just stand back for a second, even if you're kind of late to the party. Because then if the push ever fails to succeed and uh, the team, the enemy team is coming back, then you're, you're still going to be in that same safe position. Um, so it's, it's fine if you're playing a little slower and not moving, like, at all. I mean, li like, right? I, like, currently, looking at the game state, you guys have uh, the advantage, the, um, the score advantage. So honestly, even if you don't move up with your teammates and you do not mm, help them make their push successful, um, I guess as long as you're taking, as long as you're keeping that very safe spot where you're just gonna have sight lines on all the enemy team and not die, then you're basically gonna stop any of their pushes. And even if you don't score more than you already have, you're gonna prevent them from basically taking the score again. Uh, okay, good positioning. So what are you asking for exactly? So this is an interesting position you're taking right now. It's interesting to me that the enemy team is not noticing your laser. I mean, now they have. Was the jumping necessary? Did someone creep up on you? I don't. I don't think so. Good job. So you're definitely chilling back, uh, for me. No complaints. Good super jump. Numbers advantage, that's pretty good. Yeah, your positions right now are pretty good. Um, it was kind of awkward though at, in the beginning. But right now it, it's better. I mean, yeah, at least sometimes you do have to jump down, like, like, there. But now you're kind of in an awkward spot. Like, you did have to avoid that bomb. 
Um, but yeah, it takes some time until you're able to take a better position again. Is there no way to use those boxes? No. So it's definitely a good position you're taking right now, like with the sniper taking a, a very weird angle for the enemies and basically uh, you're gonna be able to annoy them from a good enough distance at a, a, a good angle. Nice, good. Well, um, okay. I guess mainly my main tip would be... Just whenever you roll out, probably take the sniper perch uh, earlier and more consistently. I, I figure. I don't know. I don't know what your rank is. I don't know how. I I just gave general uh, sniper tips because uh, I don't know. Uh, slash marker. Let me put a marker real quick. Um, game. 11 okay so this one's game 11 now quit the replay let's look at the other games that we have what are the next ones we've got the ends up game the famous very good ends up game from the person who loves ends up and plays ends up very good but they want to have tips um, uh, well, yeah, I'm gonna have no good tips to give because uh, I'm not a pro ends up player so if they're if they're already good I don't know what what they want more than this mm, so the enemy team has the range blaster they also have the launching machine which is good on this map uh, the English is also gonna be pretty annoying um, and you guys have the sniper, which is good for range, and the class blaster, which is good for hitting around corners. It's a pretty good, pretty good answer to their team's comp. Um, no, that this is very good gameplay. You got the wipeout. You're throwing bombs on key locations. And if you throw them on the, on the ledge, very good, very epic. Okay, OBS is kind of quit on me right now, but yeah, I was saying like you're using squid surges. That's something I never use or never see anyone using. Um, so like I don't know, dude, you're. I'm probably way lower rank than you. I mean, sure enough, if you're sending it in the the VOD review channel. Um, yeah, I'm not the only one that's looking in there, so probably someone can give you tips at some point. And suction bombs uh, on the tower, very good. Very, very good. Movie. Oh, I like those pures. My <laughs> thought, pretty good. Now's your time to get ahead of the tower and, and make a fish, which is exactly what you're doing because you're a good player. <laughs> what should I say? Bring the suction bomb before you move in, that's perfect. I have nothing to add. But maybe we can learn, I guess. But no, I mean, I'm not learning anything, really, because you're... I mean, maybe you use more squid surges, squid surges that are, are good. Yeah, right, squid surges. Very good. Especially when you're playing on, on tower control and the tower is uh, it's up on the ledge. The switch surge is, is going to allow you to have a uh, hitting angle. Like You're not going to have to get on the tower, but you're still going to be at the same height as the tower and get some good shots in. Um, okay, so this is 
Pretty good tip. Let's, I, I guess let's do something that you cannot do during the match and let's look at the overhead view. The map is looking pretty alright, like the paint is pretty much even on, on both sides. I mean, you're, you guys are doing it right now, so you do have more pain in your base, that's good. Your numbers advantage in your base, that's pretty epic too. Okay, well, that that's will win you the game right there. Uh, let me go back to... you are the... I forgot, you're the end map. Right? No, man, you're, you're just rocking, I don't have any tips. This is, uh... I don't even know if anyone can give you tips, uh, currently, unless maybe pro... Pro player. Just ask Gem, right? You read the level probably. <laughs> Just need to ask Gem to give you tips. Or maybe maybe I'm just too bad to realize that um, there is a lot of mistakes that you could fix. I mean, okay, the fact that you're dying at all means that there is probably some improvement to make, right? Uh, I guess, and I guess a pro player would have a lot of things to say about the different engagements you lost. Uh, currently I'm at the level where like this is under my threshold of what is unacceptable, right? So yeah, the, the amount of deaths you're having are very acceptable and they're usually whenever you're trying to contest the tower and, and like stop their push, which is very a, a very sensible place to die and also we got a follow from Team Wonder Dave joins the timing. Hello! We're doing some VAD review. Uh, also, I, I stopped uh, keeping track of the game we're on because uh, it's hard. Whatever. I'll, I'll be looking back on whenever I, I edit it for YouTube. Um, it's gonna be fine. So, plus, like, we're doing it way more. Like. Everything is much more structured. We're not like giving tips in between the matches. I mean, also because I, I'm alone currently. But even with the, the the person that was there before in the voice chat and we were giving tips, we're like much more structured. We weren't like giving tips about like games that happened way long ago. So it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, so it's gonna be easier to edit. No need to track. Okay, so that was the um, the ends up game with 20 seconds. Like, don't worry. Come on, just ask Jem. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. I'm probably just bad at the game. Nautilus. Uh, from... Uh, oops. From, oh, come on, stick. Okay, so that, this is from Luna. What is Luna asking? No info given. Check on this first. No info given again. I guess, yeah. Um, well, we're okay. Um, let's look at the chat, no message for now. So, um, they, were, they basically the only thing they said is uh, can anyone take a look at this replay? What I'm seeing currently is that you're absolutely treading everyone. Squid rolls a lot, so it tells me that you're probably a very skilled player. Going, like doing some very, very fast flicks to throw the point sensor. You probably don't need any tips. Um, okay, wait, hold on. Is this tower control? Because the tower is not moving. You guys are. Out for blood, like you're, you're not letting them rest, but you're also not making the tower move a lot. Um, oh, tower play now. Okay, five centimeters. Sure. I mean, I, I guess this is a fair. This is a, this is a, an alright plan as long as you're killing them enough that they're not gonna get any points. Those four points you got are enough to win the game. 
Um, also, I assume like from the game plan saying you guys are very very high rank, in, in, from what I assume, right? Um, so I figure if you do try to make a push and it fails, you are gonna basically suffer for it, and and the enemy team is gonna have so much mileage out of that that few kills they got that you're not gonna be able to stop them uh, in time, and they're just gonna like knock you out. So I guess this is a strat. Right? Because this is currently what's happening for them. They, they got killed a few times, uh, and then bam, it just spirals, spirals down, and they're unable to do anything and move. They're, they're just struggling too much. Um, so I, I figure, yes. Hmm. <laughs> it's interesting. It's interesting seeing such, uh, like, supposedly high-level gameplay. Because like you're playing tower control and figures, because uh, nobody's getting on the tower. It's like tower control, but actually it's just like uh, we're out for blood for the enemy team and just we ignore the tower the whole game. So it's a very interesting perspective. Fun fact: you don't need to play the objective. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're definitely not getting past you guys. I'm like, if they ever want to get uh, through to you, they'll need to basically get some kills before they can start moving on. Because like here, the only way to roll out is like, it's very linear. Um, you, do, you do have some more height, so you want to use this height to, to get some kills. Um, and, and then you, you only be able to start moving forward. I guess you do have this little flank route in here, like you can drop down from from that little edge and, and go flank the enemy team. It's gonna be pretty visible though, because if you have some ink splotches uh, in here, the enemy team is gonna know that, that you are trying to flank them, and also you're not gonna have a lot of places to go, because the whole map is covered in their ink. Um, so it's definitely hard. I, when you're at this point, I would just like try to creep back some ink over there, maybe on the on the right side, because that's the best the best place to try and initiate a flank. Because like, especially in this game mode, um, like like if you see this map, um, uh, in this game mode, like the okay that you, you have a disconnect. This is sad. But like, yeah, you, you see that the map is kind of shaped like a circle, you can get down from here, right? And if the enemies want to get through to you, they can only get through the right side. So you guys can, can escape from the right side, and they also... I mean, from the... Basically, the, enemy, the enemies are going to try to push on the only side that they can, which is on the right. And whenever you try to get out, you're going to get out from the your right side, which is, which is the left. Um... So do do take this, keep this in mind, basically. Um, but I guess, I guess okay. That was a game that exists. You, 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 these two games are way above my current level. Like I'm the one learning stuff. I'm not teaching anything current. Uh, this is. Um, from the spider shot that was asking, am I playing too defensively? Am I not um, attacking enough? Or were they asking precisely in the check? Is, is it playing? Am I playing too passive? Also, want some general feedback on, on how to play? Um, they're they say that they're playing slow because they don't find that they have a strong advantage yet. So they're not doing any crazy pushes as long as they're not. Having a strong advantage. Um, and then I think they have got some answers and feedback saying that it's not necessarily that they don't have the advantage, but that um, they they do not realize that they do. They, they're not understanding the game state correctly. Um, and apparently they get fo too focused on their bombs and 
they get surprised by some kills, which they shouldn't have. Okay, good way to stop the maker user. Okay, what I would do here is probably get some height. Like get get on the get on the top platform here. You, you do not want to focus on the rainmaker right now. You want to focus on killing the people who are behind the rainmaker. There's no reason to fire the rainmaker that is being shot by the enemies if the enemies are already dead, right? So that that is the technique. If both of you are firing at the enemy team, just like stop firing for a sec. Try to sneak around the, the rainmaker. I know it's kind of risky, but if you manage to kill the enemies that are behind, the rainmaker is is free for you to explode afterwards. Um, good bombs, good bombs. Um, okay, good way to push. That was a pretty good push there. Ooh, okay, they're getting be they're sneaky behind. Um, that's me just not paying attention to the game state. Not a very nice use of specials. You are also pretty, pretty mechanically skilled, I would say. Enough that I, that I would assume that you're high level. Um, I mean, like just by the amount of kills you got with the Kaiser guy. Uh, honestly, like getting even one kill is good, and you're getting at least one kill every time you use the special. I, I don't know, you're playing pretty, pretty aggressive. I mean, aggressive enough, enough I assume. Let's get the special to pop the bubble. You're, nah, that's not playing defensive. Right, I don't think so, at least. I mean, you're playing as aggressive as you could. In my opinion, without dying, right? It's like... The, you, you can play aggressive up to a point because if you get too far into the enemy's base, that's just feeding. That's just like getting in danger for nothing. Uh, and here, like, like even then, there, like you get you get your feet like straight into enemy. So this is pretty risky, but you're doing it to get your special out. So you do take risks, and you do do it for uh, for good reason, right? So I wouldn't say that you're playing too defensive. You're playing just the right amount of. of Attacking in in a manner that is not too dangerous for you. Mm -hmm. okay, good job on not super jumping back. Because um, yeah, some some people are definitely sneaking in your base. Oh, you, you got. High, very high number of advantage right now. Yeah, and your team is just super jumping in. That's very practical. Okay, good, good. But here you're the last player alive, so I would probably back off and provide super jumps. Okay, yeah, the enemy team is definitely flanking you in awkward positions right now. Now, honestly, I don't know what, what this talk about, like, wrong game sense was. Maybe maybe the, the player that gave the feedback was even higher level than I am, or that you are, or something, and they saw something that I didn't see, but... You're definitely... Like, if you, if you just look at the map, like, this is not, like, good paint. This is absolutely... And, and you are fighting the most that you can. You're not letting the enemy team breathe too much. Uh, they, they, the enemy team wants to push as much as they can, and yet you're still holding them back enough. And you're you're not even having enough time to paint back your base. So it's You're definitely not in an advantageous state, like, just from seeing the paint on the map. This is absolutely not an advantageous state. So you are right that you were struggling, in my opinion. Uh... And I don't know. I mean, you did say that maybe you thought that you were playing too defensive. I mean, yes, you were. But as you mentioned, it is because you weren't in an advantageous state yet. 
which was also true and then the other person said that you have you need maybe to have better game sense i guess if you always play on the defensive and you don't make any plays you're never gonna push successfully um so but you did take the rainmaker at some point so you definitely did stuff I don't know. It just, it just happens sometimes. You're just stuck on defense. And I'm not at that level where I can confidently say why it happens or how to remedy that. Um, but the plays you were making were very good, in my opinion. Um, so, here's what I'm gonna do. I am probably gonna take a break right now. And continue the rest uh, later at, at another point in time. Maybe I don't know if it's gonna be today, because uh, it does be getting pretty late, and I do be getting pretty tired. But that was pretty pretty nice for the, for the first uh, part of episode three. Uh, pretty 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 good pacing. Anyways, um, thanks for tuning by, and see you later or next time whenever I do the second part. Bye, uh. Okay. I believe we are live and everything is uh, running smoothly. So. So, slash marker. Okay, whoop, then we do, what do we need to do? Oh, yes. I'll just take a look at the codes and fire up the app. That way I can enter the codes real quick. We do Splatoon 3. Okay. App is open. Hey, that is nice. Take this here. That thing here. Mew likes cafe says VOD 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 reviews VOD I mean not review, whatever I can't read he said VOD you shouted it whatever Why am I putting so much effort into reading the chat whatever Anyways um I need my notes which are right here okay That is cool So we got the app we got the notes and we got the Discord So we have these two games right here from Sammy Hami, which are uh, splatter scope games and he is saying that he's inconsistent with it and wait what what is it oh no 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 yeah basically like sometimes he's doing good and sometimes he's not and he wonders why that is like is it aim is it decision making or anything else he's also in s plus which is higher than my current level so um we're gonna see how good my advice can be or relevant right but we're gonna try uh if you're reading this you put a lot of effort into reading <laughs> okay so this is all we got the replays uh so now we can hide Add a Discord window. Go back to the game. Oh, by the way, I've been trying to, I've been trying out this platana, as you can uh, see from the game, where I just, I just hit you so hard, you, you got disconnected into oblivion. <laughs> so replays. Download the replays. Let's go. Battle replay downloaded. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we've got these two games. I assume the order is. Uh... It doesn't even. Sh oh no! Wait. Here, does it show the code? Nope. Okay. Uh, so this is probably the first game, but we don't care anyways because uh, they're the same. So tower control, splatter scope, from Sammy. Let's see. So 
disclaimer, I the ma the main sniper I play is the E leader, also the bamboo sometimes, and I do not play with scopes, so I have zero clue how to play them. Like whenever I try, which is like extremely rare, I get absolutely uh, bamboozled. Uh, so let's look at the team comp because maybe we can uh, figure out some stuff on why it would be hard to stay consistent. <laughs> uh, what abilities are the shooter and the angrush running? That is something that would be interesting to know. So the angrush is running. Okay, nobody's running in this grid. Though, hold on. Uh, the sniper is running me swim speed, and that is not relevant. Um, but yeah, I feel like as a splatter scope, um, I mean as a sniper just in general, you're gonna struggle uh, naturally to hit people who aren't gonna be in your direct line of sight, or who are gonna be longer range than you. Well, you're already hitting a lot of shots, so I don't know what the consistency issue is. Or maybe it's in the second game that you're doing bad, and that's where the consistency issue comes from. Um, but since we're fighting Darn, those shots are extremely good. Uh, uh, so yeah, I was saying, uh, since you're fighting against an E-leader, which has more range than you, you're gonna often struggle to hit them, because they're gonna take positions farther than you can hit. And then you've got the machine, which can take uh, angles behind cover. And the angbrush is mostly gonna wanna shark, I assume, because it has a very short range. Um, so that's mainly down to team composition, I think. Sniper 1v1. <laughs> nice. Mia says hello to me, right? Oh, my freaking camera! I hate this. I that's what we're at. It happens so frequently recently. I don't know why. Okay, got this is so bad. Probably should get a new camera at some point. <laughs> well, sorry, I have no tips for the slider scope. I don't know how to play it. I guess let's see the second game though. Um, maybe there's still some tips I can get. Because, I mean, in this game, in the beginning, he was hitting a lot of very cool shots. Uh, and he won the win the the game at the end, and he got the most kills. So I don't think uh, here this one. Okay, this one is where it's what the inconsistent problem comes from. Um, oops. Get on tower. <laughs> Looked like they were doing fine, yep. I mean, that's the problem. Like, since I'm not very high level, um, some of those clips that are sent in the channel are above my level, so I'm like, dude, you're playing fine. Because, like, I, I don't really see what to improve, right? It, like, players that would be at his level would probably be like, oh, there's a lot of things to improve, because they're feeling the same struggles, right? They're like, oh, I'm a sniper, right? I feel like I improve on, on those little things. But to me, that looks pretty fine. Cause that's the thing, um, in, in the channel, like, s usually you see a majority of, of, like, lower level clips, or at least some that I can confidently say, I, I mean, give tips on, right, say this is what you should improve, um, but, like, recently I've seen a few clips which are higher than what I would be able to give tips on. But that, that's fine, because like, you can learn stuff, I guess. 
don't necessarily have to give, to give tips, you can just like observe and be like, hmm, okay, I could, I could improve on this. I mean, except if it's the, the splatter stuff, because I'm never going to use that. <laughs> um, so what's happening here on the map? So you, there was a mention that they're inconsistent. Okay, they're playing on Wahoo World, which definitely is not an easy map to play for the um, for the um, splatter scope or snipers in general, because you don't have a lot of um, easy easy access sightlines. Like the sightlines you have aren't really useful because the the margin, like the gap in between the, the place you're gonna stand and the place where the enemies are gonna stand, is not that large. Um, and I don't feel like there's... Who's that? Is that? It's Tree. Hello, Tree. We're doing some battle reviews. What? Oh, am I, am I not muted? Oh. Yep. So yeah, yeah I, feel, I feel like definitely the, um, the splatter scope might... I mean, it's it. I think it's mostly because of Wahoo World. It depends on the map. Some maps are better for, for someone. Like... There, for example, like people point to Mahi Mahi uh, because it's a small map and it has like very little cover as being a good map for backline weapons, especially snipers. And usually they hate on snipers for being so good on this map. But that's the thing, like there are also probably maps which are less good for a certain type of weapon. And I definitely feel like uh, Wahoo World is a, is a map where like you have the whole uh, section underneath the middle of the map where you can like rotate around. Uh, and that's not a good place where snipers can prevent people from getting back on them and same thing like the, the spots where you're gonna stand do not give you enough mileage uh, 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 again. who are you talking to because i don't see there's no bot chat in the uh in their feedback on replay so i mean the the, the link yeah I, I'm, I'm i'm just talking to twitch slash in the microphone and that way i'll make it into the video slash to you since you're here and maybe mio because he's in the chat i have to go to twitch okay i have to, I have to download the app again i've been like deleting it downloading it deleting download it yeah um wait do you hear my background what what, what did you say do you hear my background like it's doo -doo 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 -doo. you were hearing the noise no do you hear my background oh no 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 okay Okay, good. Um, it's very good music, but I don't, it's annoying. And Twitch, uh... Camera, please pick and stop bugging. But yeah, I, I was saying that Wahoo World is not that great of a map for snipers, I feel like. It definitely has, like, l l uh, smaller range sightlines, lots of cramped spaces where you can, like, flank uh, people from behind. <laughs> So it's better for short range shooter, I I think I believe. Um, but this, feel free to correct me because I've got no clue. I'm not experienced enough, right? I'm pretty sure like a pro sniper player would show you like spots you've never considered. And but okay, let me let me just go back real quick in the in the replay because maybe I have maybe I can give some more tips on placement, I guess. Um, because. Why can I not click search? Give me a minute. Mm -hmm. So you're playing. Let me let me just take it. Take, use the pause button because um, since the matches are since since ah, ah, my gosh, it's so hard to speak. Since the match is going by real quick, was, that way we can analyze the weapon composition. Let me just catch up to chat. Looked like they were doing fine. I think the one was that the enemy captured most of the sniper spots. Mm hmm. A lot of your teammates were also dead, which means it's hard to kill people alone. Mm hmm. Because you don't have long range, meaning that you need teammates to help distract the enemy. Was it the other match? Uh, your teammates were attacking the enemy and distracting. Mm -hmm. So it's easy for you to shoot people. Yeah, right. Like you're not going to be able to fight people on your own. You definitely need your teammates to act as distraction because. If you're playing a 1v1 against uh, a short range shooter, they can move up quickly to you, they can paint their feet, they can they can they probably have a sub weapon that's pretty useful. Whereas generally you have few tools, like if you do not hit the one shot, you have few tools to defend yourself against. And I can definitely see that happening at some point in the game, probably somewhere here, where you had to back off. Um, let me just check. 
Or was it? It's with this one. Yeah, so it's, it's later on in the game, but basically you get backed up um, into your base by someone. So yeah, definitely this spot that you're taking right now is not a very advantageous one, right? I, I believe, like, if you were to to stand on this spot, on this block, you would have basically the same um, vantage point on the tower, but you would have also height, which means that you can hit people on the tower, and you wouldn't have to backtrack if that uh, brush player would come on you, right? You would have more options to run away, so like you could just jump down or take the ink rail up there. Um, so I think it's it's maybe positioning, but that might be due to the map being harder for snipers, I would say. Like the, the positions you can take to be more effective are, are less obvious, because um, here like they have a lot of, of ink. And what I believe you're gonna do is just drop down when you should have probably set up shop right here. Um, but I mean, they were throwing a lot of bombs, so I don't know what you could have done, really. Um, but probably it's probably about positioning and really, if you can get on on recon mode and just explore the map um, at your leisure and just find spots that. Like, like, see with your laser, right? You see um, uh, some spots where you can stand. You fire your shot and you see like how far it kind of goes. And then you kind of get a feel for which positions uh, you can take and what you can hit from that position. Hello, hee hee how? What is up? Is Tree here? Absolutely. They're in the voice chat, I think. They're still there. For real? They said that? Mm hmm. That's crazy. I knew I was doing this for one day. I've never seen this in school. So I'm walking. So, what is Neo saying? Um, because you don't have one right now, you need teammates to help destroy the enemy with the other map. Okay. Neo says the map also didn't have a lot of hiding spots on the last match and was pretty short map. You were quick on killing the enemy and the enemy couldn't react to you. Yep. So that's why I think you lost on Wahoo World. Mm -hmm. uh, de definitely lab the map on recon mode. That would probably be a lot very helpful. I feel like I know that username. The hee hee hall too. I feel like I know it somewhere. I feel like I know it. Okay, camera's <laughs> back for now. Please do not go away. That was me just deactivating it real quick. Um, but next replays that we're gonna take a look at. <gasps> Today it's a slower pace. We're taking a look at um, replays one by one. I'm making the code. So wait, hold on. Did they have? I think. So yeah, the the. Gabby Magpie answered, and basically the gist of what I got, uh, which I wrote on my notes, is that the Dapples ally fed into the enemy team a lot, so that was, ba basically they were fighting, um, wait, 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 hold on, which, which free player are they, are, are they talking about? Now they're not talking about either of these games, what, what are they talking about? From Austin, no, that's Austin, uh, where is Austin? Oh, that was the, that was the Splattershot Pro game. Okay, so this is a uh, different answer to a different set. What, well, whatever. Um, so, 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 we have the next one, which is this one. So, I will probably take a look at them, even though they're saying... But even though they're saying that they're doing really good, I think we might learn some things from that, and uh, it's definitely good to have a, a perspective from a person like a, a higher level player than us. Uh, Mio says, Wait, never mind. Wahoo World also has not a lot of hiding spots, I think, because the map was really big and you don't have a lot of range, meaning you can't kill a lot of people unless they try to kill you. Is explode. Explosher, good for splat zones. Explosher is pretty good because it paints a, a large area at once, and uh, it, it's not gonna kill necessarily very fast. 
but if you if you're aware of where the enemies are at um you can basically control where they go you can like cut their path short it's not it's not you're not you're basically gonna give them a suggestion to stay away, right? It's it's not like if you come, you're gonna you're gonna die instantly. If like if you come, I'm gonna annoy you and 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 make you struggle to move. And if you struggle to move, I'm gonna kill you at some point, right? So they're gonna try to play more careful, and that allows your team to to play better. Um, yeah. The the good thing about it is that um, it does paint more. So like it kills less, but it paints more than a weapon. Like a, I wouldn't say that it paints more than a charger, uh, but it's just like it paints. You know, you can paint above cover and stuff. You can say more, more safe while painting, or maybe not. I don't know. Um, next clip though, we have these two games from the heavy spot lane. So let's check, check them. I am now entering them. We have the second one. So they're saying that they're playing heavy spotting on Rainmaker. Uh, it seems to be doing pretty well so far, but anything in particular I should be working on. Um, -do 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 -do. Um, uh, now that I have them, I can just hide this bird, go back, go back in, view replays, and download. Hiho says. Okay, thanks. Doesn't have Ink Storm, or is that Splatoon 2? Yeah, it, it got Ink Storm. And also the point sensor. So it's, it's pretty cool at hitting people behind cover. Uh, but I, again, it definitely def depends on the map, right? It's you, you can't really say that a certain weapon is good or bad just in general, because it depends on the mode, but also it depends on the map that you're playing the mode on. Because for example, the explosion can hit uh, above cover, which would definitely be more useful on the map with a lot of cover, right? So, you, for example, if you're playing, I, if I figure if you're playing Splat Zone on Scorch Gorge, I think on Scorch Gorge there's uh, not a lot of cover in the middle area, so that's less useful because uh, yeah. enemies can just creep up on you because there there's no cover in the way, and they can uh, spot they you if you're standing too close to the ledge. And, and also, it's got point sensor, which is great at seeing people, guess where, behind cover. So definitely, you, you, you'd prefer maps with cover. Um, so yeah. So these two games, Heavy Splatling, let's see how it goes. Anarchy Battle Series Rainmaker from Mr. Turbo. A second tree, you've got so many trees. It's a forest now. Yes, I am he. Oh, I just made it. I just made that account. Like... Whatever, it's a whole forest. Um... Yes, whole tree. Tree? <laughs> so they're doing. They're saying that they're doing pretty good. So let's just see how it goes and maybe we can learn some stuff. Uh, let me take a quick look at the lands at the map. Um, I guess it's playing pretty evenly. Uh, it's mainly about like who's uh, like in in the fight basically, like who dies, who comes back, and, and just watching the scoreboard. I mean, like the, um, the uh, light counter. Yeah, I don't know why it's called. It's in the scoreboard area. Mm. I'm definitely. Uh, personally, what I would suggest you could do is um, start painting those little like blue splotches, right? Because like for example, if you want to back off, it's going to be hard to get back there because you don't have a lot of uh, solid ground to to ink on. And same thing over here, like you were mainly focusing on shooting forward, 
when you were uh, like you had your feet on enemy ink and for example you could have shot in that direction I feel like personally because uh, there was like enemies weren't there already but th then again you're playing the um, Splatoon so maybe they weren't there but by the time they, they would have been there you wouldn't have had a charge um, but then again you had your teammates nearby so I think yeah okay now you're playing on the side I don't think that was the best place to put the special. I mean, you attempted to to put it up, because like, yeah, if you put it down, it's not gonna hit above the ledge. I don't really know the the game plan of a black man because I don't really play those weapons. Personally, I feel like it would be more focused on painting. Um, to me, it feels like a painting weapon. Ow! Why did you get close? Why did you? Why did both of you get close to that section bomb? Um, let me take a quick look at the map. Um, Pretty, it's pretty solid. What it would probably do, um, whenever you roll out, like paint that area, that way you can get special when coming back. If you don't super jump, that is, but I mean, you do super jump pretty consistently. And then it also gives you an approach option if you wanna basically uh, hit the enemies from a, another angle. Um, get back to the right here. Also, it might be because the one of the only splatlings, I, I mean the two splatlings I play are the the mini and the hydra. Like at one time, I think I, I used it a lot. Um, so I'm not very familiar with the range of the heavy, and if like where you should position yourself to hit people, basically. I feel like every like every single one of your teammates were in the same position, right? And and you were just following behind. So what I would probably do, especially because you've got the lead, is probably just take a position behind, like try to paint some of the remaining uh, places. That way you can uh, make sure that the. I mean that that's just my theory. But then again, you guys are winning, so I I don't know. But just like take a different approach angle, because then like two of your teammates were dead. Um, because they were in the same location, and you you fall behind them, so that wasn't very. Uh, I don't know. I think I am probably gonna skip the next one because I don't know how to play heavy splatlings. Uh, so I might not have any beneficial tips for you. Plus you're doing extremely good, like you're carrying your team, there's no reason for me to tell you anything. And it's not like you're you're playing in a way that's particularly uh, striking, it's, so I, I don't feel like I'm able to learn stuff either. Because I don't even know how, like, it's not going to change my perspective on how to play the weapon because I don't know how to play it in the in the first place, right? Um, so yes. So next one, next, next VOD uh, replays. So we've got Discord here, we've got from Sylvie, Splattershot on Splat Zones. Let's take a look at it. Oop, enter the code, download, boom. Let me take a look at my notes. Um, Splat Zone, Splat Shot, wipe out a back to back during the enemy overtime. Okay. Uh, so let me remove Discord. 
Go back in there, replays, download. So let's see what went wrong. Especially at the end, I assume. By holy. What do we have in the team comps? We have so the splatter shot, sniper, two fling guys, and the enemy team, some good range as well, and the machine. And it's not. Yeah. So there you kind of push forward. Uh, and you didn't have like a lot of escape options. I feel like you could have probably stood back there and just fired at the zone. And since like there's the zone in between you and the enemy, they wouldn't have pushed forward either. So it, it would have just been a pain in battle. Or what you could have done if you really wanted to kill them and, and get the advantage uh, while your teammates hold the zone. You could have like went around uh, more sneakily basically. Maybe try to get around uh, this part and hit them from behind. Because this, this was very predictable, right? And if they want to shoot at you, they can. Like you have, you hardly have any place to back off, whereas they have plenty of space to move. Uh, but anyways, let me go back to which is uh, this. Okay. Yeah, I would definitely play. Okay, it's working. It's working. Um. Slow, please. Uh, take a look at the map. Uh, okay, you can definitely see that the enemy has way more paint uh, just in general, which makes it way easier for them to approach from different angles, and you guys are all approaching from the same angle. Um, so maybe there should be one of you, ideally. Um, probably, probably you, actually, because you're the only uh, shooter weapon in your team. I mean, the only weapon that could like possibly flank them effectively. Whereas on their team, they have. I, mean, I guess they only have the sploosh and the machine. Uh, but it's still. It's basically, I think it's your job to be more sneaky. Do, do the distracting, do the killing. Because, like, the sniper is definitely going to be a, a more of a backline weapon. And then you've got the. Uh, the two flings as which are gonna stay around the zone, place the ink mines and spam tent missiles. So they're not gonna engage as much. Um did it do Bo is here. Um do you know that new charge thing, the one that's a pencil and has multiple shots? Not the pencil, it's a it's a freaking uh, compass. I mean it is a pencil, but it's it's a compass. It's the type of compass that you Put your pencil in, that way you don't have to buy recharges, right? But it's a compass, it's not a pencil. Anyway, um, I want that, but I'm gonna try Stringer. Okay. I can't wait to make it. Yeah, it looks very cool. Honestly, I think from all the weapons that were shown, it's the one that interests me the most. Um... I mean, maybe the, maybe the new shooter might be more interesting, but it doesn't look like it's got a gimmick too much. And like, we don't know enough about it that I, I have anything to say. Um, but maybe it's cool. Maybe it's cool in, in hindsight. Oh, also the design is, is pretty is pretty rad. Um, what can we see from the game? I'm sorry for not paying attention. I definitely okay. If you if you look at the map, the enemy team has way more paint, um, way more approach. I think, in my opinion. Like right here, there's the there's the enemy flank that which is gonna try to flank you, and they're really they're really going deep into your base. I don't know what they were attempting there, because like if you get if you guys get back the zone. Oh, okay, they were trying to spam missiles. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, if that's a pretty risky play, because if you guys got the zone again, you would have won. Uh, but then, it makes it so much harder for you to get back in, right? Because you've got the flings out uh, in your base. 
So let me just check real quick on your point of view. How's it going? Yeah, you, you've got less places to back off. I, I definitely feel like he... Overtime. Oh, okay, overtime. That's what you were talking about. So let's see how it goes. Wiping out, right? So what we're looking at mainly is um, your guys' positions. And okay, so you all died there. Let me take a look. Uh, why are you all by there? Darn, this is slow. Oh, no, you can do that. Uh, da -da -da -da, the new roller is the opposite of the Flinza. That's what I've heard people say. Alright. Uh, so you died there? Okay. Then overtime? So let's see. You guys are all going in the same direction, except for the Flingza, which goes to the right. Uh, but you, okay, so here the problem I'm noticing is that you guys are all marked. So here you're trying to hide, but you're not really hidden, because you are mar marked, so that's why. Um, also, if you go back and see the enemy team is advancing on the on the ledge, so definitely that ledge is not a place where you're going to be able to approach, and you're probably going to die instantly if you try to get to that spot. So what I would do is, what the Flingza is doing up there, and... Um, trying to approach from there because like yeah you, you definitely see that all the pain they had put all, all through the, the game made it way harder for you guys to get back and prevent the overtime from happening uh, so that is why I think you died in overtime also gray square fuck fuck <laughs> whatever we don't need the camera Darn. This is going so much less smoothly than, um, than yesterday, but it's fine, it's fine. Not a pro yet. Can I, okay, can I, real quick, just, just real quick, maybe, I do this, or just maybe, maybe. And then I do, I do that thing, I do that. Let's do this. I put it in small. Now I'm in HD, right? HD is cool, maybe? Is it? And then maybe it doesn't bug? Because it does Because I'm putting it in 480p, that way it, it takes less uh, memory to run the camera. But maybe that's just messing up with, um, with it and it just wanna reset every time to 1080p. But, anyways, what are you doing? You said. You said the swear word, how dare you? Yes, the uh, swear. Next clip. Um, need a little advice on some of my plays during tower control on Anarchy Open. Hello, person, not person. What was that noise? And in there. Can I get in the other channel? Or, or not? You know, what's going on? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, How, am I showing this one? Or no? Nope, here you go. So, tower control. Uh, da -da -da. So, they're, they're using the Hydra Splatling. So, let's see. And, and the good thing about this replay, so shoutouts uh, for putting the exact time stamp where you think a mistake happened. Because that way, we can see that and, and give more tips on this specific moment. And that's cool. So, the replay has downloaded, so let's check it. Boom. Uh, play. So this is from Kiki. Star control on field tail with the hype. Uh, okay, lots of <laughs> juniors. That's gonna be interesting. Uh, probably very hard to play against. And I assume the Tetras are, are gonna be aggro and try to kill you. I don't know if they're necessarily gonna focus on you, 
Uh, but I mean, that's probably what they should do. Um, oh my gosh, two bubblers. Well, you guys still managed to push through. Um, so what? So you think you made a mistake by moving forward? Um, you thought since you were pushing the tower, you could, you could move forward. Okay, at 214. What is that? Oh, oh. Wait. What? 214. Wow. Wait, 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 wait. Wait. That marker is the one he placed there, so you can place markers? Mm-hmm. You can place markers and they're in in the version you upload. But then but then the question is how exactly does it work? Is it like do you need to place the marker before you upload the game or is it like synchronized across the thing? So like if I put a marker there, right? A highlight, I mean. Is it going to show up for someone else? That is the question. Or do I need to upload it again? Uh, I'm definitely curious, so if you if you may, if you may allow me to So let me take a look at this upload. Yeah, I do have the upload button. So I think I think I might have to upload it again if I wanna have this marker uh, be there. But it's pretty cool that you can do that. So that that's a new thing we we learned. Uh, so, anyways, let's get back to where we were. Where we were. What I could have probably done is place the marker to get back there. Here. Oop, oop, play. Uh, so yeah, definitely here. Uh, you're you're all alone, so I would probably back off and provide uh, re uh, like super jumps to my teammates. And probably what you should do also is cover right behind your back. So, so yeah, well it's covering now. Uh, you can here, okay. Probably back off. As a as a hydra, you've got way more range than the enemies. So just stand stand back. And also probably like. I, I would suggest that you fire in better locations in the tower. I know that's pretty like vague, but here you were shooting at the place where it, uh, uh, the player was was dead uh, when there was uh, another player on the other side of the tower. I don't know how visible that would be. Um, I mean, no. I guess I guess we're seeing the same thing. Like we don't see the names of the enemies. Like here, there's there's no reason to keep shooting at the tower, right? Uh, since you like people were already dead on it. Uh, you could have you could have used your remaining shot. Actually, let me, let me just get back. Do 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 do. Wait, what was it? What was it? Was uh, right here. It's cool that you can scrub through the. Is that two? Yeah. So here you charge up, you kill the two people. And now there's nobody on the tower, and those shots that you're firing right now, you could have used them to cover the, the little bits of map that are not yet covered, right? There, there's, there was no reason to keep shooting on the tower. Uh, you over here, okay. So this is my dumb marker. We're gonna, whoop, remove. There's no reason to shoot in the tower, in my opinion. You should probably back off there. The positions you're taking as a Hydra are really weird. And and what's even weirder is that the two enemies on the tower didn't hit you. Like actually, like honestly, honestly, this looks this honestly looks like a meme. Like it's it's like it's played out. Like how long? Where was it? I think it was early. Yeah. 
So you're placing so you're placing the Booyah Bomb all the way there. And then the, these two guys died, but not from me. Even though you were the high ground. I mean, you probably should have been the one to kill them. Let, let me let me just watch that again. <laughs> you just want to understand that interaction. Because the tower was indeed a bit lower than... Oops. I'm just sorry, I'm just playing with this describing feature. So you throw the thing there. This shot doesn't make like this shot doesn't make sense. <laughs> There's no way that makes sense. Let me okay, I just wanna get the perfect pick for the thumbnail. Cause it's just it's just too funny. Wait, hold on. I need to pose at the exact moment. Okay, I, I, I think that's good enough. Uh, anyway, let's move on. Like, as a Hydra, like, here, the spot you're taking is pretty good. Uh, honestly, if you just stayed there for, like, most of the game, you, you have enough range to hit the tower um, when it's in the middle. And you can hit the people with a better angle, right? Instead of them being, like, right next to you and being able to kill you. Which, for some reason, they didn't manage to do weirdly enough. Uh, but yeah. And so where was the point we said that you were going forward? I guess it's this one. Is it? At 214 you said that you were going forward. Oh, okay, now you're going forward. That's what you're doing. Those Bria bomb shots are pretty random, I would say. Like, I would have probably suggested that you put the Bria bomb in front of the tower, right? So that people cannot get on it. Uh, where are you? And what did you die? Let me let me just go back. I'm sorry. Uh, this is so right here. Uh, the Bria bomb forced the enemy to move. To the enemy to move. Yeah, you, you did go into the enemy base, uh, and you didn't have a lot of ink to go back. Yeah, what you should do as a Hydra is, like, it's not really your job to go into the enemy base, right? Because you have the L3, the Junior, and the 52 Gal in your team, which are absolutely good weapons to fight frontline. Especially because on the other team, you've got uh, four weapons that can fight at close range very effectively so you do not want to get there right what you want to do instead is as a hydra you get behind and you paint all the little ink splotches that you can that way you can provide good paint for your team to fight effectively right so the enemy team is going to have good fighting weapons like four of them but you're going to have three of them with extremely good paint at their feet to fight more effectively um, that is what i think and I think you should also probably, I mean, here you you want, but probably shoot at your feet, uh, like behind you, because like if if you see here on the map, like behind you, you had no escape route basically. Um, Bo is saying, uh, I know how to get custom fonts on this one, but where did you get that Splatoon font? Um, you can get it online. You can find it somewhere. Uh, it was a smart move. If they put the Booyah Bomb on the turret, it would just back off to their base. But if you put it behind them, then they're forced to move to your teammate. I mean, uh, true and also untrue. Because if you force them into your teammates, uh, then they might still win the, the, the engagement, right? And what's better is just to, to prevent them from going on the tower. I mean, I, I assume the Booyah Bomb is better used as a wall in between you and the players and the enemies. Well, yeah, the teammates can shoot them, but the enemies can also shoot your teammates, and that's the point I'm trying to make. It's like... 
I mean, if you're really confident about your teammates, sure. But I don't think that's something you should do. Like, assuming that you're going to win the fight. Like, if there are more people, I mean, I am pretty sure we can go over the replay and, and find the specific conditions of... of uh, if in that case it was just one enemy that you forced towards like multiple of your teammates, then maybe we can argue. Um, the, there's ink in your base, then they will struggle to shoot. If no. yeah. uh, next replay, though, let's move on. Um, da -da -da. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I, I don't think the issue was that you pushed for at 214. Like, honestly, you know, what you did at 214, whenever the tower was, was all the way uh, in the front and you tried to go back to it, right? I mean, if, if you look at the deaths, you only died like two times. One including the time where you pushed. Because like going forward it resulted in your death. So maybe, yeah, you shouldn't have gone that far forward. Or maybe the, like the way you approach was not the best. Yeah, I think... You I don't really know what you could have done better, but my main concern is not really there. It's mainly just your positions on the map and the way you use your Booyah Bomb it are very weird. Um, and I'm sorry that this is not precise enough, but just maybe try to use your max range, basically. You have the Hydra, which has lots of uh, range and a great damage per second um, don't stand at the range that other weapons can hit you back also they had a crap tank so it still works I've never I don't think I've seen any crap tank usage or no actually there were three I don't know I wasn't focused mm -hmm. next one though Need some advice and tips on what I could do better if I'm playing the Nautilus, or if I'm playing the Nautilus correctly. Trying to get past S rank. Well, again, this is higher level than I can judge. Uh, probably. Um, we are gonna see. So. Whoop. Whoop. Nope. Here. Whoop. Download. Nautilus. On High Goldfish Market, uh, Rainmaker. Okay. Team composition. Uh, you've got the Blob and the um, Tentabrilla. And then the 52 gal, which also can like set up shop and defend. So I assume your team is better at playing slower and defending a lot. Like creeping up on the enemies, whereas the enemies have the glue guns. Mm. They have two splash, which which, is pro which probably means they're gonna try to come in closer to you guys. So definitely m mind your range, I think. And here I would not focus on the rainmaker at all. I would just like back off because you are the only one uh, uh, left alive on your team. Probably because I, I played a lot of uh, salmon runs uh, today, in, like when waking up. So maybe my brain is still thinking in in terms of salmon run, right? Then this game, it's going pretty good. If you, if you look at the paint, it's pretty alright. And you have a thin line between them and uh, Where are you? You're right there. All right. Um, 
Okay. I mean, the way you're playing is very solid and effective. And also you're seeing enemies that I do not see uh, myself with my eyes. So I don't know how you're doing. Are they running any ninja spirit? Yes. Okay. Here, I see that you guys are struggling to like successfully end the game. Um, but I think it's working now. I guess you just had to try enough. Okay, so this is done. Sorry, I didn't have any uh, good tips. Next one. Okay. Next one is okay. Nautilus. Okay. One of the best matches I've played. Oh wow. Well. I I think it, we're we're not doing too good with replays that uh, are higher level. So if this is the best match they've played and they're not really mentioning any rank or any short or any weapon. I think I'm probably gonna skip that. Um, Slad Julie's main trying to get to A rank, and this match I played very poorly. If anyone could give me some tips, it would be very appreciated. Okay, well, this one is probably more up uh, our alley. My alley, I think. So. Let me write it down. R4, HD, 34D, U, P, N, X7, B3, E, Q. Okay. Don't worry. Do 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 do. And now, Discord. Uh, also, screw it. I'm gonna get a Christmas one. Okay. I could send you the the font. Um, if you if you ask me on Discord, uh, that way I can remember. Uh, so this game, Turf War, you'll take Ellie with the. Dualies, and you have three snipers on your team. Hmm. Three snipers against uh, ten Tabrella. Hmm. This is gonna be weird. What? No, I clicked the upload button. My bad. Um. Doop, doop, doop. Okay. Big homie. <laughs> I have no clue how this game is gonna go, but I assume the snipers are gonna struggle against um, the jet sculpture because it can move more. They're gonna struggle against the dual sculptures because the, of the roll, and I guess the tentabrilla because of the tentabrilla. And that's probably gonna mean that you're gonna be on your own trying to fight kind of everybody. Also, this is a terrible spot you're in. Okay, so here, here, um, the thing you're, you're, wait. I hate that. Okay, this is hard. So here, you were behind the block. You had no vision on the rest of the enemies. So you didn't know if they were coming up to you or not. And the thing is, you weren't sharking either. You weren't like just standing there being being patient and watching for the enemies to flank them or, or just surprise them and kill them. Instead, what you were doing is you were shooting back. So you're basically signaling your position to the enemies without you yourself knowing where they are. And if you want, if they ever like spring up on you and try to get you and corner you, you don't have any escape routes because you're all the way into that corner, right? You're backed up. Uh, I have any laser. Okay. Okay, so we've got the Antibola, that's pretty cool. 
Okay, so here, what I would have suggested against the crafting is that you keep firing. Uh, I don't know why you stopped firing, because you could have just, like, overloaded its, um, its, um, uh, ink back until it's ready to fire, and then it stops vacuuming, right? So you can just keep shooting with the fast fire rate and instantly kill it, and it probably wouldn't have had time to shoot its shot. Um, so let's keep going. Okay, yeah, the see, that's... That spot is kind of hard to fight in, but thankfully you had the bamboo with assisting you. Um, I definitely think like you, you... I mean, sure, you're playing turf war, so it's, it's always good to paint more of the ground. But I believe you should spend less time in those corners if you can. Because um, if I'm looking at the map, I, I think, yeah, the, the snipers could definitely get on, on this part. As long as the map is painting pretty well, they could get on, on up top and start painting those areas, right? Uh, especially the bamboo could probably stand back there. Um, but you should you should probably be more so looking for fights. Because um, that's something that your team is not going to be... Like, look for fights, try to get the enemies out of cover. That way your, your snipers have better line of sight. Especially on this map, because there it's very hard to get line of sight on the enemies. I think. I mean, it, it depends on where you place yourself. Oh, you're saying that you're gonna restart your PC because you don't know what the place is called? Well, I'll tell you later. Okay, nice. At least you do have the roll, so that's pretty good at fighting into enemy ink. Um, but I, I wouldn't rely on that too much. I would still try to paint the, the ground as much as I can. That way you can swim away. It's always better than my own. Maybe you're getting into a fight, but let me take a look at what happens on the back of the map. Um, I mean, yeah, the thing is, like, since you're dead there, your snipers are are not going to be able to fight effectively either, right? They're, they're like, uh, all three of them were dead. What I would probably think is the best way to play is, like, the, the snipers are good at shutting down players that they have direct line of sight with. Um... So if you can basically get into a fight with someone, like, basically act as a skirmisher and really only that. Do not try to get killed at all. You were fighting that guy in the in their base, right? But that was, the fight happened too far from your snipers, so they couldn't assist you and get the kill. Because you, you can see in the in the beginning of the game, uh, at some point what happened is, like, you nearly died, but your bamboozler was there to assist you and, and finish the kill, basically, which saved you. And means that the the enemy team had one person down, so that's cool. Uh, so instead of like continuing the fight and being too focused on it uh, and trying to get the kill, you should have probably just stepped back. Basically, just grab the attention of the player and make them follow you until they're in range of the snipers, because you have three snipers. As long as their aim is pretty good, or even if they're not really, because the there's three of them, so most likely one of them is gonna hit at some point. Um, j just play as a skirmisher like you don't you don't even need to get any kills in my opinion just focus on painting the ground a bit just focus on bringing the enemies to your snipers that's and they can do the painting they can do the killing you just do the distraction um so that is what i think about this game okay next okay, let, let me take a look really quick just at the um, you guys still won though so that's pretty cool um, the sniper didn't get any kills, you got the most kills. Okay, interestingly enough, the, the duelies on the enemy team got killed more times. Um, out of all. Which is interesting. So, um, next game, next game. We show the Discord window. From Haha, <laughs> yes. Playing out the beater and actually the okay this game, but is there anything I could be doing better? 
Um, let's check it then. This is the code. Okay, the app is right here. I put the code in. I click enter. I put the code in. And then go back in Splatoon. And go back in. Oops. If you replace, download the marked replays. Uh, da -da 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 -da. And then we've got um, tower control on Sturgeon with the sniper. Uh, team composition, we've got uh, the inkbrush. I should probably look at the enemy team though. Okay, because the thing is, whenever I look at the team comps during the game, like in the game UI, I start by the enemy team, but whenever I look at it uh, in the menu, I usually start with the ally team, which is which I probably shouldn't do. Uh, but they do got a pretty similar team composition, I think. Except for the fact that you have the sniper. Um, so that sniper is going to be an advantage on your side, I, I think. probably do right now if you're not confident that you can hit people and, and kill them like especially if they're like somewhere on the tower and, and it's hard for you to hit them or maybe they, they were down below what I would do is just um, like okay let, let me show you something at the beginning of the game uh, what I would the, probably so right here okay so instead of trying to shoot at the players, right, and, and like hitting ground around the tower, which like they're, they're obviously gonna cover this ground back up if they're trying to get to the tower at some point. What I would have probably done is like fired a shot through here and then maybe also through here. Basically make, make a sort of V shape to corner the enemies and then they're forced to play closer and closer to the tower. And then maybe they, they get on it, right? But then if they get on it, they're easy targets. And if they ever want to escape and get off of it, they can't really because you've got you've cornered them with your ink shots. So if you're having trouble hitting hitting players, um, just corner them with paint, basically. Just try to get ahead of them. Because uh, they, they are going to try to get... Like, the tower is going to move and they're going to like follow the path of the... Of the of the tower so if you can basically be smart and think two steps ahead and ink where the tower is going to be so that whenever they get there they have less uh playing space then that can probably help you hit your shots better what, what i would probably do right now is um like since like they have easy access to your spot right now because of, of the pain that's on the on top of that thing I would probably just stand here and contest the tower uh, and then let my team uh, go up and flank them, right? While you're focusing uh, while you're focusing their attention over this side. Um, so let me just get real quick a bit back. That way I can see what you did there. You're playing pretty good. Got the guy on the tower. This is a knuckle spot, but it, I don't think it's. Oh, it, it hits behind. Okay, that's interesting. I need to. Maybe I'll I'll try to do some labbing at some point of um, how exactly the wave breaker works and when does it hit above a ledge and when does it not. Because it's weird, like the, the place where you put it, I wouldn't have expected the, the, it to be able to reach all the way over there. Hello, the, A, the A AI6, first time chat, welcome. Okay, good shots, 2v2.
Jinx is a pretty good king. Uh, on the, honestly, like, instead of focusing on killing the people right now, I, I would have probably, like... Because, like, here, it's it's painted in blue, but I would have probably painted it way sooner than you actually ended up doing. Because, um, <laughs> yeah, here, the brush is trying to come up on you. And, uh, I mean, not necessarily on, on you, right? But, but, like, there's a lot of activity going on there. So just having your laser, instead of having it focused on the tower where the person is going to super jump, I would have probably focused it on the open area just to scare off people. That way you can slow down their pace and make it easier for your team to work. Because basically that you, the the E-leader is not necessarily so much of a out of, out of killing. It's true that it's the weapon that has uh, a one-hit uh, KO at very long range. But honestly, just using your laser as a scare tactic is very effective. Here what you could totally do actually is uh, get on... Oh yeah, you back... Okay, very good tactic actually. Uh, to back off since you were the only one alive. It's kinda, it's kinda harder to pay attention to the game state when you're pa pausing the game a lot. Um, anyway, chat, I'm sorry, chat. So Mio sent me a replay code, which I'm gonna check afterwards. So right now we're doing the body keys right away. Uh, the, the AI six. So why is that? Supporting the, their favorite streamers in the Tenyoshin Blizzard of Bits. Okay. So apparently we did some cool stuff. That's cool. Um, let me take a look real quick at what happened. I'm sorry. Game state. Less players alive on your team. Also, the tower is moving uh, slowly, but they still do have two checkpoints to go uh, over if they want to catch up to you. So here you died because you stayed in that location when, like, a lot of people were already getting close. Like that, that spot was getting uh, very contested. I would have probably like chilled uh, back here, because then if you want to go back, you're not stuck on the grates. You have your ink to go back to. It's easier. Uh, so you super jump back in. Nice. Uh, two players down on the enemy team. That's good. That means you can start. To... Yeah, that spot is definitely not very. It's not great to be on. Like, I, I guess this one is, isn't is too far back if you want to hit, like, over there. And if you really want to get in close, yeah, that spot is probably better. And, and maybe these grates, right? Because then you, you can, like, easily go back behind the wall. Um, let me go. Oh, someone's put the gun on you. Oh, nice. Good. Uh, let me quickly take a look at the map. There's uh, quite a bit of ink in your base behind you. Um, but the timer is running out, so if you manage to kill them effectively, then you should pretty much secure the game. Okay, wipe out. Oh, that's good. Uh, you can barely hear what I'm saying because the game is louder than me. Uh, noted. I will lower the game's volume then. Maybe it's also because I'm, I'm... Okay, so also, one thing to keep in mind. Um, I do not talk close to my microphone because I'm dumb. So that might be a reason. So maybe if I get the microphone closer to my face, then maybe it's better, right? Here, how is it? Is it, is it better? Because like sometimes I, I look in this direction and then it sounds way lower. And then I look forward and it sounds better. And then I, I face my microphone and it's horribly loud also thank you for following thank you um do you have any replays any splatoon replays you want to send do you even play splatoon i mean i assume so because you're watching a splatoon stream 
and that's probably how you found it. Um. So what were the tips? Yeah, I got replay. Well, then go ahead and send it. it I, I would be pleased to uh, watch it. And sorry if uh, my tips today are not on fire. I was seeing grass, that's why. <laughs> So, um, next clip I'm going to do is the one from Mio. Uh, we're going to see what it has. So, Mio's clip. Frog in wall. Uh, they got a knockout with the um, Nautilus. Okay. I don't know what they really want me to look at. They also have gear. Okay, can I can I show it? This thing show boom. This thing. So they've got this game, um, which is a knockout with the Nautilus with um, all uh, special power up. No special charge up. Yes. So interesting. Interesting. And then I'm also gonna write this game down and take a look after the one from Mio. Or actually, Mio went to eat, so I'm probably gonna check yours first, also because Mio got a knockout, so I don't know really what he wants me to check. Uh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, now that we've scheduled the two downloads, we can hide this thing. Boop. We can go uh, to the game, go back in. Boop. New stage. Ooh, we got Splatoon 1 music. That's cool. Uh, view the replays. Download the replays. Mm -hmm. Battle replay downloaded. So, your game was on Clamblitz with the um, Tenkabrilla. Uh, on Makomar, interesting. So the team composition, the enemy team has a Hydra, two rollers, and uh, the Splatter Shot. And on your end, you have the Dentabrilla, which is pretty good at, at pushing towards the basket. Although there is the Hydra on the enemy team, which might be trouble. Um, you also have the Squelchers, which are pretty good at um, getting in with the rolls. And then you have the Blah Blobber, which is pretty good on this map, I think. Uh, whoop. So let me take a look at it. So do you have any specific, um, like, concerns or requests that you have regarding your gameplay? So you're saying I was just re I was just playing some open with my friend in this, and we ran into an actual team. Oh, actual team? Like you know, you know these people. Um, I'm, I'm not very familiar with the competitive scene. Sadly. Oh darn. Okay, this is some pretty epic movement we're doing right there. Especially with the tentacle. Oh my gosh, those flicks. Darn. So what kind of tips are you looking for? I just want to see what can I can improve on. Well, I did play a lot of uh, tentacle back in Splatoon 2. Uh, currently, I do not play. I do not play it too much anymore. What what rank are you? Just to get an idea of um, if I can give tips at all or not. Do 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 hydro, okay. S, S rank right now, okay. That works well. I, I'm also S rank. Slowly creeping up on S plus. Um, I guess. Let me think. Let me think. Uh, the map. How is it looking? Not good at all. So yeah, they're gonna have an easy time. What you wanna do is like slowly start painting back the ground um, and just creep up the the paint on them. But what? That, that's just a theory I have. I've never really tried doing that with a coordinated team, right? Um, but like my idea is basically just it's harder for the enemy team to to push in freely into your base and get the clams or whatever else objective they wanna do if they've got. Like, if you've got very, very solid paint, like every single speck of paint is painting your, in your color, right? 
if they ever want to get in, they're going to have to paint a super small line, and you can easily cover that back up. So whenever you feel that the enemy team has way too much paint or way too many access routes or that they're, they're go getting in for free, what you should do is just focus on painting, 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 painting. And do not even try to kill them, right? Just try to paint as much as you can. And that's going to push them back enough. Because, um, okay, just a, a thing that I don't know if you're aware of is that... Um, some, like, most weapon, all weapons actually, mostly, uh, whenever you shoot your ink, you have a range until, uh, up until which it's not gonna do damage anymore, but whenever it falls on the ground, the ink splotch is gonna go much, much farther than where you can actually kill people. So whenever, let's say two players are, uh, firing at each other, right? But they're, they're at the range where they cannot kill each other. But it's still going to paint at the feet of the enemy player, right? So you, you can basically shoot towards them and not really try to kill them. But just try to paint at their feet so that they have to back off, kind of. And basically, that's, that's what you want to do. Just If you get too close to them in the range where you can both shoot at each other, uh, one of you is going to die. And if you're not confident that you can kill them and you think they're more skilled than you and they're probably going to get the kill... Then what you sh should do is just paint, uh, play the painting battle, and just push them back slowly, because um, it, it can work. You can definitely win by having less skill than the enemy team. It, it, it's not common to see it happen, but it's something that that is possible to happen. Uh, also, that Hydra is taking a dangerously close position to your base. I wonder if you guys have any bomb that you could successfully use uh, against the enemy team. You guys have a uh, splat bomb and a suction bomb. So I, I definitely think you should throw that uh, all, all the bombs that you have towards the Hydra just to deny its position and make it have to drop its charge and, and back off a bit. Because then by the time it, get back, it gets back to the annoying spot uh, that it's uh, currently in, uh, it's gonna have to charge again. Um, so definitely, here you're staying in the middle. I would probably start maybe exploring some of the middle uh, of the of the edge routes here uh, on the side. Maybe even go around to their base, right, and do the same thing they're doing, uh, being annoying right here somewhere. Um, so here you got kill. I feel like maybe if you feel like they're getting in for free because of their specials and because of, uh, they're launching it at a at, at synchronous times and stuff, you should probably start looking at the HUD and see when their icons glow. Um, and basically just play ultra defensively whenever you see one that has a special. And also you guys have two specials, you have the Wave Breaker and the Invac. Um, what I would probably do, what I would probably suggest, right? Whenever you struggle in a game and you feel yeah, like you you want to keep your special until you have a good place to use it, right? Because like the invac, where do you want to use that? You want to use that to cover a teammate who's going to thro throw clams uh, in the basket. And that's, that's a pretty good strat. Unless you die before you use your specials and then you don't have a special. Um, so here what I would just just do is like as soon as I've got special I would use it because at least I'm gonna stay alive by like the special is gonna help me stay alive and I'm gonna be able to use that special while I'm, I'm alive so instead instead of dying and not being able to use a special because you wanted to use it at a better time than you could have you at least get to use it even if it's not the best use and that maybe like gives you back the advantage slowly Um, so overtime is happening, you have the clown down there, uh, very unlikely that you'll win, and I don't think you'll, no actually the score is not, oh wait no, that was the score, yes, because you, you got 49, which means that you have 51, yes, that's math, because your score is equal to the amount that you've already gotten, which is not equal to the remaining amount, uh, okay.
go. And I think if we look at the scoreboard, uh, you probably did not use a lot of Ingvax. Uh, and do 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 do. Was that no? That uh, whoops 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 whoops. Clicking the wrong buttons. Uh, this is your game, and you only used one Ingvax. Yes, indeed. So I definitely feel like y you could have used more of them. It would have like especially the Hydra, right? That w the Hydra was a big issue this game, mainly because they were painting uh, near your base, and that was getting like that that was really preventing you guys. I mean, that that was helping them get in for free. So the Ingvac, if you use it more, you could have probably blocked the shots from the ink the Hydra, and just creeped up on it and helped your teammate get close to it and and threaten it so that it has to back off. Um, well, that that's the thing. You, you're saying you don't know where to use it exactly, and that's that's my that's my exact point. Like, I, it, it even happens to me. Like sometimes I'm like, oh, I want to use my special, and I'm like, oh, okay, got special. I'm I'm gonna use it whenever I get there, and then I just die, and I, I keep dying. I'm keep, I keep telling myself I'm gonna use it and at a specific location, and then I die. I just whenever you got it, whenever you see the flash, bam, you click, you activate it, and then, um. Once you got the special, you're like, okay, well, now I've got Invac, what am I gonna do? And then you try to get creative with what you're doing. Uh, for example, whenever I played the splash matic no, the sploosh matic with the, it's got the hammer. Um, so the thing is, I'm like, oh, I wanna make some sick plays, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, and then I die. Uh, whenever, now, the thing I try to do more is whenever I get it, I just plop the hammer, and I do something with it, right? If I don't even want to use it, like, if, if what you can do if you're not going to do anything in particular uh, for fighting the enemies, you can just paint the ground because it's a really good special for painting the ground. And if you, it's not a mode where you can paint the ground and you just want to do something with it, you can just throw it instantly to the enemies and maybe it's going to land somewhere. But at least you use your special. And then you can continue in painting uh, the ground and getting more of your other special. Like, there's no reason to hold a special for too long, if you see what I mean. Whenever you got special, use it as soon as you can. Don't hold it for more than necessary. Because having a special out, even if you don't use it that much, like, you gotta think about it. The Ingvac is, is still... That's a thing I, I tell to people sometimes, is like, the game is not strictly about killing uh, people, or like, it's not about obvious metrics. Just having an Ingvac out in the open um, even if you don't uh, suck in the shots of enemies, maybe just the fact that you have it out uh, means that they're not going to approach you. And that's that you're applying pressure basically to the enemy team, and that's still valuable. Um, just like the Hydra, for example, if you had the Ingvac out, even if you didn't suck the shots of the Hydra, just the fact that you were there means that they're going to be like, hmm, they're having the Ingvac there. Why should I shoot towards them? Like, what is is it gonna do? It's not gonna do anything because they're just gonna suck it in, right? So just being there, using your special, makes your enemies kind of change their plans and maybe like play less aggressively because they're they're worried that you might do something. You might pull a funny on them. Um. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So okay, this was uh, this was your game. Now let's do the game of Mio. I don't know if they're there. Let's look at their team composition. So they've got they have got a disconnect on the enemy team, probably because they did very good and they got a knockout. Uh, I think. Uh, hold on. Can we even see the time that the game took? Nope. Uh, well then, let's see. I believe this. I don't know what I could say because I think they hit it pretty good. Okay, so team composition. Let me let me take a look. Uh, it's so stressful uh, right now because since I've seen the trailer for the new season, uh, I'm like I'm so obsessed by the new weapons designs. Like I'm I'm seeing the roller right now and I. I'm just like, why doesn't it look like a, like the new weapon? Oh, because it's the old weapon. I'm like, I want to see what the new weapon does. I'm, I, I want to touch it. I want to test it. I'm, yeah, whatever. So they've got short range weapons, um, aerospray, the, 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 the 
I forgot the name, my, my gosh, the duelies, whatever, short range duelies, uh, ends up, so two tacticals, they've got the bubbler, and they're playing on the rainmaker, and you guys got hitting around corners, big roller, and nautilus, which in my opinion is gonna be a better kick, uh, for finding in rainmaker. I mean, it, there's not a lot of cover on this map though, so the blasters are not going to be that effective. Okay. Pretty good use of the point sensors to scare off the enemies. And also pretty good use of the the charging mechanic. I mean the the charge hold mechanic. Because like definitely in, in the last game um, I saw with the Nautilus, like that we saw a few a few moments ago, uh, they weren't moving as much with the Nautilus. I feel. Whereas you are moving a lot. Also, do you have swim speed up? I think you. Oh no, you don't. Well, you definitely seem like you move fast. It's probably just because you're moving at all. So yeah, if, if the if the person that played Nautilus uh, in the previous replay that we saw uh, sees this, basically what I would suggest to you is maybe to use your charge hole mechanic a bit more, and just use the fact that you can swim because like if you look at Mio's gameplay, he's definitely moving way faster than you were, and he's being more mobile and and agile, which is probably a, a strength that you should abuse if you're choosing to get this weapon because if you're not planning on moving a lot you probably should consider one of the other splatlings I, I think okay interesting push as long as the as your teammates just don't push too much and stay safe so that you can super jump back in, then it should be fine. Also, yeah, I definitely feel how the um, how the blasters can be useful on this map whenever you're already in the enemy base, because then you can hit above the ledge, and that's pretty cool. Um, da -da -da -da, you are right here. Okay, so let's see how he's going. It's cool that that you guys have the bubbler. It provides protection for the rainmaker. That way, you can fire with it. And uh, okay, wipe out. This is cool. This is cool. So you use the bubbler to protect the rainmaker, and then the rainmaker was able to fire its shots at the enemy team and and get the kills basically hello Mio you're back well okay your game I don't have any specific tips because you played very good in my opinion um, I guess the tips I had were for the previous person who played uh, the Nautilus uh, in the in the older replay just the, the, you moved way more than them and that was cool because um, that's what the Nautilus should do the most crazy thing what is that that was solo queue. I mean, that looks pretty okay to me. I mean, it was a good game, and surely. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so now that I've done your guys' two games, I'm gonna go back to the ones on Discord. So, uh, doo -doo 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 Is uh, the next one that we need to look at? Oh, I've got a new message from Bo. Uh, noted. I'll I'll get to you back on the phone. Oh wait, admin channel. Yeah. Um, show Discord again. Oop. Discord, Discord, Discord. Discord is right. Somewhere. It's here. Okay, here. Where's Discord? Discord is here. Discord. Discord. Right here. Okay. So. Uh, we were. A little bit of footage. No, 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 no. Next code. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Also, now let me take a look at my notes. That and this.
Metallic Nation. Okay, never was tipped to get past S for the base. Okay, Fudgels are more okay. Okay, Junior. Two special teams are Okay, here, this one. Um, I'm the junior player. Would like to know how I should have used specials to engage the zone. So let's see what that game is all about. So it's probably Splat Zones. It is Anarchy Battle Splat Zones on Inkblot Art Academy. So let's take a look at how how it played out. So let's go back. Let's go back in. Let's go view replays. Uh. By the way, I messaged you about the fonts, you remember later. Yes, I saw that. I'll, I'll get back to you. And if I don't, just send me more messages and spam me. Oh, Chris, oh, Chris, send me the font. Um, so, uh, this game. They're playing as a junior. They're wondering how they could have engaged the zone. So what can we see in the um, team composition? We can see they've got blah, blah, blah. Got the, um, the uh, Splatana. The Splatana Stamper. They got the roller, which has a bubble or two. And then they've got the Splatter Shot. On your side, you've got. Most. Something pretty similar, I feel like. Uh, you've got the roller two. You've got the blob two. You've got a, a Splatter Shot type weapon. And. I mean, two sort of. It's mostly similar, is what I'm trying to say. Okay. So let, let me take a look at the rollouts. You are okay. They're all bunching up in the same location, whereas you guys are taking different uh, uh, different angles, basically. And that's already resulting in a kill on the enemy team too. Okay, you're one up from from them. There you nearly you nearly have special so yeah now you have it so now I'll we'll just save up the special for whenever I see an enemy approaching uh, but then I wouldn't wait too much before using it because here yeah you jump down and you die and that's the same tip as I gave um, to the I six is that um, instead of waiting for the the perfect place to use your special way it's gonna have the most effective use ever and it's gonna prevent anyone from doing anything right and then just dying and not being able to use it just use just, just plop your special right and that way even if it doesn't do anything at least it just maybe scares off the enemies and or make them make them reconsider their approach um so like uh, you you had let me, let me actually go back, right? Because then I can... Okay, here. That way we can see directly. At the moment, so... No, it was earlier. It's just kind of slow to pan. Nope, there you respawn. I need to place markers uh, more consistently when I, I want to go back to places. Okay, so right there. Probably... So yeah, here you've got your special that you just got uh, moments ago, and now that the enemy team is closing in, instead of jumping down, I've just plop the special on the tower. That way you can provide super jump. You you basically prevent people from shooting you off of the tower. And basically, yeah, like moments ago you didn't have your your special, but you the enemies weren't there. So as soon as I got the special, I would have gotten on the tower, plopped it because the enemies were gonna come very soon. Um, and then you would have the bubble, right? So imagine you are coming up on the zone, which your enemies have captured, and you see a bubble on the tower. It's obviously more scary to get in than if the bubble wasn't there. So you should probably put your bubble there. Or at least, like, put it on the zone. That's also a good spot to put it in.
basically use your specials more proactively. Don't be afraid to place it in a way that doesn't, that isn't the most helpful ever, because it's still gonna be helpful. It's it's less helpful not to put your specials down at all. Um, so here, like, you're you're kind of jumping behind that guy. Well, it worked out. Um, I, get, I guess I don't have any recommendations. I, I, I don't know. Like, sometimes I want to give, like, tips, but then I'm like, okay, but your plan worked out. But then, then again, maybe it's just because, um, because of you're playing at a lower level and, and the enemies are not paying attention as much, which definitely might be what happens. But then, I... Also, I'm not the most professional player ever, or the best one, so I don't know which one is the ultimate way to play the best. So I can't say, no, you're wrong, right? If, if your plan works, I can't say, yeah, it worked there, but it's not the right plan either way, so you shouldn't do that, because I'm not a level where I can know what the best strat is. Um, but definitely, what I feel like you're doing is you're jumping too much into enemy ink. You're, you're, you feel... Y um, you, you don't necessarily like that sort of place I feel like is one you wouldn't necessarily hesitate to jump in right if you see enemies and you're like oh I'm gonna kill that guy you're not gonna be like okay yes but there's also a lot of pain so maybe I'll reconsider that like mm, okay. yeah, yeah you're, you're trying to get down here you're maybe focusing too much on the zone instead of like focusing on where the enemies might be because here you got down, but like there's a lot of enemy paint in there, and there could be an enemy like anywhere in here. Same here, like lots of enemy paints. Uh, the thing that you guys are doing, you're kind of like getting in um, into the zone. I don't know if you saw basically the paint uh, trail, but like there was a paint trail that went into the zone, and then that zone was circled by enemy paint everywhere. So basically, you were just getting into the moss pit and dying because the enemies were, were all around you and you weren't doing a, a good job at painting over them to to see where they are you're playing a junior like a sploosh true true that is a good comparison um so mia has another game match i feel like i did some mistakes well i i'm probably gonna keep going through the matches that we've got on the discord channel and then i'm gonna get back to yours maybe later um, but I just want to get over with episode 3 because it's uh, lots of stuff. I'm gonna figure out the pacing, the tips that I'm able to give. So, next one. Uh, da -da 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 -da. This one, using the trash ringer on tower control. I feel like there was something I could have done to improve this match. I am not sure what mistakes I keep making that's causing more and more losses. Okay. And then there's a whole lot of uh, that thing. Uh, a lot of messages in, in the thread, basically, I'm trying to say. So, let me enter the code. Boom, boom. On Undertow Spillway. Okay. We go back. We remove this. We go back in. We view the replay and download the replay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got a tri stringer, two rollers, the machine, which is pretty good at hitting on the tar. Mo most of them are, pr are pretty good at hitting on the tar. Then on the enemy team, you've got well, same tri stringer, sniper, good at tar, blaster, very very good at tar, and then the 52 gal, which is the only odd one out in here. So let's see how that goes. Wyvern. Oh, that's from the Neon Wyvern. Really? But they were probably playing with uh, Wyvern then. Do -do -do -do. Wyvern, Amelie, That's from Zintech. Okay. Zintech. Um, sorry if I just don't know Okay, so, what's happening for me? Um, hmm. Your position is, I mean, 
as a tri stringer you can definitely hit from here but i would probably take the same position that the, the other tri stringer was taking in the beginning of the game uh and basically just stand up there because you're it's you it's always better to aim at people that you can see and also hitting above cover like you, you can hit above cover but you sh it's better if you can hit above cover from up top right Um, okay, this is getting kind of tough. And we are... Okay, 2v2. You have your special, I would probably focus in on your tower right now. Okay, good. Okay, pretty nice. Uh, what I would do right now, since you guys have a, a very much a good amount of disadvantage, is just focusing on painting, so use your half charges. Uh, that way you can, I mean, yeah, exactly, that kind of charge. And then just paint back the map slowly, because you have pretty good painting efficiency, I think. Like, the fact that your shots are spread definitely allows you to paint way more. Uh, and there, like, if you want to back off, you, your escape probably is kind of, like, flunky. It's not the best. Uh, zinc back right here, okay. Ooh. Um... So yeah, what I would probably do here, I, I think, just a theory. Okay, so there you need to back off because you're alone. But what I, I would probably do, um, just in general, is if the enemy teams are there, right, and they're trying to rush to the tower uh, to get on it and, and push the tower forward, what I would do, instead of focusing on the tower and stopping people who get on the tower, is just let them get to the tower. They're just gonna maybe, like, uh, focus on it too much. And what you can do is just, like, creep back uh, to the side of them, maybe get in that place, and then try to, s to snipe them from behind. And then basically what you're doing is you're circling them, and whenever they get to the tower, they're, they're cornered, basically. Uh, so let me get back to you. Is this you? No, it isn't right here. This is you. The counter push is going pretty good, pretty well, uh, but here you're alone, so I would definitely back off real quick to provide super jumps. And also, okay, so here's one thing. Here's one thing also that you may con want to consider. Um, okay, let me just read the chat. Bo says. Wait, no, I'm 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 gonna read the messages later. Let me just get through my tip. So my tip is. Um, whenever you, you try to go back to your spawn, um, to escape, if you're, if, if it's not painted correctly up to your spawn, you're gonna have to look, like, you're gonna have to turn back around and look at your spawn if you wanna go there, because you're gonna need to paint your feet as you're go, as you're getting there. Uh, if the, if your back is painting very good, what you can do is, like, keep your focus on the enemies, and if they ever try to approach you, Instead of turning your head all the way back and, and focusing on painting your feet, you can still like focus on the enemies, fire at them, and just slowly get back. Or even if you try decide to swim, you can still keep your camera face towards the enemies and see what they're doing. And basically, instead of just focusing on running and not being aware of if the enemies are getting too close or maybe they're just getting a bit close, but then you can, you can stand where you're at. At least if you have awareness of the enemies, right, you can, you can just move back just the amount that you need, and not have to paint your feet or, or get distracted. Um, so yeah, that's what I have to say. Mm -hmm. One thing I would also suggest um, is to not necessarily jump before your shots. Uh, j the jump shot is mainly for killing people, I think. I think, because um, it's a line right that you have the three, three vertical shots. It's to like hit a human body. Um, but if you're just trying to paint the ground to basically block them, uh, using the normal shot is horizontal, so it makes a sort of line more so. Uh, and I think that's more helpful. And also, you don't have to jump, so you can charge like faster, right? After your shot, you just release the button, it shoots, then you just click it again, and it just starts uh, firing the next one, right? Or charging the next one, instead of being in the air 
and not being able to charge fast while you're still airborne. So what is the chat saying? Um, da -da 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 -da. I think a big problem with backline players is not knowing when to rotate. Okay, fresh fingers have a good kit, but the weapon is slow and slow. Well, it's kind of like an explosion. It's, it's sort of an explosion, in a way. Um, first tip for Splatoon, get good. That's not really a, a helpful tip. Oh, you're running uh, a thermal link, that's cool. So, here, one strategy you may want to consider is since you have weapons on your team that are good at hitting um, above the tower, they can get like below the tower and hit above. What you could probably do is help them basically just play, uh, p paint for them so that they can get to the tower easier and, and fire from below it. If that makes sense. Or that I don't even know if that's correct strategy. I need to, t to test more stuff. Maybe you know what I should do at some point is like the, all the tips and the recommendations I'm giving. I should try them more. I mean, like, of course I'm gonna give recommendations that I've already kind of tried. Uh, but like for 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 example for the tri tri finger, uh, I've never I I don't I didn't play that weapon that much. Um, tri finger can't, can't really paint well, really. Hmm. Uh, let me check, let me check. Let's do some testing. Do -do 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 -do. I mean, can't paint well if you're using the full charge shot, uh, because it's gonna be slower. So you're basically tra trading off uh, fastness for range. Where is it, where is it, where is it? Here. Um, it applies pressure with long range shots and landing rockets, which allows it to aim to get in. Okay, so I definitely think if you're using like these charge shots, it, it paints pretty good. Or even I think if you're, oops, if you're just using the, the normal shots like this, that's a pretty solid amount of paint, honestly. Like, that's solid. I mean, it's not the best, obviously, because I, I, I believe. Uh, just a regular shooter, like uh, let's say the splatter shot, if I can find it here, it probably paints more. Probably paints more. Hmm, I don't know. I mean, I guess we could see from the charge amount. I don't. Uh, yeah, it definitely paints faster, but the the tri stringer is not half bad. And the thing is, it's it's got more range. I mean, you can have more range. That's the, the that's the thing. Uh, it paints kind of slower, but you can choose to fire uh, farther, which the splatter shot cannot necessarily do. Um, but if you shoot up and down and up and down, you can paint pretty well. Well, yeah, okay, that's this technique you're talking about, and this technique is dumb. Um, in my opinion, personally, uh, because, I mean, you can just do this, it's the same, like, it sh you can just move forward, it's gonna do the same, and like, it, okay, sure, you, maybe it's like, oh, yeah, but then you don't paint it, you feed it in the beginning, well, you, what you can do is just, oh, okay, I get, I get what you mean, because maybe if you fire like this, it paints a splotch, and then if you fire like this, then it paints a larger splotch, hmm, that kind of makes sense. I guess you can just do this, and then you just start firing back normally, right? And then that's it. Like like this, 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 this. And then that's it. You're, you're done. You don't need to fire up and down anymore. Or, eh, I guess. Hold on. Is this... Yeah, okay, I guess that works. I guess that works. Maybe a bit. I mean, that, that's that's really edge case. That's if you want to, like, move up and paint a lot at the same time. Which, this weapon is kind of a backline. So why would you want to paint a lot while moving in? You, what you mainly want to do is, like, if you want to go up to a spot, you just do this. Right? Oop. Like this. And if you want to paint, you just paint from your spot. 
you don't have to do any weird shenanigans in my in my opinion because like wh whenever you start the, the match whenever you go you go from spawn let's say this is spawn and you're trying to go to your perch or something you're just gonna go in either like very slowly and just paint while your team goes up and starts the fight or what you're gonna do is uh st go in very quickly right and then just hold that position like uh, let's say you don't want special right and you're playing a mode like uh tower control and you really want to focus on that tower then you can go fast with those shots it takes a long time uh, yeah but it takes a long time and it's really situational yeah that's what I was saying I believe if you want a weapon to paint for your team it probably should be shouldn't be the trash ranger true but I mean in, in that situation like in, in that specific team composition right we're not necessarily arguing like which weapon should you pick if that's what you want to do we're more arguing more so arguing like what should you do if you have this weapon in this specific team like d did you guys have any anything you would have suggested in particular for this game that would have helped maybe win because um, I'm not really seeing it too much. I definitely feel like the splat roller did not get as many kills as the other players and also got killed more. Like the two rollers, the, the problem with those is that they have to get close if they want to fight effectively and they were not able to do that. Um, and da -da 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 -da. Because, yeah, that, that's the thing, like, it's 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 one thing to say that the weapon is good at something or not, but sometimes you, even if it's not good at doing something, you still need to do that at some point, just because of how the match is going. Uh, to be honest, it was kind of a team comm difference. Well, yeah. But that's that's the thing, I mean, like, even, even in a team comm difference, right? As long as the... the like, you know, pro players, even if you give them a, a very bad team composition, they're still going to pull through because they just know which things to be doing or, or what the disadvantages of their weapons are and how to play around those disadvantages. So if we can give basically these kind of tips or like at least learn enough to say, okay, the trash finger is not very good at this, but you need to do that other thing if you want to help your team, basically. Um, that's one thing I, I very much appreciate Salmon Run for, because it, it forces you to learn weird and wild team compositions, and that's pretty cool. Um, anyways, shall we move on to the next clip after I hit that shot, please? That's on. Come on, man. Come on, man. Oh my gosh. Okay. Right here. No, here. Okay, why not? Come on, whatever. Anyways, uh, so sorry, sorry we did not have any um, inclusive tips, any better tips to give for the trash ringer. Uh, let's show the window. Next messages. Let's see actually what the what the messages in the thread are saying about. Oh, lots of stuff to be said. You think the trash ring okay? Da -da -da -da. I'd be open to watching some more replays if you're interested since you asked about the mistakes you keep making. First off, before the match even starts, I picked out some information about your team versus the enemy team. You have two rollers and machine. The enemy team has a shooter, Clash Blaster. Hold on. Shooter, Clash Blaster, a charger, and a stringer. It takes some practice and experience to be able to pick out important details, but I try to quickly answer those these three questions. Will my team uh, get frequently outranged and pinned down by the enemy team? Are the important specials on the board I need to be mindful of? I get jump scared by Trizuka so frequently I always pick those players out, but I also want to know how many missiles, crabs, shields, and buoys are in the play. What is the inking capability of either team? In relation to this match, your team re is really strong at the whole murdering concept but really need to be enabled because none of them are going to be to put out substantial inking with an enemy scope stringer and blaster on and an undertow half of your team has to be very obvious has to very obviously walk their way forward through enemy ink to actually approach anyone 
making them an obvious target. Well, yeah, that's that's mainly what I was pointing out. Um, while being totally outranged, generally, if anyone on your team lands a good solid hit and it's not enough to kill, then it would only really take a single missile from you to clean up the kill. Finally, I would also say that your team has a special advantage, but they really need to support in. They really need support in terms of zoning and paint to not get overwhelmed before they lose them. Mm -hmm. So with all that said, let's approach what actually happens in the match in relation to what you just said. You spent almost the entire match trying to do fully charged jump shots, exactly so. I'm not going to count the number of times you do a half charge shot, but I'm pretty sure it's a single digit number. And half of them were accidental because you decided you want to move somewhere else instead. Yeah. So basically this, is, this means you didn't need to jump because you would have probably... I mean, the, the jump shots weren't hitting anyone anyways, right? And also you needed to do more half charges because it painted, it would have painted a lot more. Uh, two, you hit like tunneled on that splatter scope, which is kind of a good idea. You should be able to outrange them but and bully them. And it's important for you to... Um, it's Where was I? You should be able to outrange them and bully them. And it's important for you to bully them because they are going to bully your team. The problem with... Number one is that as powerful as landing fully charged shots is, um, being that they are long range instant splat if you land all three missiles, they are substantially cutting out your paint up output, which as mentioned will be important for, in yeah exactly, more paint. Despite the joint action of trying to create path opportunities, yes. Um, hello? Hello, hello! What is up? You're alone. I am doing some VOD review. Uh huh? I'm doing some VOD review on Twitch. Oh, I have no idea what that means. Uh, we look at the replays of other players that they post in the in the Discord channel and we give tips on how they can improve. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah. Dude. I'm like fucking hard stuck A plus and I don't know why. Well, if you do have some games uh, that you think you, you could get tips on or you have specific questions, go ahead and send them. No, uh -huh. not really. Like, I I know what I'm doing and I do stuff good. I just don't know why I'm stuck in A plus. Well, if you're doing good, then there's no reason you would be stuck, right? So if you're stuck, it's probably yeah, because like, there's something better you can do, or maybe it's it's like coordinating, like even if it's not you necessarily, and maybe it's your team dragging you down. But then the question is, how can I coordinate with my, with my team better? I mean, I don't really have a team I play with all the time. I just do a ping the server and see if people join. If no one joins, just play with random. Yeah, I, I mean, no. What I mean, that team is is like the the players you're matched with in the game, whether that is players oh, you yeah. found or whoever else uh but basically how Maybe to coordinate with them better e even you know randoms on the internet uh that you just found through find th through the game uh matching you can also try to coordinate with them kind of even if there's no communication try to basically know what they're gonna do anticipate and, and uh, basically play the same plan and make that plan work but if you do have some games uh, that you do want to share, uh, I can take a look at it with the chat and other I, people, and then maybe we can have an outside perspective for you. Sure. I mean, I do have one game where I, I got a knockout with the Explosher. I've been playing a lot of Explosher lately. I mean, not, not ne you're not necessarily that. looking for uh, good games. It's, it's like uh, games where you kind of struggle more would be more helpful. Oh, yeah. Um, I did get knocked out on Wahoo World, but I know why. It's because I literally got spawn chance and I couldn't really do much in that situation. Okay. Well, Wahoo World is definitely a, a harder map to... Like, if you're getting spawn camped and you only have, like, backline weapons, it's going to be impossible to get out. Like, backline weapons struggle to get out of spawn. Yeah, we Wahoo. had an Ink Rush, an Octobrush, and Gooey Squelchers. I do know that at one point we did kill the entire team except for one person, which was the Range Blaster. You can guess what happened. Yeah, I, I see. Well, what I would probably do if you have like clo uh, closer range weapons on Wahoo World and you're getting spawn camped is try to paint for them, right? So like if they're getting into an engagement, 
and they're they're trying to fight and, and win a fight, uh, it, they're gonna have much more chance to succeed. If like, because if they're firing at someone and someone else is firing at them, both of them are gonna get damaged and both of them are gonna have enemy uh, paint at their feet. So what you can do is like, especially if you play Explosher, you fire towards your your teammate, you fire at their feet, and basically that makes they're both damaged. But the enemy has uh, uh, your team's paint under their feet, while your teammate has also their their paint under their feet. So your teammate can move, the enemy cannot. And then that encounter is probably going to be a win. And then you can all spiral down and you can get out of spawn. I've actually done that a few times before, and usually it works. But on this match with Wahoo World, somehow my teammate just could not hit their shots. It, <laughs> it was just a very... A very depressing thing to watch. Yeah. Some sometimes, I mean, it, it depends on the teammates you get matched with. Mm -hmm. uh, Bo says, please yeah, don't tell me the next stream is a vlog review. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. They're probably not, because um, I've done a lot of vod review recently, and I I still need to edit all of the ones that I did. I I got like three episodes worth of stuff to edit. Mm. It's crazy. Jeez. Uh, so much. How how much footage is that? I don't know. Like the the last the first two episodes I made. Like I think the first one was two hundred two hours and a half, and then the the second one was four hours, and then I, I've I've went ahead and and did. I think I've got. I don't even know. There's so many clips being sent, and also I for I had a dumb idea to do a tricolor special episode to vod review uh, tricolor battle games. Oh god! So now I have to do it as a special episode, and I'm gonna do that, I guess, and it's probably gonna be irrelevant because the map is never gonna come up again. But hey, I'm try I'm trying to make a something happen on YouTube, so why not? Mm -hmm. Slash on Twitch. Speaking of tricolor, um, I I somehow won almost every single match I had on tricolor. I don't even know how because a lot of the time I was just memeing playing uh, reflux. So what team are you on? Arrow spray. Uh, water. Water. So defending. Okay. Well, yeah, that that map. Like now that it's more balanced, I feel like. Um, the defending team has an easier time. Like it, it's not as easy for the attacking team to get dunks all the time. Mm -hmm. They really need to have a plan, basically. Uh, I, think, I think my tread color, I won about, I want to say 80% of them. So, yeah. Makes sense. what team were you on for the spot test? I was uh, Team Grass. Mm. Trying to get your third win, I gotcha, gotcha. What, 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 did, you, what did you say? Trying to get Shivers third win. Shivers? No, I'm. I, I like Fry more. Fair. I also like Shiver more, but I chose Big Man because number one, water has Piplup and frogs, and you know what grass doesn't have? Piplups and frogs. My point. That's. I rest my case. You know. I I, I like grass Pokemon personally. I mean, just, I mean, I mean, just I like the color green and and plants. I like that. Oh, yeah, color green is a great color, but it's not associated with frogs. So I rest my. <laughs> Wait, yes it is. I'm stupid. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's get on to some more replays. And maybe if you have in a uh, replay that you want to send, um, you can go ahead. Maybe look at in your past games. Uh, you can upload one and and send me the code, and then I'll I'll check it. I mean, all my past matches are basically uh just. From the splat fest, so I don't think oh. I don't think I have like uh, let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games that aren't splat fest in my replay. Well, if you have one, ideally one that would be uh, not as as good, probably. So um, defeat. Uh yeah, probably. Right, I, I have this mincemeat metalworks. Oh, I had a disconnect. That's why I lost. Never mind. <laughs> I remember that match. Okay. Uh, go I, ahead oh. and do one from the chat. Uh, I mean, I mean from the oh, channel. I, I don't know how to upload these. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, what did, What did you say? 
I don't know how to do that. How do you upload? Yeah. Uh, wait, when you when you see your replays, um, you, you click on the replay, then the scoreboard expands, and you have the play button, and then the upload button right next to it. Mm, oh, okay, I see that. Uh, do -do 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 -do. So, copy this. Alright, let me try that real quick. Hopefully, it'll work. Please. Uh, well, I'm, I'm uploading it right now. Okay. Let's take a look at it right now. Taking a little bit. Ah, server communication error. That's crazy. <laughs> I, 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 no I, way. I, I really can just get a communication error on everything. No, because it wasn't the one where it's like the Splatoon in-game thing. It was the official Nintendo one. So I think something might be wrong with my actual internet. No, it's too late to check. I'll just brute force it. So that person in the chat... Um, had a knockout game on Target Control means Smith Miller works with the machine. I think I'm gonna skip this one just because it seems kind of too good. Uh, maybe. Bro, <laughs> let me upload it! Stop giving me communication errors! Why? Why are you doing this to me? Um, so this one is an e leader, and I do know how to play the e leader. And they got score zero on. Splat Zones, Eel Tail Ollie. Interesting. Ooh, that hurts. But it's not a knockout, so, um... Yeah. So that's interesting. Wait, how do you not get knocked out and have zero score? I... Whoop, 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 whoop. I'm doing something I shouldn't do. That's my question. How does, how does that work? I do not want to look at messages on Discord. Oh, actually, mm. this is okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it is my internet, actually. I, I am okay. Cause I just tried to get back into the lobby after resetting my game, and it just said cannot connect to internet. Wow, that's crazy. I think I'm probably gonna do because I don't want to have. Ugh. I'll try... Dude, for some reason, my apartment has two internet thingies. That's weird. But I'll start connecting to that one, and maybe it'll work. This time, I'm gonna take a look at the e leader game. I think it's this one that I downloaded already. Let me check. Yep, download. Okay, good. Let's go back. Oop. Go back in. Do replay. Download it now. That's your prize. There's another person in here. Uh, yeah, the other Hello, person is, is, uh, yeah, the person that's in my chat currently. So, on Eeltail Alley... Oh, no, you got knocked No. No, yeah, Wait, you got you knocked like out. Uh, yeah, I'm streaming on, on Twitch. That's where I'm doing the VOD oh, review. That's crazy. And, and then I, I, like, take the footage and edit it for YouTube. With Mark, uh, with, uh, timestamp and stuff. Oh, that, that makes sense. Okay. Do you do you I'm look around the, the channel feedback on replays uh, in the server? Because that's where uh, I post no. the stuff. I, I, I only just use the server to invite people to play with. Okay. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I, I'm, I'm, I've I'm never watched a single Squid Pool YouTube video. I've just <laughs> seen them on TikTok a few times. I'm, <laughs> I'm a fraud. Uh, okay. So, oh, let me take a look at what... Let's go. Nice. Okay, let me take a look at what happened in this game. So, uh, currently they got control of the zone. You guys are at a numbers disadvantage and people are creeping up on you. Uh, you're the only out one alive, so we'll probably back off and give super jumps. Uh, probably use your specials as soon as you can before dying. Again, the tip is always to use specials if you need. If it's not the best use, right? Because the best use is... I mean, no. The worst use is no use. Yes, that's the new slogan. Um, so what can I say about the map currently? We got a lot of points. It's gonna be hard for you. Yeah, you can see that on the map. Uh, they've got more more paint basically. They've got the middle a bit covered. Um, basically, their base is covered. The middle is covered evenly between both of you. But then that's also covered evenly in your base, which is not 
very practical for you guys to get in. Because, uh, like, here... Yeah, you have, like, a difficulty getting back, in my opinion. If you want to back off, right? If someone creeps up on you, they're going to be able to easily get in because of that pain splotch. Uh, and if you want to get back, you're going to be kind of blocked. Um, so let me get back in here. I would probably just focus on... Like, instead of focusing on painting on, on on the zone or killing people, I would just focus... I mean, yeah, still on the zone, right? But just paint. Paint, 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 paint. And push the enemy back with your painting power. Uh, I'm gonna go back to you. Okay, pretty good. Pretty good, very nice. Okay, good. No complaints on those shots, they're very... Okay. Yo, hold on. I just realized something. Because on the scoreboard it told... It, it said that she had a score of zero. And that the enemy team got a knockout. But clearly, you already got a lot of points. So what I just realized is that, is that if you don't get a, a knockout... I mean, if you do get a knockout, basically all the points the enemies got are reduced to zero. Which means that they're not going to get a lot of points. So getting a knockout, it's not necessarily going to give you more points than getting 99 points. Uh, but it is going to prevent your enemies from scoring. Which is kind of mean, but okay. So, so that gives value, basically. If you get knocked out, basically, it, you, you don't get any points. It's like, yeah, you screwed over. You don't deserve anything for that. I, I don't think the team that got the knockout gets gets more XP. It, it, like from from the math that was done, um, if you take a look at the at the amount of points that it gives you, I don't think it's necessarily that much more. It's, it's like basically just as if you got gotten the same amount of points as a hundred. But I think what it does is it sets it hard resets the enemy score to zero. That way they can't get any points themselves, right? Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, Mio says, I will help you if I knew how to edit. Well, it, it would be hard anyways uh, for you to to help me because like uh, the files are big and it's, 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 so, it's a whole deal. Uh, what's your ranked replay and give you some tips. My ranked replay? What do you mean? Uh... Always says score so the team that got a knockout gets more XP. Yeah, mention this. Okay, uh, the guy in the VC replay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's where's the? Um, did you did you post it? Somewhere. What? Uh, did you post your replay? Yeah, yeah, I, I got it posted. I'm watching the replay right now, actually. Um, I think I see one thing I did wrong <laughs> already. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna do yours now, even though it's it's later down in the chat, cause uh, I, I I'm a cheater. I do in the wrong order. Oh my god! No way! You cheat? That's crazy. I'm a hacker, right? Oh, it's wait, hold on. Oh no, that's I didn't copy the other. That's why. Oh, I just ran into a suck. Oh, <laughs> this is embarrassing to watch on my end. Download. Okay. Oh, what's your stream though? Let me pull it up. <laughs> uh, so get back. Uh, go back in. So explosion game. Uh, knocked out on. Uh, let me check. Let me check on Wahoo World Tower Control. So let me take a look, quick look at the team composition. We've got uh, Range Blaster. Yes, indeed. Uh, that's what you mentioned, I think. And you got the two yeah, brushes. This is so the game I talked here. about. I don't yeah. think it's the spawn camp game. I don't remember. Maybe it is, and I'm just stupid. Mio, Mio says, I'm going to watch your, your replay and tell you what's wrong with it so you feel sad. <laughs> Uh, top of the so, 
Um, let me just take a quick look at the rule. Yo, it's been a, a while since I've seen that uh, ink color. Like that that ink combination. The yellow and purple? Yeah the, yeah, the sort of blue thing with the yellow thing. Yeah, it, that's a really nice color combination in my opinion. I love it. Yeah, I, I haven't seen it in very long. Okay, so here... Well, first off, you've spammed ouch. Uh, yeah, I get... always spam ouch when I die, so... Quite a few times. Uh, super jump, I <laughs> don't think that was the best plan. I would probably just rolled out uh, from spawn slowly and painted my special back on the way. Also, probably I, I would like take my distances out way more than you're doing right now. Like, your, your, your point as a backliner, because I think you're the backliner of this game, is just to stay safe. Uh, here, instead of getting on the tower, you mainly want to use your point sensor to get a, a good idea of where the enemies are at. Uh, that was... Yeah, I mean, you got into the crab where he wasn't dead yet. And like, okay, so let me go back. Actually, can I put a marker real quick? Boom, right there. Um, I, so. I, I wish your stream would load so I could see what you're talking about, but it won't load. <laughs> well, on, can you watch it on Twitch? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to, but it's not loading for me. But it's it's fine. I, I'm pretty sure I know what you're talking about anyways. Yeah, so there was the crab that was active at that time, and you were firing behind the cover, and you were hitting some shots, and then you just decided to stop shooting and to get into the crab's uh, uh, face to shoot at it from the front. Um, yeah, I, I, but I, you did, I thought it would have ended. Yeah, because because basically, it, it obviously, if you want to shoot at an enemy, you're kind of like trying to look at them and, and see them because it's more obvious. Oh, couple with an underscore just followed. Is that you? Yeah, that's me. That's... Thank you. Thank you. So uh, basically, even if you don't see your enemies, right, that's the point of the x -flusher. You can hit the enemies very good uh, with full damage very far away, even above cover. So you just should have probably just kept uh, hitting them and it would have probably worked. Because, yeah, there you, you just abandoned and got in their face, and that didn't work against the crab. <laughs> so, here, what is your plan? You're a super jumping in. Okay. Yeah, I, I usually play front lines. I'm not used to back line weapons. It was a new experience for me, basically. Okay. There you go. So, what I, uh, what I would probably do... It is just use may, maybe use your sub weapon more to get an idea of where the enemies are at and and try to play. Yeah, I mean you say you play front lines, but you basically just so you don't have a lot of experience with backline weapons, right? Yeah, I've been trying out the flash though. It's been kind of fun. Okay. Well, de definitely one thing you want to do if you're trying a weapon that you uh, a weapon type that you haven't used before or, or a variant of a weapon that has a special gimmick is to really get in the mindset you really want to abuse the gimmick as much as you can right so you, whenever you're playing with the explosher you need to think okay what is the gimmick of the weapon the gimmick of the weapon is i can hit people behind cover so far away they could never dream of hitting me from there right so just try to think of like dumb ways to have fun right like Dumb plays that would make you burst out laughing if, if you did that, right? And just play at this. And then, basically, you're gonna figure out the weapon's niche. Because there, what, I, what I'm seeing that you just did here is just, like, spawn camp, two super jumps of enemies on on the glass part of Wahoo World. And, and you just, you were aiming down on them and waiting for them to, uh, to basically land. And then you, you would fire at them. But... That wouldn't do any good because the um, the explosion is not a weapon that can one shot. It can only two shot uh, if you aim really good uh, at best, and it, and otherwise it's a three shot. So basically, they land. You land one shot. Uh, it doesn't do enough damage. They kill you, and that's basically what happened. Yeah, so we... I realize that now. Yeah. Okay, super jumping in. Okay, so here you super jump onto the tower when everyone was dead. So you, we were the only person alive, and you decided to. So the funniest thing is that you didn't super jump in at the beginning of of, uh, of your respawn. You the first off yeah, you I would... went off, I... and then you started super jumping. <laughs> and... um, usually, what I'm playing for too, and I like to listen to music and an ad played, so I press skip. 
that's why I just kind of delayed there for a moment. And then I realized, oh, I might need to jump in. And then everyone died after yeah. I pressed jump. So I just kind of stuck there. Yeah. Because usually, yeah, obviously what you want to do as a backliner is just move forward, uh, swim the farthest you can, especially if everybody else is dead. And that way they can super jump to you farther into the fight, but not into enemy uh, directly. Um, just let me get back to the splash, which is right there. Okay. I think you're super jumping way too much uh, with the explosion. They, there's really no need to super jump that close to the base, or at all. Like super jumping is really edge cases with the with the explosion. Like, I, oftentimes I really don't find myself super jumping that much in game. They're 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 a cool thing that you can do, but they're not a necessity if you see what I mean. Yeah. Like, like some, even if sometimes I could have super jumped to get back to mid faster and play the objective, but then I'm taking risks, right? Um, but then if you don't super jump and you just like swim back up to it, you're, you're leaving what, like three seconds? I mean, sure, three seconds is kind of a lot in Splatoon, but as long as your team is not half bad and you're not like, it depends on what you want to avoid most. Do you want to avoid taking risks of dying? Or do you want to avoid losing time because the game is really fast-paced? And depending on your level and what you find that you struggle with the most, then you should consider either like super jumping more or super jumping less. And here, what I, I'm definitely seeing is that you super jump in lots of situations where like you die on uh, in very quickly. So maybe what I would suggest is maybe do a game where you focus on not jumping at all, you know, and seeing mm -hmm. if that works. And then you kind of like force your brain to think about ways to make not jumping work. And, th and then maybe like right. wh whenever you go back to playing normally, right? Like, mm, I could super jump. And then you're like, mm, I remember I did a lot of games where I didn't super jump and it worked kind of well. Mm -hmm. I also do have a question. Do you think, can you see the gear I'm running or no? Uh, I think I could have when I was in game. I could have seen the main abilities of your gear. Um, wait, which ones were they? Um, it was. You want to know the main stats or what the actual clothing is called? No, no, the the, the main ability. I mean that that's what you want me to know, right? Oh, the main abilities. Um, I'm pretty sure it was Ink Saver Main. Yep. Um, Ink Recovery. Night. Like, I can't remember the last one. I'm pretty sure I actually have the outfit on me. I was like, just check. Uh, I think it might have been. Yeah, two inks every main and one ink record. Mm -hmm. I can tell you the substats too. Hold on. Uh, the, the the hat has full ink recovery. Shirt is uh, one sub of main, sub of ink recovery, and sub of sub saver. Uh, mm -hmm. And then the shoes. I'll take my ink it... main and then. Special charge, sub saber, quick respawn. Yeah, I, I I'm not that like deep into exposure or any weapon really that I can like give specific uh, tips for like which sub abilities to have, and like it's also mm, kind of hard to visualize what it would do in game if you're just like telling me verbally instead of like seeing all the abilities like visually. Um, but but I guess like the ones that are gonna have the main effect are definitely the the main abilities. So I guess it's it's enough of a picture of of what kind of gear you're striving towards, right? Mm -hmm. I um, mean, I just I know the exposure is heavy on ink usage, so ink that remains seems really good. But you 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 want to me to tell you one thing though is like um, it is ink hungry, but maybe. If you do try to run some other kind of gear and and do let yourself struggle with the ink management, then the thing is like, sh sure, it's gonna be annoying to run into situations where you're gonna run out of ink. But then what's gonna happen is that you're gonna be like, ooh, I am I'm running out of ink now, so I cannot go fight. So in, in like intuitively, you're just gonna stand back and let your ink recharge, right? So you're gonna play more like a backliner. Just because you have to, mm -hmm. like, instead of thinking of, mm, I'm going to go there and fight them and, and, and giving you too much time to think of engagements you could do and, and get too excited about those, you're going to find yourself struggling with your ink management uh, a lot more. So you're going to kind of, like, find cool spots where you can chill 
and find time to struggle with this instead of struggling with other players, right? Because the, the main struggle of backline weapons is not other players, it shouldn't be. It should be to struggle with like aiming correctly or firing in weird angles or just ink management. And so may maybe actually not running those abilities could be helpful to you. Okay, that makes sense. So do you think I should maybe go for a little special charge up? Or... Uh, special charge to get rain. Um, that could work. Uh, usually, whenever I, I run a, any sort of, uh, I mean, that's just me because I, I like to run kind of meme gears, kind of. Whenever I run uh, an, a weapon with point sensor, I like to run sub power up, uh, all of them on all my gear, because that way I get you can up to double the scanning time uh, from eight seconds to sixteen seconds. So it's basically a better scanner, and and if you really want to get into that backline mindset, you're gonna be struggling with ink. You're gonna have a very very efficient um, scanning of everyone on the map at all times. So you're gonna know where they are at all times. You're gonna be able to hit them above cover. And same, if you want to spam the 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 point sensors, you're gonna have to be wary of your ink, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, then again, ink sensors themselves don't cost too much for ink, so... I don't really think I'll have to worry about the ink cost for that, right? Uh, let me, let me check. I mean, if you want to spam more, then... Uh, the more you want to spam, obviously, and the more... You're gonna have to worry about it. Oh, the icons are different. Um, okay. let me take the banana explosion. Let me, let me see how much it costs. Yeah, it doesn't cost too much. I guess you can throw two at once, and that's pretty good. As long as, as, but that's the thing, right? So like, it doesn't cost too much. If you just want to throw one, and then like kill that person, then it's it's pretty good. But like, whenever, like, I would definitely see myself whenever I, I go out into the fight. Maybe I paint a bit, and then whenever I want to launch um, some, um, I forgot the name, the point sensors, I throw one. Then obviously, if I didn't scan anyone or I scan no one, I try to throw it in the other location they might most likely be, and then I don't have enough ink to reliably kill any of the people I, I've scanned. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. So then you're gonna need to re to recharge, and then if you wanna throw another one, maybe to like get everybody scanned or like definitely throwing two, then you don't have enough to do anything. So you, you need to recharge. So yeah. Alright, got it. That's actually pretty useful. I use a super jump all the time, because again, frontline main mindset, so... I'll try to not super jump as much, it's just like, kind of a habit stuck in my head. I see why that was a downfall though. And, and like, definitely if that can help you, um, the, the thing you can, you can think about uh, to prevent you from super jumping is like, I want to use my special, right? So by the time I want to get to the fight, I want to have a special to fight with. So just uh, go out normally and just paint, paint, and when you're up to the battlefield, up to the fight, you're going to have your special and bam, you can throw rain and that's going to help you. Okay, got it. Um, um, question. Say I'm currently playing on Scorch Gorge, what do you think would be a good spot for a backline? Um, depends on which backline you're playing. I definitely feel like Scorch Gorge would be less useful for the Explosher because it, it could use the additional cover for to hit above the cover and also use its spawn sensors to have basically awareness of the enemies while they they do not. Um, but let me let me let me check real quick. So you, you say Scorch Gorge? Can I can I check it? Mm -hmm. Can I check it? So bad thing. I currently am using the Explosher by chance. Uh Oh, never mind. They broke into our base. That's crazy. Wait, why does it have to be all the way over there? To so go into recon mode. Come on. Do 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 Scorch Gorge on. Which mode are you playing on? Tower control. Tower Rotation. control. They may not be the current match right now. Mm -mm -mm. Do, do, 
Okay, so Scourge, Scourge Gorge Tower Control. Let's see. <laughs> what can we see? Why am I walking that fast? Maybe that's not that fast. I don't know. Um, what's the range? Yeah, you can definitely hit on tower from from there. I I don't think you can see the stream though. I think you yeah, said. no, it doesn't load for me at all. I, I have no idea why. Like I'm uh, trying because to get the bitrate is too hard. Hi, let me actually try. No, it's um, not the bitrate because I have decent Wi-Fi, so I don't know what's wrong with it. Try to lower the bit for either way, just to see. So I'm capped at six. Uh, I do six thousand. No, no, it's nothing on your end. I'm pretty sure it's just on my end because it's normally not bad. I don't know what would cause it. Because I can run high bit rate stuff. Like seven megabytes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, I don't I don't know what's causing it. Maybe my Wi-Fi is just bad today. And again, I also do live in an apartment complex, so. Do, 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 do. Um, I mean, I, I guess the best way to know which places you could stand on with the explosion is to just go into recon mode. I don't think a lot of people are going into recon mode. Uh, yeah, no, I've Splatoon. never used recon mode in my life. Yeah, I I did that like a few times on Splatoon two, but here in Splatoon three, it's so inaccessible because it's not in the lobby. Anymore, it's not in the menu. I don't think it is, but like basically, just go into recon mode and check out the spots where you can place yourself. I'm just trying to go there. Well, okay, on tower control, you do have some bit of cover um, in some places, and you can indeed hit above that cover while not being revealed yourself. So that helps. Yep, you can get some heat on tower. Oop. Yep, that works. And then we can place yourself otherwise. I mean, you'd have no reason to go down there, honestly. Mostly you Oh my god, why am I giving you something to me? There's a crab tank on me. No. Leave recon. I want to see if there's a way. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Bo says if I can look at this insane replay, sure. Um, insane replay? How insane? B. Uh, oh yeah, I wanted to check if 14 kills, zero deaths. We okay. Zero deaths with 14 kills? That's actually crazy. I see what they mean by insane now. I got this a few times. Getting zero kills is pretty easy. A uh, zero death, mean I mean. Death? Yeah. <laughs> wow, killing no one. So easy. I mean, that's also very easy. Even easier, I would say. Oh, I just got a connection unstable. That's insane. That's very I... rare, isn't it? No, funny thing too, is I got it at two seconds left in the match. The only, the only times I see connection and stable are is in in Salmon Run. You can't do okay private battle. Not oh, uh, private battle. What if I create a room, right? That is so much less practical. Why? What is? Like, because I think you can go on recon mode in in the private battles. But then you actually have to create the darn thing. Right, and then all set. Well, yeah, but there aren't enough players. So if you do want to do recon mode, you'll have to... You have to watch the lady that's in the main lobby. Go to the square all the way in the back. And that's dumb. That's dumb. Isn't that, like, right in front of... Yeah, and especially, like, if, you, if you're doing VOD reviews, right? And and then you want like quickly go into a map. Uh, it's annoying. But then but then again, <laughs> although that's annoying, uh, after you're doing the VOD review, you can just like showcase stuff right in the lobby because you're right there. So that's pretty puggers. 
Um, I feel so like what they could have easily done is make another stand, like the food stand, but for recon mode, just put it right next to them and like move the shell out machine somewhere else. Like move the shell out scene on top. Or instead of having that little coffee area on top, have that be the recon area. Yeah. I mean, I, I just don't know why it's outside. <laughs> I mean, it's cool. It yeah. makes sense, right? Because it looks cool. It's like, oh, we're gonna go exploring the recon god team, whatever. But, ugh. um, yo, it's just awkward. Recon mode. Let's test it. But one, one of the other team disconnected, but it was in the last minute of the match. Race. It's awfully silent, Elmeo. I am. Now I'm wondering how that one loss I had with the disconnected player was. Because maybe it might have been because that player was disconnected, but it also might have not been because of that. Okay, let's see. Have you ever won a battle where someone disconnected? <laughs> Anyways, hmm? not because I'm, I'm I'm into recon mode and doing some tests with uh I mean some tests. We're I'm just fighting with the bow right now. Which one? What do you mean which one? Which bow? Which bow? Bow. Yeah. Which bow? Which which bow? The the only one. Is there multiple ones? Yeah, the, the reflux and <laughs> the tri stringer and the reflux. No, I'm two I know Bo the person. Oh <laughs> Let's do a race, a race, where? Let's do a race. Why not? I didn't realize that's what you were talking about. But I mean yeah, a test with Bo obviously. So a race to my base? Let's go. Okay, I'm not realizing why I lost the match of disconnect. Where's the disconnect like later on? Because I kept playing as a midline. Oh, and they had two rollers. Ooh, that's disgusting. Oh, he won! How did he get so far? Ink rush? No, he's got a normal shooter. But I didn't see him. Run speed, some speed, no. Explosher to me is just a funny weapon. Too. It's just a big bomb and a slosher. Yeah. Um. Oh, I, 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 I wish I could do like the same thing as, uh, as, um, um. Gem did like showing you how I would play uh, the explosher, but since you can't see the stream, that's pretty sad. Mhm. Mm I don't know why I won't load. Let, let me, let me try to load. I could try using my mobile data instead. That might work, but then I'll have to disconnect from Discord and then reconnect it. It's just annoying. I mean, you, you, you can do that. Okay, I'll see if that'll make it work. Okay. If I can even turn on my phone, jeez, work with me. Look at my replay. Yes, sure, I'm gonna do that. Um, so your replay is right here. See it. I will return. Do -do 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 -do. No data found. Your code is invalid. Oh, because you said O instead of zero. A lot of people do that mistake. A rookie mistake. <laughs> You replace. You have new replay. Smart for viewing. Do -do 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 -do. This one. I'm not gonna mark. Let's see. Bo, let's judge you real hard and tell you how bad you are. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
I'm back. I realized this whole time I didn't have my Wi-Fi on. It was on mobile data. Oh, okay. Okay, maybe it's the mobile data's fault. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, some like usually, um, my whenever I'm on mobile data, like some some stuff doesn't really work correctly for some reason. Oh yeah, now your stream is running perfectly fine. That's yeah. crazy. Like, usually whenever I'm on mobile data, for some reason, Discord doesn't want to work. It tells me RTC connecting. It's not like, oh, you have trash internet. It's just like, yeah, some, some weird protocol doesn't want to work. Yeah, it does that. Usually what I do is when I have to disconnect my internet and use mobile data, I, um, wait a, I wait a full minute, and then I go back into the app, and then it'll work magically. Okay. It's okay. What I'm seeing here... Well, I'm gonna queue into a, a tower control and try to not super jump at single time real quick. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, maybe I could play with you too. So here what I'm seeing, Bo, oh, now it's uh, um, is that you are... What? You got into a fight in the beginning of the game where you had two... You were against two people and they nearly killed you, but you you magically managed to save yourself. Um, but at that, I, I would just say that this was a lucky, a, a lucky thing, right? I mean, you got the banner, you got the super lucky ducky banner, <laughs> right? So that's why. But I wouldn't account this to be to being a, a great game or like being a good play. It's mostly just that you got lucky there. And like I, I think you definitely could have had, because because that's the thing, right? If 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 you are surprised that you got zero kills, it means that you do, you did not expect to win this encounter. So so like your usual game plan would be to rush in, right? Like you did now, but uh, it would result in you dying, which is obvious. Um, but then you magically survived this time and got very lucky and you got zero deaths and maybe that's what you find impressive. But get, getting zero deaths is not that hard to do if you're really like thinking about like I want to have a game where I stay super safe and do not die a single time. It's absolute, absolutely possible to do. You just have to play safer and, and that way it's not going to be up to luck. It's going to be up to your skill and you painting a lot and not getting in danger basically. Um, so yeah. So what I could do actually is do double duty. So I will play a game, uh, may maybe with you, um, Mr. Mr. Kobo, and then um, I'll play more so a backline weapon, and I'll try to stay safe and not die a single time. <laughs> and then I can I can show you guys both uh, some cool stuff. Mm -mm -mm, to quit the replay. Oh, you're not. Oh, Seventy percent is impressive, though. Well, yeah, the kills were pretty nice. The kills were pretty nice. But the surviving is, is definitely doable on uh, normal, normal time. So, I don't have them as his friends. I don't know where they are. Um, but they have their friend code in their... Um... So, funny thing. The internet works for about five seconds. Yeah. Then went out. So I decided to test the connection on the Switch. I have 1.8 download speed. Yeah, I mean that that's maybe just because of the switch. Yeah. Like if I you want to test your, your internet speed it's better to test on a PC usually with um speedtest.net. I unfortunately do not have a PC. Ouch. Um uh, let me add you to friend code. Five ten. I want my rich presence you for Discord so people can see that I'm playing Splatoon. Nice.
verbs. Hold on, I think I know. Yeah. Friend request. Friend request sent. Oh, okay. Anyways, I think I know what might be causing it. My brother might be installing something. Because usually, mm. whenever he installs something, it lags the internet. What is that profile picture? I. What is? <laughs> Don't ask questions. <laughs> okay. Hold on, I'm gonna go check real quick if what I think is happening is happening. I'll update you. He's updating Fortnite, that's why. Uh, so I guess we're gonna play some open, right? Mm-hmm. And I guess I'm probably gonna pick a weapon where I can stay a bit more safe. I guess this one is fine, but I would like a suction bomb, honestly. I would appreciate having a suction bomb. So I'm gonna take the ends up. And. Or. So. He was installing something. He was installing Fortnite. Nah, he was installing some random game. I don't. I've already forgot what it's called. But it was only three gigabytes, so it's already done now. Hopefully, the internet works. So, yeah. Anyway, why did you send me a friend request? Uh, yeah, I sent you a friend request. Okay, I accepted it. Nice. I have a room up. I think I forgot if I made it. Probably made it. Can you... Wait, is it in like recon mode or in private battle? Uh, no, in, in know, open. I in recon mode. I don't even make private battle in recon mode. No, hold on, no, hold on, hold on. I, I didn't make it, actually. Do -do -do -do, make the room, make the room. In, in anarchy I open. I can't believe you, no way. I can't believe you'd lie to me like this. What? I can't believe you'd lie to me like that. Oh, are you making a anarchy room? What? That way, that way we can. Uh, oh, you want like go? Okay. Yeah, I'm like, in, you know, in an actual match. Plus, so. What? Like, yeah, we do some. We did some testing in an actual match. Like we 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 see what how we play and we give feedback. We try to we okay, try to improve in real time. Um, and also, I'm okay. I'm trying to play very safe to get like zero deaths uh, to show Bo that it's uh, possible. Here's the funny. Like the drip. Yep. Uh, your your drip? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I call it a tourist fit. That does look like a tourist fit. <laughs> Are you a novel nose man? Uh, nope. I I just I'm just picking it up to stay safe. Uh, I see. I've heard it's a good, like, zoning weapon in a way. Uh-huh. Because you can, like, you can spam the, um, the markers, which is just like you. So I'm, I'm going to show you basically that kind of gameplay. And then I can pop the tacticaler to recharge my, uh, my, uh... Uh, recharge your ink? Yeah, my ink, basically. So I can throw another one. And while I have the tacticaler running, I do recharge my ink faster so I can spam uh, easier. Wait, by marker, do you mean the, like, angle shooter? No, the, um, no, no, the point sensor. Uh, also, wait, oh, hold on. Is, is, does the tacticaler give you faster ink recharge? I don't know. I, I, I think it's... have no idea. You can probably okay. search it up and find out. Maybe it's only, uh, run speed and stuff like One that. Over here. I know this is always We're playing on tower time. control on Undertow Spielway, so I'm gonna throw a few markers down to get the main enemy locations. Okay, that was a very lucky save. I could have died there. Point sensor galore right now, DH. Yeah, yeah, and since I have the max, uh, as I've told you, I like to run the max, um, the max sub power up. So that means they're going to be scanned for years. Hmm, that makes sense. So we definitely not really going to tower right now. 
Um, I just spotted I, I, the person who was on the tower. So yeah, they just let them move on the tower, and if if they got, get on, you just kill them for it. And if they don't get on, uh, then that's good. And if we manage to kill them, then we can start moving up. I'm just trying um, to get on the tower. I'm gonna plop down the for both of us. Then that way we can yeah. kind of move up more and assist the tower. That we have a good uh, like they they're two down, so we can start moving up on the tower. Okay. Got it. Scanned one. Oh my gosh, I got killed by uh, the oh. sniper. I should okay. not go up there. I should actually just not. I I am stuck down here. I think I am gone. Roller. No, please. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe you got too far there. Um, down. Yeah, yeah, I noticed. And and whenever you go you go down into a risky spot, always make sure that you have enough ink behind your back to back off if you need to. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the crab. I need to back off. But I'm just gonna throw that thing to get wing. Oh god, I forget how long the range it has. Jeez. Yeah, it's a Hydra, but even better, kind of. Uh, there's someone up there, which is not good. We don't like that, no, and they're all. winning. Not at all, not at all. Oh, you told me that didn't kill the roller. Oh, Sandra has rece received from whom? Who perfect. could that be? Oh, there goes that person. Uh, I would rather not get on tower and risk death. That guy's trying to get on the tower, so we're getting him. I can definitely failed out. I have the tactic cooler for y'all. Oh, right there. I think they nerfed and the tactic cooler course. now. You can't you can't throw it like a short distance. It just gets to your feet. That's annoying. Yeah, that's really weird. Okay, so mainly the only person that's killing me right now is that sniper. Um Yeah, I, I should be more wary of it. Backing up, backing up. That guy on top. Oh, the tower. Ooh, oh, roller. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Roller, roller, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna let myself die. Well, that Kirby was. Of the stars. Something. That was me. Hello, hello, Kirby of the stars. Are you from? Are you from the Discord server? Okay, so that guy. I've marked him. I, I know where he is. I know where he's I... looking at. Oh my gosh, you got killed. Yeah, there. You see, you super jump. Yeah, I should get self jump, huh? Uh, probably. Actually, if, if you do plan on super jumping a lot, you should consider running that. I uh, got the roller, let's go. Uh, okay, so right now we've got pretty good numbers right. advantage. We just need to take care of that last person good. Uh, we can start moving up and painting up the zone. Um, I, I'm gonna start going on the yeah, left, I know, try I to paint some flanks. Oh, I got a one. I got a direct. I do not want to be on the tower, actually. I'd rather not. Yep, 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 yep. Get away, get away. I'm gonna cover you. No, no, just get back. Just get, stop firing. You said you said you didn't want to get on the tower. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know but there's someone <laughs> on there, and it was just annoying me. Okay. I'm gonna start painting the right side too. That way we got, got paint. Roller. Okay, oh, yeah. I need to back off now. We've got numbers disadvantage. Just start, just start marking them, because you know a good thing when you mark people is that they're gonna start playing slower and be more scared of, of getting into open spaces. Right here. Also, we have a sniper, so we're pretty long range. I'm, I'm, I'm wary of that sniper. I'm gonna try to flank the sniper real quick, because I'm pretty sure um, they're gonna be annoying. If we don't. Yeah, right. I'm behind them. Yeah, good, 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 good. Right. I, I distracted the sniper, but I got killed for it. Uh, that might allow you guys to, or okay. not. Claim it just to get it pushed back. That's all I do. Oh, hi, hi, crab tank, that's... Scan, scanning them. I, I, oh, Fluttershot Jr. is coming up. You got it. Oh, I got a direct, oh. though. Well, that wasn't the best. Over time, well, I don't think we're gonna get it, but sure. Yeah, not? I don't think so, but yeah. Might change the weapon. So, what is Kirby of the Stars doing? It was me. He's, like... He's I mean, I think icon. I think it did better. I think it was just the team comp on both sides. Yeah, we had we had a lot of long range personally. I'm going to bed. Maybe more we can play sometime this week. Absolutely. Hope these games go well, dude. Thank you. I did a, a review for the guy in VC. Where did you send the review? Ooh, another review. That's crazy. In his DMs. Wait, okay. what rank are you? I'm I'm rank uh, S. Friendly.
Okay. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, gonna hit I'm gonna stop press. to oh. change weapons. Yeah. Um, I could try front lines. I, should I try front line weapon? Uh, let's think about a weapon that would force you not to super jump, maybe. Okay, so not Octo Rush then. I only like super jumped you that one time because I thought you were safe and then I remembered. Oh, there's a sniper. Because yeah. I, I just saw the line as I was going. I was like, that. this is my fate. I mean, uh, also, what you should do, if you if you do want to super jump, you should consider, like, uh, pulling up your map as soon as you're dead to just, like, get a feel for where enemies are at. Or, like, whenever you want to super jump, you usually don't want to super jump where there is a lot of enemy paint, right? Only if you mm -hmm. see your, your teammate being in a lot of um, uh, ally paint. And if they're right at the edge, or, like, just in general, whenever you respawn, right? Whenever you're not actually on your um, respawn coffee machine, right? You can actually click on your teammate and that will send a sort of like little notification on their screen telling them that you want to super jump to them. So as soon uh, as long as you're not uh, able to super jump yet, just go on your map, see who you want to super jump the most to and start spamming the super jump button. And then I, I, I try to do that all, as I, all I can. Yeah, because that way, if they're smart and they see the notification, they're going to back off. And, or, like, if you're uh, playing in VC with someone, you can just, like, verbally tell them. And if it's okay to super jump, and they're going to try to back off and give you a safe super jump. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whenever I do play in VC with people, I always ask if it's okay for me to super jump to them. If they're in, like, a safe position. Because, like, I know that even if someone is in the back, it may not be safe to jump. Because that's also why I jumped to you. Because I thought it was safe. Because, you know, you were not very in the mix since, you know, not a front line. But yeah, the darn oh, sniper. Also made a room. Yep. Um. So I'm, I'm I'm thinking, what kind of weapon could be interesting? I do play Octobrush occasionally. And I usually don't lose with it. I get okay. Okay. You. you, you okay. I I know what I'm gonna pick. I know what I'm gonna pick. A cool weapon that you can stay safe with. That is exactly this one. The this one. If I see an arrow spray, I'm riding. Um, so you have a room open. Boop, boop, boop. You're gonna see. Am I gonna? Boop. You know, I wasn't expecting a splat out of everything. I thought mini spiling wasn't like the best. Is it good? I know how it's ultra spam. Um, I like it. Okay, so Ultra Stamp is good at... So, so here's the thing. Um, people think of uh, the Ultra Stamp as kind of the equivalent to um, uh, what you had in Splatoon 1 the, with the Kraken. So like something that moves forward and can like kill pretty easily. Uh, thing is, it's not exactly the Kraken, like, right? It's, it's like... Oh, communication ah. error. Like, as, as you see, like, most of the specials and subs, they're kind of remixed. So they're, they don't work the exact same. They're not equals. So the Kraken was better for killing um, and better at turning and stuff, whereas this one is very awful at turning and doesn't kill as consistently, I would say. Uh, it's also not as good at protecting yourself. What does it do better, though? It paints a lot. It does paint a lot. Um, and what does the Mini Splatling do? It paints a lot and it's fast and moves. What does the Burst Bomb does? It paints a lot and it does it fast and it moves. So the mini splatling is the best movement weapon. Pair that with some run speed gear, and you're the fastest thing alive. And even Sonic cannot catch up to you. Yeah, that makes sense. I have a question though. Would mm -hmm. it be fine if I went for um, uh, drip over stat? No, that's fine. Uh, if you're looking cool, is uh, part of the <laughs> part of the. It's, it's... Yeah. Yeah. If I don't look fresh, I can't really do good. Exactly. Gives you bonus points. Especially if you're playing this path, this actually gives you bonus points. Yeah, I know. I know the synergy bonus is a thing. I use synergy bonus to my advantage and I got water roller plus 12. Very nice. Um, so do you have a room open already? Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm gonna join. What I did with my friends is we all decided to play arrow spray together and look the exact same. By the exact same, I mean everything. <laughs> oh, Frog is there too! Is this? this is Frog. This is Ducky. Do not lose. Oh, hello, Ducky. We have like 
three. I mean, I'm kind of a frontline, midline, frontline. Jump with me, frog. Jump with us. You better not lose. You better not yeah, lose. Yeah, I'm jumping. Ducky's actually very cracked at Splatoon One. I th uh, I oh, think. Or Splatoon or maybe one? it's Bo. I I forgot which one. Uh, one of you two. Are, are you, are you, okay, nice. Gaming time. I know. I know. Uh, Nautilus is kind of frontline. Emphasis on kind of. Then, I mean, frontline. I I would say midline more. more. I mean, I don't know. It's it's got yeah. range, kind of more, more range. I assume. The I'm trying to get shot. small quid right now. You don't even have Splatoon 1. Oh yeah, okay, so it was Mio then. That absolutely exploded me in Splatoon 1. Why can't I get Small Squid? This is just a ter terrible. Why can't you get? Small Squid glitch. Small Squid glitch? What? Do you not know of the Small Squid glitch? You've never heard of Small Squid? What you're talking about there, mister? I'm I'm going to show you in the lobby next time. A simple salmon. That is a great title. Oh, clash blaster! Clash blaster is a good but weapon. Blaster. It's very good. We good have an weapon, amazing also, team comp. They are always so funny to me. Cause it's just it's just like a bunch of crayons on a blaster. Okay, so let's stay That's safe. What it looks like. Let's provide paint for my team. Different. So my main jump will be to stay safe, stay back, not get into too oh. many fights, but just paint a lot. Great blaster got me. Um. So where are the enemies? We have a, a me leader on the enemy team, so I might need to get on it. I'm gonna start getting it. I spotted them. Okay, that's pretty good. The only one alive still is the E leader, so I'm gonna e try to go up on it. I'm gonna charge my special on the left side of the map. Uh, I think that's pretty alright. Okay. Escape route. Escape route is painted. That's good. That guy is dead. That's crazy. He's gonna cap it before I just get that. Out the way. That guy's gonna come through here. I'm just really going. Nope. Okay, he's going the other way. It's pretty cool. Why if you can mark people, that there? would be useful. I would definitely appreciate it. That guy's dead. That guy up there is not dead yet. But now he's gonna tower, die. That's crazy. Oh, I spotted him. Let's go. That, uh, let's go, let's go. Whoop! Let's go. Gaming, gaming. Booyah. Oh. Now I need to back off because I don't want to die. I want to have zero deaths. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, okay, oh, no. Clash Buster oh, died. Oh, so that's gonna be harder to, to defend the tower. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's sniper was scary. For a second. He's getting up there. Oh, don't worry, I got you covered, bro. I got you covered in my ink. It's raining on you. Oh, they're approaching. Okay. On, on my booyah, Sniper's on dead. Okay. Oh my god, I almost killed him. They're coming on the tower, coming on the tower. I need a phrase better. Okay, so I'm I'm back into the fight real quick. Where's the sniper? Where's the sniper at? I think the sniper is where the that thing fired. Um, I might try to use my hammer to get in. It's gonna be risky, but I'm gonna do it. Okay, got one. I got two on the tower. Let's go. Hammer throw. Okay, we need to get map control, map control. No, 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 those shots, I don't like them, I don't like them. He's getting close. Okay, he's dead. I need to oh, paint back our base oh, a bit, that oh, way we have an escape route. Okay, it's painted pretty That's good. A very good answer. painting on the map. If you look at your map right now, we have a lot of paint. That is very satisfying and useful. I spotted them on the tower. Yeah. Okay, that guy's dead. He couldn't get to the tower. That's good. I saw someone being marked right here somewhere. Okay, risky, risky, risky. He's dead. Oh yeah, the sniper is up there. 
You want to you wanna see something cool? Want to see something cool? Okay, you can super jump. What? Is he dead? Yes, he is. Okay, that was oh risky, God, but I, I did it. You! Me? You're there! You're there! Boom! <laughs> sniper! You sniper you snipe with the that? hammer! Yo, I'm pushing the tower? Oh, why did I get the advantage still? They have more score. This is not good. Okay, you need to start painting a bit more. Getting my special ready again. <gasps> that guy. I got okay. you. Don't worry. Don't worry about your limit. Uh, how is it looking? Only the sniper left. Sniper is right here. He's dead. Poggers, let and me get on the tower, real quick, throw gaming. burst bomb, we are gaming. fire at the enemy, use the hammer, get in with the hammer, okay, Poggers, <gasps> throw the hammer, hey, throw the hammer, good. and last little amount of score, let's yeah. go, I think I died zero times, we had an amazing game, I think I died once, that's amazing, and um, and you also super jumped, uh, I, I don't think, I don't know if you super jumped a lot, but... I super the... jumped a few times, but I knew it was safe each time. Yeah, so that's cool, that's cool. Super jump addiction is real. Amiibo gear has no ability influence, so drink tickets influence the ability more. That's interesting. Oh, uh, I, I died four times. Oh. oh, that was my first one of the day? That's correct. Oh, maps updated. What's the new mode? I'm wondering. Slash marker, epic. Okay. If it's splat zones, I'm happy. If it's not splat zones, I riot. <laughs> so let me take a look at the scoreboard. No, what? Yeah, I got 12 kills and zero deaths. Splat zones, let's go. So yeah, you can you can you can definitely not die if you want to not die. <laughs> Yeah, I realize that now. I just, it's way better if you're like actually talking to the people on your team, you know? Yeah. That just may help a little bit. Rainmaker time? Okay, let's, let's try. Rainmaker time on Hammerhead and Mahi. Hmm, that's very interesting. Mm. Uh, would is I do that? Good for that? Uh, is the exposure good for that? Mm. Hmm, that's a good question. Um, well, we, we, we could try and see. We could try. Yeah. Uh, I could try and change my gear a little bit too. Yeah, I, I definitely feel like it's gonna be harder to explode the rainmaker, right? And like, what you what you want to do is like paint for your teammates at a distance, so that they, so that you, you, so you're gonna be able to assume a backliner position, but also at the same time paint pretty efficiently at your teammates' feet. So like, let's say the rainmaker user is right next to the pillar, and they want to get on, but they don't have like solid paint. You can stay in your backline mostly position and and help them get the thing painted and get on it uh, to get the checkpoint, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I just put on a almost full sub up hat just to help a little bit with the point sensors. You think that'll be good, or should I go back to the ink recovery? Subs of of uh, of uh, what? <clears throat> I put a uh. A sub up hat on instead of my full ink recovery hat. Should I switch back to ink recovery or stay on sub up? I don't know. This is too confusing to me. Run whichever abilities you want. Um, I think but... I should do uh, ink recovery just in case. Because if I don't, then I only have one sub of ink recovery, and that's it. Okay. I do have a. I do have quite a bit of ink saving. Maybe I can spot out something here. Uh... Gabriel the Star says, good luck, have fun, thank you. And then he sends a heart, thank you. Bye bye. Stealth jump, I have stealth jump. Let's oh, yeah, go. stealth jump is very useful. Mm -hmm. Ink recovery is mainly if you wanna like spam more uh, of your subs, or if you're gonna, basically, if you're gonna spend more time into your ink. Um, oh, I mainly just run ink recovery because I like to see the tank go up fast. Yep. Because uh, like if you if you use a sap saver, that's mainly for doing combos with your burst bomb or something, and and having enough 
of your of your ink tank left for your main weapon afterwards. But if you if you do mm -hmm. want to spam, that's mostly uh, ink saver. And for example, like let's say edge cases where you're a sniper. So like the thing with ink recovery up is that it does increase your ink recovery when you're in your ink a bit more. But one thing it increases a lot more is your ink recovery when you're just standing still uh, uh, in human form. Mm -hmm. I know um, that too. I, I've been messing around with that too. It's it's just fun to stand there and then get a full ink take in like 10 seconds. Yeah, exactly. And and the thing is like, let's say you're a sniper. Um, and you're, for example, in the Fish Market, you have like the little uh, transparent rooftop thing which you can stand on. And maybe you mm -hmm. want to stand there, you know, to have like uh, easy, so that you're already set up and you can start charging at any time. But you don't want to, you don't want to back off. But you still want to kind of recharge your ink a little bit, right? Uh, so you can do that. You can just stand there basically and charge your shot anytime. Yeah, I, I uh, used to play quite a bit of Gootuber on, and when I did get Hagglefish Market, I just kind of stood there yeah. and waited impatiently, unless I had my uh, special. Also, I do have a room up if you want to try the Rainmaker with Splasher. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Okay, room cobble verbs. Yep. I need to change my actual switch name to Cobble because the switch is the only place I actually go by verbs. Verbs? It's just an old name that I used to use. Hello, frog in a wall. It's Ducky. Oh, Ducky. Yeah, I keep forgetting that. Sorry. No, no, it, it is frog in a wall, but it, it's Ducky though, on the stream. The, the thing is, like, it, it's, it's Ducky Mio slash Mio likes cafe slash Ducky slash whatever else. And then we have another person, which is Frog, which is spelled P-H-R-A-W-G. Um, and that person is a funny person, uh, just like Ducky is. So, like, what they did is, like, Frog changed their name to Frog in Japanese to scare noobs, right? And then Ducky was like, oh, I'm going to change my name to Frog in Wool just to impersonate uh, Frog, the actual Frog. So now it's confusing. Well... And now they can't change it for like a month. Yeah, I think it's already been about a month since they changed and... <laughs> well, yeah, dude, every time I see a person with Japanese characters though in this game, I always think, hmm, is that an actual Japanese person or is that just someone putting Japanese letters in their name because they think it's silly and funny? We don't know. Fun fact: If you put Which Japanese na letters in your name, you 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 become of Japanese nationality. That's how it works. Oh my God! You become Japanese? No way. So Rainmaker. So here's a tip for Rainmaker, which I've learned from watching replays and, and just getting dunked on by Japanese players. Um, in the beginning of the game, and, and that's weird, right? Because that's something I I did um, back in Splatoon 2 when I began playing. Whenever you play Rainmaker, right, for the first time, one thing you focus on is the big bubble, right? You get to the bubble, the first thing everyone does is just rush to it and just fire it like their life depends on it, right? Mm -hmm. And and usually whenever you whenever you do explode the bubble and you splat people behind, then you get the advantage. As you get uh, kind of like more uh, good at the game, you start to prioritize not exploding the bubble, like kind of killing the people behind and, and stuff like this, and maybe like doing other stuff, painting the ground, and that kind of works. But then you realize that pro players, what they do is they also throw their lives at, at the Rainmaker. But instead of staying like right next to it to die whenever it explodes, they just stand a little bit back, right? So they they still try to explode it as much as they can, but they they're not gonna die for it. But just like focus on popping that bubble, like focus on that bubble, focus on the bubble. Right, exactly. And now just focus on the people. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Now we kill the people and we get to the we get to the tower. Big we get part. to the tower. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. We killed that guy. Yo. Already? That's yeah, crazy. it's it moves very fast if you're if you're aggroing on the bubble. Okay, we're at the numbers disadvantage, just focus on blocking them off. Just stand back, especially with your with your uh explosion. you can stand way back than I currently am uh with my I know it's put up, but like I just was focused on killing them because I knew I almost had it, but I didn't get it, which is depression. Yeah, well, if you want to kill them again, you don't. Yeah, like you're better off getting farther because you, you're gonna kill them easier. Okay, these guys are in our base, but we're getting, we're getting 
the other guy. Okay, I, I'm just gonna ignore them, just sideline them, and get that Raylington. I was gonna jump to you, then you got the Raymaker, so. Okay, kill that guy. Now. Move the Rainmaker a bit. Did they get the score back on it? The yes, they did. Oh, fuck. No, no, they did not. Okay, we, no, we, they we're did still not winning. That's buggers. Just focus on them. Focus on them. Ignore the bubble right now because they're not at the bubble yet. Fuck. They got me. Uh, they got the Rainmaker. Oh. Okay, they got it, but now we what, now we need to kill them. Just pop the bubble. Pop the bubble. I'm trying. I'm trying my best. Okay, that guy's super jumping in. He is absolutely dead for it. Okay, good, 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 good. Going oh, forward. Huh? Oh, I'm the only one about. Oh fuck, 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 fuck. I'm, I'm running back. Not, the, not the wipe out. That's, wipe will go hard though. Okay, we need a better plan. I think I'm gonna go uh, flank them through the right because they're not getting through there a lot. Okay, that guy's dead. That guy is trying to come out, but he's dead. This one, super jumping in, he's also dead. Good, wipe out. Now we pop the bubble. I, I'm gonna start flanking them. I have my special, I'm gonna use it before I die because otherwise it's not gonna be useful. Um, so real quick, right there. Right, I'm just pushing in. In danger, whatever. Bim, hammer on your side. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Did you expect this? Absolutely not. Right, can you pop the bubble? Nope, because I'm I'm hammering it. So now you guys can start moving up. I'm yep. a super jump to frog. I mean ducky, whatever. Uh, yeah. Painting, painting, painting. Preventing them from moving up. Uh, hey. There's someone, I think, sneaking in a bit. Nope, okay. They're not there yet. Ooh, he's firing at me. Sure, man. Whatever. Okay, I got one. Oh, right. that, that shrinks. That, oh, the ink storm's about to kill me. <laughs> that would have been hilarious, but also not good. Wait, did they? Oh, I think they got the score. No, oh no, they did not. I, I'm, I'm so bad at differentiating. Oh, now they did. Oh, fuck. Okay, we need to get it back. Um, I'm gonna start moving up forward. Up Start painting up. Someone's getting our back. He's dead. Start painting on the right. I've got my hammer. Hammering. Oh fuck! Bomb I'm just gonna me. run. I'm just gonna run. Oh 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 oh! Very okay. Very good. Very good. Very good. I'm gonna super oh jump to the to the bubbler. We got the bubbler. Bubbler jump. It's safe. Killing people from there. Maybe. Oh, never mind. Okay, uh, don't gone. super jump, just focus on, on getting back into into a spot where you can defend. Mm -hmm. Super jumping to Ducky. Uh, go to the right side, they're getting through there. Okay, that guy's dead. Uh, someone else coming up? Yep, someone else is coming up. They both, uh... Ow. They also just kind of have control of the map itself, so... Kind of gained that back a little bit. Yep, we definitely need more paint. Well, if you have the Rainmaker, you can, you can paint quite a, a good bit. Uh, with lethal shots, so you don't have to move up. I need to paint my back. Popping the bubble. Oh, oh, never mind, never mind, never mind. Laser. Oh my gosh. Okay, focus on the right again, maybe. No, they're just going straight in. And now if we just keep it in the bubble, well, we win. GG. Nice. No. Easy game. Good job. That plus really saved us, though, in my opinion. At least I like the thing. The fact that you pushed at that time was very good. Mm hmm I saw that there were only two players, so... I'm surprised I got that far, though, without dying. Seventeen kills. Oh, jeez. I am doing good. Why is my back hurting? Oh my god. I feel. I feel old. <laughs> With the team. Okay. Pick a team. Yep. Get sixteen kills. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Nine deaths, though, which isn't great. But hey, I'm, I'm doing better. I mean, 
Honestly, I would just attribute that to the game pace g going very fast. Um, you're in Mahi Mahi, like the going to mid is really easy, right? So you're gonna get into the fight much easier. And, and also, like, you gotta take into account the kill count of the enemies, right? You're gonna die as much as the enemies kill you. And if they're good, they're, they are gonna kill you. But in exchange, we kill them a lot more. So that's good. Mm -hmm. I think after this game, I'm going to hop off though. Mm -hmm. So let's see if we can do if we can pull that again. Maybe do it even better. So just rush to the bubble and just get it instantly. But stay safe. Do not die from from it. Don't pop it. Okay. I thought we wanted to on pop. That's fine though. Oh. Oh, seems like our team died. That's crazy. I'm out of vein. I'm out of vein. Hold okay, on. I'm super jumping back. Should be alright. That guy is trying to get in, but... Nope. Not anymore. Yep, exactly. Okay, we got one with the bubble explosion. Okay, wipe out. Let's Nine. go. Oh, oh, and someone disconnected. That's crazy. Oh. Aww. Okay, I'll save for the game after this then. Jeez, that's something. Man, we were doing good too. Why did I have to disconnect? Wait, what happened? Oh, hello, new person. We're playing Rainmaker. Oh. Let's stick with the team. Hi, Chris. Hello. I'm figuring out how to do exposure better though. I'm gonna go after this match, okay, Mio. Well, uh, then maybe I'm gonna finish up the VOD reviews real quick and uh, start editing. Oh yeah, stuff. I forgot. That was the original plan to do VOD reviews. Mm. Wait, are you, are you streaming? Mm-hmm. As always. Oh, okay. Mio says hello, other person, VC. Hello. Okay, oh, machines, uh, end zap, and another explosion. Hmm. Hmm. And we're playing Rainmaker, okay. That is. That's a, a bit of a scary comp. Oh my gosh, oh I my am marked. The, okay, God, I need to back off. High time, need to back off. Just play safe, play safe in the ground. I've got my hammer, I'm gonna make a play right now. Baby bomb on our base, that's crazy. Oh fuck. Looking at the map real quick, uh, not too good. The game state, not too good either. But it's manageable. Uh, where did I get killed by, huh? What are you? Yeah, yeah, I feel like they got a lot of range. It's mainly that exposure, right? So may maybe if you see that exposure clue you at, at lots of range, just uh, try to learn from that and, and apply the tips before yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm gonna start playing on the left side. I've got my oh, hammer. I'm gonna start on flanking them on the left side with hammer. Okay, one's dead. Hammer, uh, I mean the slusher. Oh, I split it two. I split it three. That's cool. Let's go. Go team. Whoa. Got the check one. That's cool. Splusher. I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get him. Oh no, that's the machine. Well, Fuck. Okay, I need to get out because they can hit above Thank cover. You. Oh my gosh. Oh. Uh, we've got good control of mid with paint. I'm gonna super jump to Mio. Focus on defending mid with paint. I might start flanking soon on the right side because it's unexplored and, and the map just dropped down. So I'm gonna do that, distract them a bit. Oh, I fought someone else. Oh, right. Forgot I was putting in one down. I can definitely not jump to you, huh? Nope, no, no, do not do that. So now they they popped the Rainmaker, they forgot about me. So I can just. Uh... Let me get a camera. Fuck! No! I died. Uh, it's washer. Uh... Oh, they, they're definitely getting back control of, of uh, mid, and we also have not a lot of members alive. So I'm gonna stand there, you can super jump. Not, do not super jump, actually, because it's very close. Oh, that... 
Oh, that Alex Blusher. Oh, back, off, back off, back off, back off, back off, back off. They're, ba they're backing us off real bad. Yeah, they're good. They know how to scheme. That's what they're. Oh, fuck, I missed. Alright, they got the checkpoint. Uh, this is not good. Just pop the bubble. I mean, I mean, not necessarily pop it, but uh, just don't let them get it. Because the thing is, at least if you pop it, you've got paint around it. Um, whereas if they mm -hmm. pop it, they got the paint and they, they oh could kill us. Oh, Nautilus is the only one alive. Yeah, That's again. Uh... Okay, just, just defend with paint. Defend with a lot of paint. Oh, oh gosh. We definitely need a flank right now. Uh, hey, Chris. Hello. Uh, Uh, yep, I'll do that. Right. I'm flanking on the left side, I'm dead. Fell into the water. Oh, they're in our base, that's crazy. Yep. Okay, 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 I definitely feel like uh, that person getting down is not a good idea. Like, you don't want to push right now with the main because it's not gonna work. Uh, I feel like we have too much green paint on the right side, Some somebody's broken. Yep. Okay, he's dead. Moving up. No sneaky kill, whatever. Oh, I killed someone. I'm gonna okay. grab the Rainmaker and oh, start shooting. Oh no, you picked it up. You picked it up. Yeah, okay. I didn't mean to though. I didn't mean to though. So I'm just gonna go that's for fine, it. that's fine, that's <laughs> fine. I'm covering uh, your back. Yeah, I got forward, so that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna flank them on the right, because uh, we're all bunched up on the, okay, on the left I'm side. I'm gonna jump all the way down. Okay, and I'm gonna use my special right about now. Hi, Booyah Bomb. <gasps> I, I went right into it. Yeah, me <sighs> too. Oh, this is harder than I thought. Uh, oh, oh well, right. it's fine. That that was a good game, though. Yeah, they are really good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna. Oh god. Oh, I feel I feel old. I feel elderly. I'm going to hop off. All right. Thank you for the games and the advice. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm glad I could help with some tips. I, I I like I like giving tips and people actually making use of them and and it works because it means that it means it works. Wow. Anyways, uh, thank you for the plays. That was epic. Uh, yeah. Bye. Uh. See ya. Okay. So now I am gonna just read a few messages and uh, I'll be back. Uh, one second.
Okay. Do -do 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 -do. So. Yeah, back to vice. Give me vice. Come on, guy. Just go right here. Do -do 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 -do. So I'm I'm seeing, but th that's probably gonna be for next week. Um, some I mean Devi sent some hydra clips, and as, like judging by the fact that they've got a specific role with their name, I assume uh, they're a pretty <laughs> prominent person. Uh, but that's that's gonna be for next week. So they send games which apparently are very good and we should learn from it. So okay. But that that's far down the line. We we need to scroll up to find the ones we're at, really. Oh, not that much though. We're nearly at the end, I think. So where were we actually? This is the our games, okay. Makomart with the okay, this is the explosher. We got the two sniper games. Two more change the zone. This one is the tri string on tower control and this one is the explosion machine escape. This one, this is the E leader, which we already did, and next one is Flushing Machine again, but older gameplay. Was that the same player that had... B plus rank? I guess, you know what, I'm gonna take a look at both of them. And, um, so we have two games from a Flushing Machine. I think this one I, I kind of skipped because he got a knockout. Whatever, we're gonna look at it. Um, and see, because we can, because maybe you know, even if you get a knockout, maybe that's mostly because of your, of your team, and maybe like there's uh, lots of stuff, lots of mistakes you did yourself. So let's see. And then the second game is right here. Mm -hmm. the slushing machine again, but older gameplay. Had trouble finding ranked battle because over time, every time I want to play ranked, it's always flat zones and crumblets. Okay. I just want to feel though like sharing Discord is better, even though I have some spooky stuff on there. Maybe so I need to be careful. Okay. So yeah, those two games. Whoop. Uh, go back, go back, go back in. View replays. Don't want the replays. Let's go. Val, well, replay downloaded. Um, this one is a victory. This one is a defeat. Knockout on both uh, for each team. Okay. From Oreo Flurry. Team composition. They've got a sniper. You also get a sniper. You get a jet sculpture. You play on tower control. This is a knockout for you, I think. Uh, so let's see, you guys are definitely focusing on the tower a lot, We're getting into the, the sniper's sight lines. Okay, the flank, weirdly enough, it's working. I think you mentioned you were in B+, so that, that might be why the flank is working right now. Um, well, I mean, it did... sure. I guess if it, if it works in your rank, um, I guess do it. <laughs> I've got no complaints. I mean, probably a lot of people would argue, on the contrary, you should probably learn at any school level to play like the best players. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not one of the best players, so I don't know which is the perfect way to play that you should do right now. Okay, well, maybe a better way to play would to not all be on the tower at the same time right now. Uh, let's look at the map real quick. I'm okay. It paints pretty good. I will probably paint like a bit um, right on the back of the tower. That way, if you guys want to drop down, 
you have some safe space to retreat to. That way you can kill some people, like play around a little, and then get back on the tower whenever you need to. So you're the slushing machine here. Mm -hmm. Think back, pretty good. Ouch, yeah, okay, that, that was not a good plan to get on when the sniper was there, but she won anyways. Nothing I can really add, uh, personally, on this game. Probably lots of lots of better players could, could give you lots of little tips on the little interactions you had. Such as, for example, they, they would have probably like made a whole point about you not flanking them so hard because you probably would have died. But the thing is, at your level, uh, players are not ready to anticipate this yet, so it worked. So I guess, I guess abuse this strat while you still can have fun with it. Um, next one, you got knocked out on Museum Dalfonzino. So this one, we can maybe have more stuff to say about what not to do. Because it's always hard to, to say, like, don't do this. Especially, okay, so let me let me just pause real quick. Like, me as a not t top pro player, right? It's it's very hard to, for me to say, don't do this because I know it doesn't work. Because I don't really know if it works or not. So, if maybe I'll, I'll sound like a dummy if I say something like, don't do this. And then you do it and you manage to do that, right? And what are my credentials to tell you that this is still wrong, even though it worked in, <laughs> in your case, right? So, it's definitely easier for me to look at games uh, where you struggle more. Because then the, I can say, oh yeah, it's probably this that doesn't work. And then we can see it not working. Okay. Um, so as a sloshing machine right now, I would probably not stay on the tower. Because um, it's an easy spot to fire at for the enemies. I would probably set up shop right under the ledge and hit because you have like full damage shots um, kind of like the explosion in a way but it, unlike the explosion it's like closer range and also very easier to hit um, and also you guys are all grouped up on the tower you're all gonna die if you get shot at okay I wonder how you guys got knocked out since you went so far already. Uh, but definitely, okay, one thing that is happening right now is that, is that if you're all getting on the tower, you're gonna start dying one by one. And that push is big. Like, that push right now, it's already dead. Like, it, it was dead long ago, and you, you still super jumped in, so you kind of, like, um, extended the life of this dead push but now you actually got a wipeout right so they had the chance to move up if if they're whenever let me, oh, let me go back real quick and put a marker right here i think it was uh if i go here so what you did is that you you jump down right you just did a normal thing then you look at, at your map and you kind of no that was not here it was like way farther actually I think you died here. Okay. Then you went down. Okay, then you looked at your map and you super jumped again. So what I would have done here instead is like... Um, I would have probably not super jumped back. I would have just stayed there, like j just a normal uh, respawn. And then started painting back up, because the mid is, is not really painting in your, in, in your color right now. And I would just have secured that push that we already got, because yeah, we got... Wait, wh why are the scores inverted? That's annoying. Yeah, you already got like 13 points left, so this is very good. You can just like basically defend very well and prevent them from, from getting the knockout on you. And that should be enough for you to win. Uh, instead of like trying to, to go, ba go back in the push, which is already pretty much dead. Um, or at least like the, the thing is like even if if you guys were still alive enough to super jump back in and stuff the reason why the super jump felt dead is that you were super jumping to a tower that was in the middle of a lot of enemy ink right because since you all super jump and die one by one by one you don't have enough time to set up and and ink the ground so that's why it's, it's kind of hard 
Um, and here, yeah, I definitely feel like having the, the whole mid pain in, with their ink color a bit more uh, help them get in close to you. As a machine player, I would probably also want to go up on the ledge uh, in the back here. Because uh, then you have a, a clear, like you can hit above cover on them and they cannot necessarily do the same. Um, so right now they got the score, I think, which is that, where you, you're right here. Okay, you got a kill, 2v2. i would probably hang back. Um, that stamper could have probably used special. Because it had the special. Uh, what are you doing? Ah, yeah, okay. Okay. Oh, and they won, yeah. So yeah, in my opinion, you probably should have uh, started going, like, not, not super jumping back in, knowing when the push is over. Like, if you didn't manage, basically, basically like, what you should do, if you want to keep moving the tower forward, is, like, whenever you, you cannot do that anymore, just get off of it, and try to focus on killing the people around, and then once enough people are dead, you can go back on the tower and, and continue your push. If you sadly did not manage to, to kill the people before, right, and the push is kind of uh, over, instead of super jumping in, like, it, basically, if the push is over because the enemies are there surrounding you, and the way to basically back off from the push is not to get off of it because you're already dead, then it's fine, just respawn normally and just start painting back the middle of the map and just defending a bit more and then you you have another shot at your next push the next push is not going to be as soon as if you just stepped off and and uh, cleared up the enemies uh, that way but it's, it's better than super jumping in over and over and dying so anyway one we've got Goofy Goop Star control was. I was trying to focus less on capturing the objective and more on sticking around, flanking, and keeping the enemy on their toes. Playing a sort of. Sk oh, let me let me put the Discord or uh, chat. Thing. So yeah, they were trying to focus less on the objective and doing more skirmishing, slaying things. Um, anything I could have done better to help the team, or if there's other things you may notice. Uh, let's check it. It looks interesting. So let's put that in. Whoop, whoop, whoop. So the game is with a tri slusher and they got knocked out. They're running ninja squid. Okay. Let me oop, hide that. Go back. Go back in. A few replays and don't load. So let's see how it goes. It's on tower control on Macomart. Less on the objective and more on skirmishing. I definitely feel, I, I definitely understand why. Uh, let me see the team comp. Yeah, definitely, okay. Especially on this team composition, because uh, on the new team you've got a Hydra and uh, uh, Julie's Squelchers, which do have a lot of range. And usually these weapons will not want to go on the tower. Uh, so you're not gonna, like, you're pretty good at hitting people that are on the tower, but they're not gonna be there. And if you go on the tower instead, like you're just gonna get shot down with no way to fight back against the Hydra uh, or the Duelist Squelchers because of your, your stubby range. So I definitely understand why you're playing safer um, and you're trying to flank basically the Hydra and the, and the Squelchers. Which is probably your best bet right now, in my opinion. And it seems to be working. Uh, I mean, it didn't work though. You got 1% and then everybody on your team died. Um, maybe I can, I, I think maybe we can go back and see what happened there uh, for you all to die. Maybe from a, an uh, aerial perspective. Let me, let me put a marker real quick. Uh, whoop. Okay. So we zoom. So you get behind them, you kill one. Then most of your team is right here. One got killed by the Booyah Bomb, you got... Is that your team? Yes, it's your team. It's so weird because the UI just changes uh, sides. Uh, anyways, let me go back to your right up there. Okay. So how are you going to stop that push? If at all. I, I think you are going to stop that push because the game is, is running for a bit longer. 
So okay, definitely flanking the Hydra is one of your main plays and it's, it's pretty good because that Hydra is going to be a problem, especially if it stands on that side of the map uh, where it's got basically a good shot on, on most of your base and especially the tower uh, so they can secure that push. A good thing that you have Ninja Squid too, so it definitely helps your, your playstyle. Uh, here, okay, here you could probably go into tower right now, like you could have probably gotten a few points uh, just going on the tower because everybody was dead since you got the wipeout. Now, uh, let me think. Maybe, maybe I don't know if how exactly and where you can. Maybe you could have gotten on that platform. I don't know how or if it's actually possible. Um, hmm. Yeah, the, the injured against the Hydra is not that advantageous. It's like the Hydra is still gonna have the advantage, honestly. Okay, good flanks again. Ow. Um, I guess let, let me let me think about like suggestions I could give. L let me see the way you roll out. Um, the the map does have a little bit more of their pain. Let me see. Yeah, you guys are dead. Um. I think the word that comes up to me right now is impatient. I don't know if it's correct or if it, it's got anything to do. But maybe I feel like you guys should be playing slower and, and basically making sure the pushes you're, you're doing, if at all, are, are effective. Because um, right now I don't see any, any serious attempts to do a push that works correctly. Um, cause it, like, yeah, basically the, the, that one time you got the wipeout, you didn't really get on the tower or, or try to make anything out of that. Um, you should have, at least like, if you didn't want to get on the tower, you should have probably went ahead. Ahead of the tower and basically start like flanking them in from harder in their base, right? With the ninja squid, you just hang there, you just, uh, flank the hydra whenever it tries to pull a funny. Ah, uh, so there you get wiped out. Mm -hmm. What's the map looking? Yeah, the map is not looking too good in your favor. They have a uh, pretty good access to all of the the all of the routes on their map, whereas you don't really have that clean of a, of a like. If you want to go right, you don't really have access to that. And actually, I would I would totally. Uh, where are you? Currently? Yeah, I would I would probably suggest right now that you take that route. Um, there's there's not a lot of ink there. Um, hold on, let me, yeah, like it, it feels like if you go there, there wouldn't be a lot of people preventing you from flanking them like this. Oh, what, what were you killed with? Bye. Oh, that thing. Yeah, I think it's. it's the main issue I think I'm seeing is like the the way you approach. Like you, there there were probably better routes for you to get into the fights um, without dying, and and being even more sneaky would have been more helpful, right? Like sometimes not not getting impatient and trying to fight to, like like the way you played in the beginning, just staying hidden, just waiting very very patiently for the Hydra to focus on something else and really not see you when you get there. I think that was a smart play. Because, you know, whenever you you play a game and you have, like, that one player that always, like, flanks you from the weirdest angles and you don't, you never see them coming, that's very annoying to play. And you want to be that annoying player, basically. Because they're already going to be annoying just by having a Hydra and a, and a Jewelry Squelcher. So just play the, play, play the meme ninja. That probably w will work. Let me take a look at the stats. You got 15 kills. That's pretty good. Uh, pretty cool. Okay, and uh, indeed, if you look at the, the kill counts on the enemy team, uh, the Hydra and the Julius Squelchers got the most, and they also died the least. Uh, so yes. Do we have anything else interesting to take a look at? How many more? How many more? Um, so, 
so, so, so, so, this one we did, okay, I was like, oh, nice, back on vlog reviews, and that, that was the worst idea I had, um, sure, whatever, oh my god, my neck is hurting me, oh, then we've got, scroll, 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 do, 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 scroll, 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 do, 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 Ooh, okay. So this game, this game, it looked pretty interesting from the things they were saying. They they said a lot of specific stuff that they that they thought happened in the game, and um, uh, it looks very interesting. And I want to look at this game, but whenever I try to enter it, it tells me no data found. And I'm looking at the characters, and all of them seem pretty, pretty good. Like there, there's no like uh, errors with the O's instead of zeros, and like I'm trying to change the B, the A to a B, W zero. I don't, I don't really know. That would be the issue right here. Well. What could it be? What, what could be the error? I don't see. Well, whatever. Uh, since I cannot figure out why we can't see that game, I'm just gonna move on to the next one. What could I have done better here? No indication of anything at all. This is not very cool. But sure, we're gonna take a look at it because we're nice. So it is. It is uh, dual sculptures on tower control under those spillway. Lots of tower control. Uh, we're seeing. I mean, fair enough. Since the game, since we're watching the games back to back, they probably send them at the same general time, uh, and, and the, there's the same rotations for everyone everywhere um, in the world. Uh, so that that might be why. Anyways, let's go back. Uh, the Discord UI. I like that I'm being very consistent at removing the Discord UI now. Uh, hopefully, the fact that I said that won't make me miss it in the future because that would be cringe uh so 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 so, so we got the uh dual sculptures from urchini's uh, battle replay um what are the team comps you guys got a sniper and they do not but they got a br uh nocta brush which is going to be pretty good at hitting the tower same with the uh, with the machine pretty good at hitting the tower and the ends up is going to provide uh, ability for like uh, good pushes to be made. Like basically no risk to get on the tower and, and get back for free. Then on your side you have a big bubbler which is good. So you, you guys got more range. And the bubbler. And they've got good hitting uh, off of the tower. And the... I forgot but they got something. Possibly make my camera more right there. Mm -hmm, that's fair. So, what happens? Squelchers, how's the map rollouts going out? Mm hmm, pretty good. I definitely think you're getting too close to the tower there. Especially because of your ring. Okay, well, that, that worked. But yeah, here you got killed by the brush where you should not have been close enough to the brush that it can kill you. You should have stand the, st stood back, because you, you're the jet sculpture, right? And the jet sculptures can stand all the way back, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so here my question is, why did you get in the face of, of the Octobrush player? Why, why are you getting so close? With the uh, uh, dually squelchers, you're basically like a jet sculpture. Maybe it has a little bit less range, but I would definitely start doing the. You know, when whenever you dodge roll and you're in turret mode, you can. No, no, not this way, not this way. You don't want to be multiple people on the tower. Just I, I would suggest using your dodge rolls way more. You're not using enough dodge rolls right now. Like, here you could have totally used a dodge roll to, to increase your survivability. And here, same thing, like, you're getting on the tower. You're getting on the tower when the brush is on there. Like, thankfully it did not hit you, which is extremely weird. 
Pro probably because you're playing at a lower rank. Um, what I would suggest, however, is like just just think about it. If if you want to do the plays you're doing right now, why pick the jet sculpture? Because it's slow to kill, right? Um, yeah, it's very slow to kill. It it it's not it doesn't have the best survivability if you get on the tower. The best way to play the jet sculpture, like if you want to kill someone that's on the tower, don't get on the tower with them, right? Because then people are gonna kill you for getting on the tower too. Uh, instead, just stand back. And use your range. Like, your gun can fire so so far. It just hit people on the tower while being not on the tower, right? <laughs> the fact that you're so... Getting so close to the tower is amazing to me. When, on your team, you have a junior and a splatter shot. Which both are weapons that could fight way more effectively on the tower. Um... And, and same thing, like, in, in comparison, like, they could fight better on the tower, and they couldn't fight as good off the tower, because you have more range. Like, the fact that you're sticking to the wall of the tower is incredible. <laughs> like, why? Why? This is the this is the main pain point here, honestly. The, the What I would heavily suggest you... Maybe... In, like, I, I don't know if there are any good resources. Oh my god. If, if there are any good resources on how to play the the dual squatchers. Uh, but probably look at some gameplay of, of other people playing it. See how they do. Like, the, the, you could have shot from all the way over, over here, right? You didn't have to jump down. And y you got wiped out again. Uh, darn. Like, you really didn't have to jump down. You could, you could have shot and killed them on the tower by being safe. Because that's what your weapon can do. And, and y the, the fact that you died to the Booyah Bomb earlier was really funny. Because the only reason you died to the Booyah Bomb because y is because you went into it. And why did you go into it? Because you wanted to get on the tower. And you rushed to the tower as soon as you respawned. And the Booyah Bomb was, was thrown. But you were so focused on the tower that you did not even... It did not bother you that the Booyah Bomb was there. <laughs> so, yeah. Ways to move on to the next game. So. We got. Um, this one we couldn't get because the code doesn't work. This one. Okay, Discord is lagging. It might crash very soon, sadly. What have I done? I could have done better there. Hmm. There's Squelch remain. Really? Wait, I should not explore too much when I'm on Discord on this stream. I'm sorry. Uh, I get distracted by cool looking profile pictures. Um. Okay, so this one from Ang. Anyone cares to share some tips? This was open since the other team was using the same banners. I'm assuming they were playing together on VC. In any case, I do know I played very passive defense. They were pushing hard, and two of them were running lots of quick saver. And my team had two down almost constantly. Any advice is appreciated. Mm -hmm. um, and that's Ang who said, I've posted a few times and got. Uh, feedback once. Uh, I just posted one hoping someone is willing to look over, but yeah, no guarantees. So, my dude. I'm doing it right now on stream, by the way. Sunglasses. Epic. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's take a look at it, right? Um, so I need to paste it in my app. I need to paste it in my app. And it's right here from Ang. They're running. Ooh, they're running a very interesting set of uh, abilities right now. Let me just show you that. Yeah, look at this. Some pretty much pures, kind of. It's, it's very satisfying to to watch. Anyways, let's go back to Discord. I'll find this one actually because we got the replay. 
Uh, let's go back. Let's go back in. Let's go to view replay and download the replay. And then, and then we're, we're gonna take a look at it. I think I, I, I've got one new message. I want to watch the message because maybe the person is seeing me. That was from whom? Where? I don't know. I am, I'm just taking the message. I can I can watch. Um, you can show me if you see. Okay, so which one was it? It was this one, right? It was the machine play. I played against so passively, I sucked and suck. Well, hold up, I'll join in a sec. Okay, so we're we, we're waiting for them. In the meanwhile, in the meanwhile, let's take a look at Discord and uh, take a look at more clips uh, to download. That way we're we're ready and we see how how many we got left, right? Uh, taka 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 taka. Oh, hello, hello, you're right there. Good. This was last episode right here. Wait, then I, I need to move out or no? Or not? Are you there? Who be famous? Hi. Hello, hello. So, are, are you able to view the stream right now? Yeah. Good, good, good. So keep in mind there might be some delay. Um, so Anarchy Battle, Museum Dalfondino on Rainmaker with the slushing machine. So what? Let's see at the team comps that we got. Uh, they've got a sniper. Let me on the just hold team. on a second. Let me turn off my Bluetooth headphones. Okay. Do -do 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 -do. So they got the sniper. And then Rainmaker. Okay. Is there a delay? Is this better? Yep. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. So they got this this ladder scope on the enemy team, um, which gives them some range, which is pretty good at Rainmaker for shooting down the the carrier. Uh, they've got some pretty fast moving options too, and and the bucket uh, is also a bit longer range and can hit above cover, which is good. Uh, definitely great at hitting above ledges. Then on your side, you've got the the machine, which is also good at hitting above ledges. Uh, roller um, and a whirler and I don't know why I'm struggling with names. It is called the ink brush. Yes, it's an ink brush. Uh, also very good at close range, so might you need to play along cover a bit more. And then you get the bull point for your range to user. Okay. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah. They, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They got the same banner. I definitely see what you what you're saying. Okay, so let's let's take a look at the abilities a bit. You say that two of them were running through pre spawn. I mean, you guys were also running a lot of. No, wait, wait, wait. That's their team. Yes, yes. Quick respawn, quick respawn. Yeah, I see that. Okay. Um, start of the game. You guys are in disadvantage. I would probably focus on pain. Uh, the map right now. You got to check one. Okay. Ouch. Yeah, if you look at the map right now, it's looking pretty, pretty bad. Um, and they pop the bubble again. Oops. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. 
play the game passively. I mean, here, personally, what I would do is... I don't know if you describe that as passive, but just like paint as much as you can and creep the paint back up to their base slowly. Oh. I mean, th those plays aren't too passive. You're, you're jumping like straight onto, you're not really worried about your life. You're just going there and trying to kill them. So that's that's pretty aggressive. I mean, it's, it's, it's aggressive. For a, for a defense play, right? Because he, he, I mean, you can't attack. You're literally defending. But it's ag it's an aggressive defense, if that makes sense. That's a bit of a random uh, we have on throw. Oh, oh, okay. So what I would have probably done there personally is, um, I mean, you you d you didn't need to get out of cover in front of the of the short range shooters with your machine because it does have slower time to kill. What I've probably done is stay behind that rotating cover because then you can hit above the walls. Um, yeah, j just use your weapons to its advantages. Mm, okay, but I definitely see what you mean about playing passive here because uh, you have numbers advantage. You should probably start moving up and painting the middle of the map, like. It's like in tower control, uh, something that um, I mean, players in general slash gem says. You just get ahead of the objective. Uh, they they say that for tower a lot. Basically, whenever people are in the tower, you just move forward. Uh, well, that also applies to the rainmaker or anything else really. Um, numbers is advantage. You do have special. Uh, I would probably use that to prevent the enemies to get into the base right now. Because, okay, if you look at the map, the paint is still looking kind of icky. Yeah. Let's go back. It definitely feels like there's always an enemy in your base being annoying. Um, I guess if they really are getting annoying, what you could do is get on top of uh, the, the ledges on the back. And that would give you an angle to basically see when they approach from from down there from the ramp and if they try to go through that side through the lower side you always you'll be able to hit them or, or like predict them uh, whereas from here it, it's it's kind of hard to see them approach because you've got the wall in your way the, on the right side uh, like if I if I had a word to describe this game it, it wouldn't be too passive to, to like uh, as you're saying like you I wouldn't use the board passive because okay. basically you were in that crap thing's face like I mean passive would be I would associate this with sharking more with like staying chill just looking at stuff happen without acting uh, but maybe I mean okay I, I definitely see what you're saying though because you're in the back here now Where's your team? Probably dead again and respawning. Yeah, okay, let, let me let me just go back real quick just to see what happened there in that interaction. Uh, uh so you're here. So they're saying this way. They're trying to make a push on the right. Everybody's on the right right now. And you're chilling in that looking that I mean, you know, that's not necessarily a bad plan, in my opinion. Because um, you do, you guys do need, if you want to make a successful push, to paint the map. So basically, they're fighting on the on the right side. So if there you died to the Booyah Bomb, so I wouldn't necessarily say that because you were alone. Um, but yeah, they were, they were, like, trying to get the Rainmaker on the right. So the fact that you painted on the left is, is good. So basically, you got good coverage of the middle of the map. And th that's something you can do with your fizzy bombs, so that's pretty cool. I, I do think with the ballpoint you, you're one of the best weapons to paint uh, without getting in danger too much. And I, um, up I, I, I do think... Hold on, what kind of abilities are you running? You're running... Okay. No ninja spec, but... Um, I, I wonder if maybe you could have flanked them more, like to have taken a pro route. Like here, I definitely see no enemy, right? So if, if, if you went to the left side there 
and went around them. Maybe you could have like surprised a few of them there, or maybe hit the ones that are standing on the ledge here from below, because you, you're pretty good at this with your weapon. Um, so maybe something to think think about. Um, but but like yeah, because like at the times where you were standing back, I definitely understand why you were doing it, because there was no no good amount of paints in the middle to, for you to get there alone because i mean your whole team was basically on the on the uh, ledge on the right side of, of their spawn uh and you were basically all alone on on the left side trying to paint for the middle of the map and there would i don't think you would have survived if if you went uh deeper in there and i don't know if if the play was to get with them on there because they would i mean they couldn't they would have just dropped down and died anyways in my opinion Yeah, I was trying to get as much coverage as I could because nobody else was. Um, and I mean, I watch Gem's videos a lot, so I know for a fact that before dropping, you've got to paint because you can't you can't paint and fight at the same time. You have to do you have to do it in order. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, but then I, I would have probably. I mean, th then probably your team could have been there to help you paint, right? Because if, if you wanted to be more ag aggressive, if you felt like you were too passive, maybe... Like, I, I guess maybe sending it this way message, maybe that would have um, in in helped some people realize that maybe they need to come up to you and maybe start painting up or something. I, I, I don't know, maybe a suggestion. Um, but it's, yeah, I mean... You're playing with randoms. Uh, there are a few ways you can say specific stuff like "help me paint middle." <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, do you have any specific questions or stuff? I mean, I, I'm not a pro, right? If you watch Gems videos, you're probably already better than me. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, yeah, this this was helpful. I just I just need to take high ground, more uh, close to the action is what I gathered pretty much yeah um, I mean especially in the beginning of the game because uh, the the they, there was always someone getting in your base uh, for some reason right and and it's like you only saw them when they were already past the little rotating structure right and I right. it's not like you've got enough range to hit them anyways if you were on the ledge but like maybe at least you can see them and just throw a fizzy bomb like nope you're not gonna get up the ramp right because if someone's trying to get up the ramp and they see a fizzy bomb uh, going their way on the ramp like up the ramp they're probably not gonna try to con contest that and go up there and maybe that will slightly influence the game by not having your base being camped basically by a player right just give him give yeah, him a little suggestion game, i was i was uh i was using um I was using like off meta gear because I was trying out to see what what it felt like. It felt fun because uh, I got a lot of booyah bombs, but they weren't really all that helpful. Yeah, I mean, I saw you throw the random booyah bomb in the air <laughs> at some point. Yeah, and I messed I messed up one of them, and I threw them on the wall in front of me and didn't do anything. Well, sorry, that happens sometimes. Um. <laughs> Oops, this got crashed. Oh no. That means I, I lost all my extensions. Um, that sucks. Fuck. Uh, sorry, my Discord crashed. And now I am back to good old ugly Discord. Fuck, this looks so ugly. <laughs> I got so used to having a Splatoon font on my Discord that now it looks weird. It looks uncanny. Um, so yeah, what what were we saying? Uh, do we have any any other? Do you have any no. anything else? No. Thank you for for taking the time to take a look at it. No problem. All right. Bye. Uh, okay. Let's take a look at the next clips. Where's Discord? Is not here anymore. Okay. Okay. Discord not here. For some reason it's not showing up uh, properties Oop. oh yeah that's why okay discord we're gonna look at feedback on the place it looks so ugly though i hate the i hate this 
<laughs> this looks so weird. Oh my god. Is this really how Discord is supposed to look? No way. Is this the actual Discord font? Or am I just crazy? I think it's the actual Discord font. Oh my god. I feel like they've changed it, but it's probably just my brain. Well, whatever. Let me... <laughs> looks weird. Let me restart Discord real quick. Um, where's this card? It's right here. Oop. <laughs> oh yeah, this looks so much better. Ooh, hold up. Oh, where's it? Where's it? Where's it? It's right here. Oop. Okay. Mm, Discord. Okay, it's back. And it's back in, in full force with the with the cool looking theme. Oh yes, this is so much better. Um Okay, this th these are the new ones. Where were we? We were to the one game. Okay, let me let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. Come on. Boom, 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 boom. Right here. Okay, my whole team disconnected. So me and the other team had a squid party. Okay, okay, sure. We're gonna look at this one just because it's probably very funny and interesting. Just a uh, little squid party intermission. Am I right? That was a Splatfest battle. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's get in some of those uh, Splatfest vibes. Am I right? The Splatfest Squid Party Intermission. Because why not? Oh, okay, okay. Full team of... Uh, okay, darn. Wait, did they all have the same gear or...? How, how does it work? Nah, no, they got different gear. No, wait. No, they do have similar gear. Okay. <laughs> so let's see how, when this gonna happens. And why it happens. And how it happens. And who wins. That's the most important question. <laughs> let's go Team Grass. I mean, well, obviously that doesn't matter anyways, because Team Water won big time. When does the disconnect happen? What we're waiting for. Oh, okay. I see a disconnect now. Okay. Oh, another disconnect. Bloof. They're gone. Oh, another disconnect. Boof. They're gone. Wait, so only your team disconnected? So the full enemy team is, is still alive, right? They're not gonna disconnect? Only your team, okay. They all had bad internet. <laughs> okay, that's pretty cool. Ha ha ha!
Let's go. How long can you hold that special for? Wait, is it infinite? Wait, there's no time limit? No way. This is epic. I, th I thought you had a time limit to throw it. Actually, no. Okay. This is very cool. Very nice. Very wholesome. Okay, so then I finished this one. Tricolor, that's the tricolor thing. Okay, we got those. In, mm hmm. Those were tricolor, mm hmm. And tricolor two. Okay. This is the new ones. I think these are all the new, the new ones. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So that means we're done. So that means the little intermission was actually a, a, a final conclusion. Fun, funny funny ending, right? Okay. Uh, pretty cool. So, uh... Mm -hmm. So I guess now uh, it is going to be a uh, pain for me because I'm going to need to edit all of this now. <laughs> pain. Anyways, um, see y'all later someday in, on YouTube at some point. Bye.